And hello everyone, welcome to the stream, so today is Saturday, despite that it's January 1st, it's actually New Year here. New Year, but the games are still the same, old, and we continue everlasting summer. I didn't expect, by the way, that this snow will be so long. It is long. So it's already third stream and we finished how many endings? Just four or five? And true ending still not accessible or something. There's also a DLC official one, which is actually already in start here. But I don't know, is it possible to run it? I can check right now. Why actually not? Okay, let me check the sound. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Testing, testing, testing. And it's working. Um, first of all, how to access this DLC in the settings or something? Um, I don't quite remember. Mods and user scenarios here. Oh, it's already accessible. Uh, what? Please return later? No, it's not really accessible. Okay, so maybe it will be available after the true ending. So, so far, one, two, three. File alone and epic files? Endings? Nice. Okay, four endings. Only. Not much. Oh, okay. I must open the... <coughs> The list of the enemy to understand which one should we get next. Or we can go by list. For example, I definitely don't like this character Slayer. She has two ending, obviously. The bad one and the good one. How to get the bad one? Uh, the only difference in the last day number six. Alright. So. Sounds good. Uh, it doesn't matter what we'll answer here. Uh, here you must reply here, and after this, it doesn't matter what we'll do in the day number one. So reply. Uh, so run after him. By the way, it will be very hard to actually not to skip one of the days, so let's see. Okay, the next choice, mandatory one, is go with Slavia to find this card, and maybe I had never did this before? So it doesn't matter what I will do here, right? We'll take them or not. Keep silent. Okay, it's day two. Uh, doesn't matter, right? Wait a second. We are doing it in different order and there's some new text here? Okay, it's too early to go to the canteen anyway. Unless I decided to go have lunch? Wow. The clicks isn't going to run away. I'll get it signed later, but my stomach carrier won't wait till dinner? I didn't know that there's another choice. Is it thoughts I enter on the canteen? There was almost nobody inside. Apparently, most pioneers had lunch already. A lunch lady of impressive proportions provided me with a glorious meal of three dishes. Soup. What? You press bros? I don't know what this is. Goulash from Lavrinti Pavlovich? Garnished with potatoes boiled according to the craziest fashion of 15th century and for the table compote? What? Around the menu, five star restaurants would envy, but I was too hungry to care. After all, compared to my usual meal of ramen or macaroni and cheese, 
This indeed wasn't too bad, mac and cheese. You shouldn't say macaroni, the full world. I sit at the nearest table and concentrated on Chevin. My focus was soon disturbed by sudden, mightly slap on my back. I even choked. Liana was standing in front of me with a victorious look on her face. I'll choke my life out of you one day. Catch me if you can. She stuck her tongue out. By the way, uh, usually I'm reading these novels non stop for 8 hours, it's kind of a lot. My voice will die, definitely. It's already dying. <laughs> you tried once and couldn't. Alright then, I'll ambush you somewhere. So it's not fair. Look who's talking, Miss Fairplay. I grinned. Okay, you wait, I'll get some food and come back, we'll eat together. I could do without such company, but I hurry up with my lunch. Eva Uliana came back after just half a minute. She had a huge roast beef on her plate and few large bell potatoes, compared to my royal feast. How do you, uh, how do you, where did you get that? Cause I know places. She looked at me and grinned with all her subtlety or however many she had teeth. I won't stand for this. I never was a master of pranks and in school I often found myself on the bullet side. But I had to get back to here somehow. And what if Olga Nitrona finds out that you're stealing food? I'm not stealing! She flared up. As what you're going to tell her, I wonder if she'll believe you? And how would you know? Wait a second, if you're going to continue here, maybe you'll get any points for her? Well, that depends on many things. Like what? Liana looked me in the eyes. Bring me a bun. A sweet one. But where am I supposed to get it? Well, the same place where you got all this? I pointed her plate. She hesitated. Alright, one bun. And promise, you won't tell Olga Mitterna. You have the word of a pioneer. She ran off toward the kitchen. Without hesitating, I opened the pepper box and emptied it into her drink. What? Just as I finished, the restless girl came back. Here, yeah, your racketeer. Looks like she didn't notice. Okay, now who drinks his comfort? Last, Karius. Trace. Don't be silly. Silly, watch me. I won't play these childish games. Look who's talking. I smiled maliciously. Ah, you watch me then. Want to dream? She didn't even let me grab my glass and, in one quick motion, down your drink. In just one second, her expression changed to that of authentic terror. Her cheeks went red and her eyes were about to pop out. She jumped from the table and rushed to the table with the drinking water, spitting and yelling as she went. You, you! I decided not to wait for her and went out giggling to myself while finishing my bun. That was it, it was optional, totally optional. Here, let's go to the library and... We saw it, and this one, and of course this one, and this clubhouse. So we are going to get the cards, and I believe this is the first time, if you don't mind. Sure, let's go. We headed towards my cabin, probably hallway, there Slavia stopped. Hey, I just remember the card sign my cabin. Good timing. And where is it? Just down this road. Let's go. We reached a cabin there. What? In fact, it looked more like a trailer. Just wait here a minute, I'll be back. It took you just a few seconds to come back. There. She showed me a deck of pretty worn out cards. This must be marked in and out. Mm, that's unsportsman uh, like. What happens to fair play? Tell me about it. It's hard to cheat when you don't know the rules. Shall we go? Let's go. 
On our way back, I decided to try and find out about something. Uh, how long have you been here? In this camp? About a week. I see, and where did you come from? I'm from the north. Uh, that is... The cold north. She looked at me and smiled. Looks like nobody in this camp is inclined to answer even the most innocent of questions. I tried to approach from another angle. And what do you like? What do you mean? Well, your hobbies? Oh, I like nature? Strange, she's not very talkative today for some reason. Uh, nature? I see. Uh, what do you a natural historian? Well, like a normal historian, I was always interested in our nation's history. That would suit you well indeed. It appeared that among all the locals, she was the only one who had nothing to hide. But if she came here just like me and simply could not trust anyone enough to tell, I tried testing the waters. And why did I choose this camp? I didn't. My parents got a voucher for me from their work. And that's a failure. Well, if you could choose. It's nice here. I don't think I would choose some other place if I could. Hey, it's like you're becoming another person. That wasn't how I saw it. What do you mean, another person? Just that there's so many possibilities. You can learn so much. It's so many new interesting people here. Now she started to sound like our ship, which raised a red flag for me. I decided to stop with the questions for now. Hmm, when we came back, we got meeting a told Slavia. I just remember that the cars were at your place. It's okay, we got it. Got got. Slavia and Gong and Mitrina went inside. Okay, we saw it, everything. Uh, the next choice. We should not bet with her. Also, it doesn't matter which result we'll get here. So we're skipping this tutorial. Uh, so, we don't need to go to the tournament. But after the game, we must go to the... Bus stop? Wait a second. Definitely not this. Definitely not Genda Square on Net Infinite Stan. Bus stop, I believe. This one. But I remember we were here already. What? I was about to head back to the camp when all of a sudden I caught a noise behind the gates? Who is this time? Wait a second, it's something new! Interesting. Now the clubhouse, it seemed like somebody was walking down the path to the forest. It was so dark that I could not see nothing but a blurred shadow. I wondered who could be out so late at night. Can you breach in discipline? I followed the mysterious shadow rapidly, but still carefully. I was moving from pass to pass, and after a while I found myself in the depths of the forest, finally losing sight of the stranger. Maybe I should turn back? The trees parted before me, and a magnificent view of a small forest lake struck my eyes. Ah, this scene. And then I noticed Slavia. She was skipping and fluttering about, letting her nerdship loose and her shirt fly up in the air. By the way, in the Miku sending, she must be naked here? Well, I believe it will be censored here. This whole scene seemed even more fantastic than my own presence in this camp. Slavia looked like a spirit of the forest, or perhaps a nymph. She looked so natural, more like an ancient goddess than a human being. I remembered all the theological theories which I read, read some time ago. This reminded me of pantheism, the idea that God is in all that is, everything that we see around. What if it were not the aliens or a time warp, but the divine providence that brought me here? Indeed, uh, hello orange cat. Whoops. Well, they hide them. Indeed, Slavia mentioned that she loves nature. So, it turns out that even she is an 
Enigma, isn't she? Slime went into the water. I was ashamed, but I just couldn't take my eyes off her. Silvery moonlight reflected off her wet skin, making Slime look like an ancient Greek statue. Uh, Venus de Milo, maybe. This scene was so fabulous that there was no room for carnal lust, only sublime admiration of true beauty. I was simply admiring the perfection of Slime's form and forgetting everything else. Maybe this isn't hell, but heaven? A branch teacherly snapped under my foot, Slime turned around, but there was no way to recognize me in the darkness of the night. Or at least, so it seemed. She rapidly rushed out of the lake, put on her flounces in a hurry, and vanished from sight into the forest. I quietly went after her. What? Slava was quietly trailing among the trees, choosing the easiest paths and gracefully avoiding sure trees, pits, and snakes. It was a hard job to keep pace with her, moreover, I definitely didn't want to be caught. Firstly, even is just no good, and secondly, in fact, it still remains to be seen what she was doing here. Also, it somehow seemed to be innocent enough. It didn't seem to have anything to do with my presence in this world. It was just innocent. It was nothing worth spying on. At last we came out at the square. Slava stopped and turned around to face me. Did you think I didn't notice you? I was a bit confused, but I put on a mask of visible calmness. How long ago? I'm not sure. Slava came closer. Five minutes ago, maybe. So, even there, at the lake? Uh, what lake are you talking about? Uh, well, Slava seems to be sincerely surprised, so I simply couldn't figure out whether she was pretending that nothing has happened or... Well, uh, never mind. I made up my mind to behave like a gentleman, as gentlemanly as was possible in these circumstances, and state nothing. Alright. Unexpectedly easy, she agreed. What a beautiful night. Slava took a seat on a bench and looked up at the sky. I guess such nights are common here. Well, probably. Why so uncertain? I don't know, I just got lost in thought. Thinking about what? She stared at me, like she was looking for something in my face, but then went back to start gazing. Now and then I fall into such a mood at night. During the day I am wrapped up into work with no time to relax, while at night it's so quiet here. If it wasn't for the crickets and the night birds, one would feel like being face to face with the universe. For some reason I didn't think of Slavia as someone who would talk about such matters. As for me, it's even too quiet here. Is it? Yes, really. Anything wrong with that? Well, alright. She stood up quickly and fixed her skirt. <clears throat> it's time to go to bed. Good night. I watched her walking away. Our talk might have been about nothing, but seems to me it had some deep and secret meaning, which could appear only here, only next to Slavia. Seems like even my situation, such moments of peace and serenity are absolutely necessary. They make me feel united with the universe. I'd even say vital, especially now. I'm not sure how much time I spent sitting here, there, but after a while, a little while, I started to feel sleepy. For the first time today, I finally felt how tired I was. And here it is. Mm, let's see, what is the next choice? <sighs> it doesn't matter here, yeah, but next might be... This one. Okay. Now we must select 
this one. And after this, we must help Slyre. Mm. And after this, they will be choice to run away. Okay, this will be dirty. Let's go. Always choose the less of two evils, they say. Well, of G in this case. Slime wasn't evil at all, so my choice was obvious. Any rational being keeps his house clean, but I usually perceived house cleaning as someone akin to gym workouts. Yeah, it's a good for you, but not my sort of things at all. However, I like the idea of painting benches or of helping to future what geniuses of Russian or Soviet science even less. What? I didn't get this phrase. The way about a dozen pioneers at the square. Where did they all come from, I wonder? I approached Slayer. Hi there. Oh, hi, you've come to help. Well, not of my own free will, of course. I thought it all again. I see. Take this broom. Your area is right next to the monument. Frankly speaking, there was nothing to sleep in there. Seems pretty clean to me. By the way, if I actually save be before selecting the last answer to get a better good ending and replay it, actually it will count like we get got two endings or not. Well, actually it should. It should, so it's better to save before the start of six day. <clears throat> Frankly speaking, there was nothing to sweep in there. It seems pretty clean to me. So some rubbish was still laying around. After sweeping for a while, I came back to Slavia, who was sitting on a bench and taking a break. What a nice day, hmm? Yeah, though it's a bit too hot. She shaded her eyes with her hand and looked up at the sky. You're like a tireless worker of communist labor. Come on, just I just like to help others. That's good. And what about you? Uh, what about me? Well, it seems to me that you find community service a bit of a bother. Well, probably. Why is it? I don't really know. Seriously, she can't expect me to just unload all my ideas concerning this point on her. She might drown in them, God forbid. Maybe you just don't like company? It's actually quite possible. There was some truth in Slavia's words. I suppose that she was good at reading other people's minds. Or at least at reading mine. Though, how can that be possible, if even I find it hard to understand myself at times? What are you going to do when this session is over? What do you mean? Well, are you going to enter college or do you want to master a professional? Let's see, in USSR, a person finishing the high school typically had to choose between either getting a college degree, typically achieving a status of engineer or scientist, or going to secondary vocational school as master and professional. Me yeah, interesting. I already achieved uh, grand mastery at all of my professions, watching anime and surfing the internet. <laughs> I don't know yet. Uh, what about you? I have a small farm back home, so I want to help my parents there. It sounded pretty strange. Are there any private farms in the USSR where all the farming has to be collective? But I decided not to go into details. And what are your parents doing? My parents were not a good subject for discussion. It's not that my parents are not good, quite the opposite, they are kind-hearted people. But it's not the right time for such a discussion. My father works in the local council and my, mother's, uh, my mother is a teacher. That wasn't actually true. More like a half-truth. Cool. She really seems to consider that a cousin. I guess so. 
The conversation had reached a dead end, so I was trying to make my eyes off Slavia and kept gazing under my feet, up in the sky or just looking around. You know, I'm pretty sure you'll also be fine. Slavia looked at me thoughtfully. Now, what was that for? And what was that also about? Thanks, I mumbled. But uh, what do you mean? I suppose that you happen to be too pessimistic at times. Isn't that way too um, straightforward? Maybe. But you're gonna be alright. Maybe. After this conversation I felt ill at ease. On the one hand, there was nothing special in words. In general, almost any person in Slavic's shoes would come to a similar conclusion. Nevertheless, I felt, and not for the first time, like she could see right through me. So, let's get to clean. Mm -hmm. She smiled and took the bro. I never thought that cleaning could bring such a deep pleasure. No, I wasn't upset of this conversation. On the contrary, I was glad to hear that from her. For the first time ever, somebody was discussing my life without criticizing me, without giving any stupid advice based on their own personal experience, without intending to go through my head and without making some far-reaching conclusions. I was just glad that somebody supported me. No, that's not quite right. I was just glad that Slavia supported me. In a short while, the music played around the camp, calling us for lunch. I put away the room with a sigh of relief and a sense of accomplishment and went to the canteen. Okay, we are definitely skipping all this. Alright, the next choice. Mm, run away. Uh, what? This new new text here? Why do you come to a dance party if you rather sit tightly in a corner? Hey, but just a little bit. Since it's period. She reached out her hand to me. You were standing in the middle of the dancing crowd. Well, in fact, it was me who was standing, Slava was warming up, swaying to the beat. I was already blaming myself for agreeing to this uncomfortable proposal. Okay, here am I, on the road again, and uh, now what? I examined the dancing pianos around me. No, I'm not prepared for this. The mix stopped abruptly. Some people were still dancing under the momentum, but the majority stopped. Don't panic! The leader went to the DJ's panel and adjusted something there. Next song, ladies and wine gentlemen. I look at Slayer. She stretched her hand out to me with a smile. You shouldn't refuse a girl. We danced for a few moments. Her chest hurt faster and her face blushed more and more. Slavia stared into my eyes. I wanted to look away at the dancing pioneers or at my feet or somewhere else. It was a strange feeling. My whole body Shudder it from time to time, but it was a pleasant shudder without any hint of uneasiness or shame. My mind became miraculously calm. I realized that I didn't want to let this girl go and I'm ready to dance with her forever. Hoping next to us, Uliana stopped for a moment and smirked. Maybe I was seeing things, but I couldn't get rid of my thoughts that that insolent girl is trying to hint at something. I made a frightening face, but she was already gone. Is something wrong? Slavia asked quietly. Everything's fine. I mean, everything's great. I hadn't started stumbling yet, but I was about to. You're so tense. A little. I said honestly. Boys don't like to dance. I guess so. She didn't say anything, I just, just smiled. The song eventually finished. I was still holding Slayer, but she easily slipped out of my grasp. 
Mm, thank you for the dance. I should thank you. I just stood and started here for some time. The next deck started playing. One more? No, I think I'll rest a little. I tried to leave the square as soon as possible. I don't remember how I ended up at the beach. Why did I run away? It looked exactly like running away. The dance was nice and Sly was pleased, but something wasn't right. I felt restless just thinking about the ball. Maybe I just lost my grasp and the situation and got emotional? That happens rarely. I always tried to behave and calmly access the situation. But did I manage it this time? I sat on the sand and looked at the river. The full moon was hanging far above the water. The memories overheld me. I'm six years old. Me and my father are fishing. I cast my fishing rod clumsily and wait. One minute to ten. No fish bite. Meanwhile, my father gets one after another. How do you do that? He explains, but now I don't remember all the details. I'm nine years old. A dark, incomplete building near our country house. Full of ghosts, vampires, or maybe just hovers? An unstable wooden ladder to the second floor, hanging above the abyss, the hole to the basement. I'm scared, but I still climb up and down with this ladder every day. The brick walls on my foot and I lose a toenail? What? What? What just happened? It's kind of strange. And... <clears throat> 12 years old, my first victory in a video game tournament. We play a console fighting game. Imaginary audience applauds my astonishing victory. I'm 15 years old. I score several wonderful goals with my heel and a wonderful shot from 30 meters away right in the upper corner. What? I'm 17 years old. My first love. Transient images, a shadow slipping away and vanishing in the city haze. I can't. Sh I can't Cash here among the buildings and corners. The following memories became more clear, but far less vivid. The images of my childhood and youth that I saw were unclear. They lacked the details, and I couldn't quite see the faces of people. Sometimes they just looked they looked like a canvas covered with spilled paint. But the feelings of those hazy images were so much warmer than those of my more recent memories. What was all of this about? There you are! Slavia or Lint or me? I didn't get a fright. Why did I leave so soon? I just uh, felt like being alone for a bit. It was like I hid in a shell. There was no outer world for me. And I responded in the same way to all stimul. I was like the three monkeys. But actually, it says four monkeys. And no evil, see no evil, seek no evil, and do no evil. Isn't it just beautiful there? Just let me look at the river. Yeah, it is. How about one more dance? No thanks, I'm fine. Deep inside, I knew I shouldn't be so sharp with Slavia, but I was like a puppet on the stream. Forced to say things I would have never said under other circumstances. What are you thinking about? Nothing? You can't think about nothing. Actually, you can. She pouted her lips, but smiled right after that, letting me know she wasn't offended. You're always thinking about something, even if you don't notice it. Maybe. So, what are you thinking about now? About owls. I said the first things that came to my mind. A wild owls? She laughed. I don't know. Have you ever seen any owls? Of course I have. What a silly question. Do you like them? They just uh, built like any other. A nightbird? Slava specified. Yes, a nightbird? A nightbird. I imagined an owl 
a little feathered box with huge blinking eyes. Are you Night Owl? What? You know, they're daylarks and Night Owls. Some like to get up early and some like to sleep in. Your words brought me back to reality. I pictured my dusty room full of junk, a mountain of unwashed plates on the table, guitar rotten in the corner, necktie hanging from the lamp, and the pinnacle. What? Of all of this, the heap of dirty socks under the bed. I was indeed a night owl. Night was my time. But somehow I was managing to get up early in this camp. I know. So, what are you? A night owl, I guess. I like to sleep. And I am a daylark. The earlier you get up, the more you can do during the day. Well, actually, day, daylight, you can do anything at night as well. <laughs> it's very strange. There's really nothing urgent for me to do, so I don't see any difference between day and night. It's just quiet and calm and during the night. Slavia, don't you have any problems at all in your life? What do you mean? She wondered. You're always so joyful, so ready to help, so eager to start doing something. It's like nothing can upset you. Why? She laughed. I'm just an ordinary person. That's right, just an ordinary person in an ordinary place. I sometimes think that I'm a strange one here. Do you like the camp? I don't mean only the camp. In the previous, uh, I stumbled. I shouldn't speak so frankly, even with her. At home too. I think that I'm not like the others. It's not where I belong. Who stops that? It's silly to think so. I was closing myself off from the rest of the world just a moment ago, and now I was opening my heart to this girl. What's happening to me? No, really, you wouldn't pay any attention to me under any other circumstances. I'm so different from you. I'm lazy and sociable and have no outstanding talents. I would be the last person you would notice in the crowd of a large city. So, for me, even going outside, is real. Simeon, you scare me. She looked at me seriously. I got embarrassed, but I didn't avert my eyes. Am I wrong? Of course. You are you. There's no other person like you. You should just have some self-esteem and patience, and you can do anything. No doubt about it. I look at this guy. If only everything could be as simple as you say. It's not difficult at all, let's start right now. Start what? Changing. Just like that? How do you imagine we can do that? We should do something useful. For instance. Well, just thought for a moment. Let's clean up the square. The ball has already finished. Just the two of us? Would we be able to do all the work? There isn't that much to do. The first step is the most important. I can't argue with you on that point, but taking down the lighting from trees in the dark, moving heavy audio equipment and sweeping. No, that was on my to do list. But I didn't know how to nicely refuse you. Uh, maybe you can do it tomorrow with everyone? Why put it off until tomorrow? Wouldn't it be wonderful to stand in a clean square during the lineup? First of all, I don't even like lineups in general. Hey, I understand you. But this is too much. Slime is thought for a moment. Yes, looks like you're right. Even I can be right sometimes. And she can be wrong. But then she stretched and yawned. Let's just sleep on it, then. A nice idea, but I wanted to talk more. Isn't it too early? No. Slime objected critically. You sleep all day tomorrow, though. Tell me a bedtime story, then. I blurted out the first things that came to my mind. And only those ones I written books. You must know them all, too. Maybe I do. What a failure. 
Shall we go? She stretched out her hands to me. I'll stay here for a while longer. I need some fresh air. You can go. Good night. Good night. Slavia ran away. I wanted to enjoy my total defeat first. I couldn't stand being with you even a minute longer after that brilliant idea. Bedtime stories? What in the world? And how the things are. You try to have a casual chat with a girl and it turns into a complete flop. I start into the night sky. The stars. The small lights of distant suns. They kept sparkling. As if laughing at me. I turned over and buried my face in the sand. After moments I released that was another one of my bright ideas about um, always asking for bedtime story. I stood up, spit on great, and went to the leader's cabin. My back itched all the way. Not only my back, my whole body. No wonder I haven't had a bath for several days while it's really hot here and during the daytime so you sweat like a pig. I should find some soap in a towel. I can find everything in Oregon in Mitterland's cabin. After a couple of minutes I was again at the square with my bag of bass and accessories. I have to find the best house now. It was easy. The building was just on the edge of the forest. It really uh, the best place for a best house. I think there was no Blair, Blair Witch inside, but the lights were still on. And whose bright idea is it to have a bath at midnight? Well, I can guess, of course. I'm muttering below my breath. There's only one problem. Is it a boy or a girl? In the first case, we could just have a bath together without any worries. I'm not fond of public baths, but I can cope with them <sighs> this time. In the second games, I will have to wait or to scratch myself the whole night through. Who knows how long I have to wait? I peeped into the window. What? <laughs> but couldn't see anything because of the steam. Suddenly Slavia appeared right before me, as if from a thick fog. And we cannot see it! We cannot see it! <laughs> Gosh. Naturally, she was naked, just like anyone else in the best would be. Dumbstruck, I stared at her. I had never seen a naked girl so close, even through glass. My organ reacted as it should. Nerve impulses trailed from my eyes down my body. It seems like I couldn't leave my observation point no matter what, even if a war broke out. But Slavia didn't notice me. She was washing herself. Naturally, raising her head, rubbing her body with a sponge and pouring water from the bucket on herself. Then she started to wash her hair. Can't imagine how much time she needs to wash it completely, but minutes flew like a second. That's how immersed I was in the surf. <sighs> Finally, she finished washing, signed it with satisfaction and walked to the, to the door. I managed to come to my senses just at the moment she went into the changing room and left to hide in the nearby bushes. The best thing to do was not to attempt wait and leave, but at least that too late. Sly appeared on the porch after just a moment, stood there for a while, enjoying the night breeze and walking in the direction of my head hide out. I had a dozen excuses in my mind, but she went by without even looking at the bushes I was hiding in. Looks like I'm lucky. I cautiously got out and went to Olga Minnesota cabin, completely forgetting my intention to have a bath. What? Stupid. I was totally exhausted and wanted to just fall in bed and doze off. My eyes couldn't wait and were closing from time to time. It was dangerous even to blink. 
I still didn't know the camp well enough to walk there with my eyes closed. Suddenly Slavy appeared before me. Are you going to sleep? Well, yes. Right this moment I remember the sight of the best house and averted my eyes shyly. And you? I'm cleaning up. She took the bros out from behind her back. Slimy with a broom, the empty square at night looked like a witch from my children's fairy tale. What? Nothing. Is it really a good idea to clean the square after bath? And how do you know that I had a bath? I physically felt the fear taking all my body. Cold sweat started to run down my back. My thoughts froze, so I couldn't think of any excuses. Slime is still staring at me in surprise. It looked like my life depends on this answer. Well, you hurry sweat. Oh, you right. I wanted the ass to swallow me up, so it vanished from this world just as suddenly and irreversibly as I had vanished from mine. Are you going to have a best too? Me? Well... Slime will look at the back in my hands. Yes, I am, so good night. I turned around and turned back towards the best house. What a disaster. How shameful. I walked slowly, trying to curse myself for all the heaven. Shouldn't have peeped in the first place. But if I peep anyway, then I must pay more attention and think of an excuse beforehand. No. It didn't take much time to wash myself. It looked like the night made its own ball or possibly a concert. The stars were the lights, birds and insects were an orchestra. And all hidden somewhere was its director. The sound of wind in the trees was the applause of the, of the audience. The night looked more beautiful when you stand in the forest clean and fresh. Suddenly, I heard a noise in the bushes nearby. I shivered. I didn't get very scared. Maybe a squirrel and another animal. Nevertheless, I should check it out. I went to the bushes. But I didn't find anything or anyone suspicious. It just seemed... With a clean body and a calm spirit, I went to the leader's cabin. Olga Dmitrievna was already asleep. I went to bed without taking my closes off and covered myself with a blanket. I couldn't fall asleep for a long time remembering naked Slavia, whose image could not be eclipsed by thoughts about finding answers. Finally, it's over, right? Next day? Right. Okay, we must go to the house number 17. Uh huh? A new text? I was going to head to breakfast when somebody knocked me on the door. Hello, Slaya. Good morning. Have you seen Olga Dmitrievna? I stared at her breasts. They had just mesmerized me too much the day before. Simeon? Slaya was looking at me warmly, but I still couldn't manage to shift my gaze away from her breasts. Is something wrong? On the contrary, everything is just... Olga Dmitrievna? I don't know, she wasn't here when I woke up. Finally managed to control myself. Finally I still have one thing to do, so see you at breakfast. Slava smiled, waved at me and ran away. Still regardless, the morning was shining and beautiful. And we saw all of this. Okay, so we must go to our... Uh, it's our own cabin, right? Right. Let's go. But it's still a stupid idea. Wait a second, what was before? Once wearing only swimming trunks, so I should get changed first. Ten minutes later, I stood outside the cabin deciding where to go. But it's still a stupid idea. If Shurik was hiding anywhere in the camp, 
he would have been found by now, of course, assuming he wants to be found. So I hardly think I can help them. Together with this thought, I enter the cabin and stretch myself on the bed. Nothing good will happen if Olga Dvinovina finds me here. Stop! Enough! I'm just some trembling creature. What do I have rights? Which, by the way, it's, uh, it's a phrase from from which book? I don't remember. I didn't want to do anything anyway. The day was just as hot as the previous ones, and the only things to do was to stay in bed and wait for lunch. I was just falling asleep when somebody knocked on the door. Come in. Slava stood on the doorstep. Are we meeting anything here, is she? No. And what are you doing? She asked with suspicious suspicion. I look for myself, lie on the bed and say it. Lying down? I can see that. But I had to look at me when I asked you to find Shurik. Well, yes. And? What's the point? I'm sure she already turned the whole camp upside down. Not much time has passed. Why should we panic? You know, stuff could happen. Stavia so looked at me certainly. Get up. Uh, do I have to? I was so worn out that even the thought of going somewhere frightened me. Yes, you do. Life is not a person who I could ever say no to. I stood up reluctantly and went out of the cabin with her. He stood in the doorway for some time, relaxing in the beams of the summer sun. So I was rather right. Where shall we go? We have to look everywhere. Great idea. Just great. The first stop on our road was the library. Slava went to Jenia, sitting at the table and spoke to her. Just stood in the doorway. I didn't want to communicate with this librarian any more than necessary. A few minutes later, Slava came back to me. So? Nothing. She shook her head, as expected. The counting. We still had time before lunch starts, so there was no usual crowd of pianos. It was empty inside and outside of the building. While Slava was talking to cooks, I was sitting and play playing with the salt shaker. Some salt spilled out of the pot. Certainly, I would be worried if I was superstitious. Strangely enough, he wasn't here either. It would be unexpected if she had found him, for instance, in the refrigerator. The next stop, according to our plan, was the infirmary. I decided not to go inside him, waited outside for Slavia. No results. There were where pioneers playing football on the sports ground. It would be hard for Shurik to get lost among them. Finally we reached the clubhouse. You think he could be here? I'd think that the first place people would have searched. Let's go in. Empty inside. Slavia opened the door and went into the next room. I followed him. Wait a second, first time we can see this room. It's the very first time. It's a PC? No, it's TV with VHS. Maybe. Mm -hmm. No, right? This all seems to me to be a stupid undertaking. This was strange, especially because it was Slavia's idea. I mean, I understand responsibility and so on, but isn't it obvious that he isn't in the camp? After all, he isn't playing hide and seek with us, is he? No one here either. Uh, what did you expect? He'd be sitting in a closet? Well, seems like I've offended you. Sorry, sorry. But seriously, I understand. But we have to check all possibilities. 
Okay, listen. Uh, what do you really think? About Shirk's disappearance? Yes. Maybe he went in the forest and has been caught by a forest spirit. She laughed at that. What a fabulous story, Saka. However, in this camp, you never know. Yeah, true that. But now isn't the time for jokes. Cheer up! We'll find him. I hope so. Slavia smiled. Well, I still have some things to do. See you later. She left while I was standing there for some time, starting the cybernetics club's closet. However, I was so inspired by Slavia's actions that I decided to continue searching somewhere else. Okay, here I believe, let's see. It doesn't matter what you'll choose. Next. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We shouldn't ask what Slyer will have in this box. It's kind of obvious. So we'll select Forest. And skip him. Mm, this. This. What is it? By the way, Simon. Slavia said and looked intently at me. What? It seems like I lost my keys. Have you seen them anywhere? Sure, I have. Uh, yes, yeah, I found them near the hunting yesterday. I wanted to return them to you, but forgot about it. I was really bad at lying. My cheeks were red, my eyes were wandering around, and hands were constantly shaking. Yeah. I was already playing myself for an appropriate scolding, but Slavia only took the case and said, Sense? So, what have you come for? I really needed to change the subject. Does anything hurt? No, it's nothing. Okay, we shouldn't ask. Next choice doesn't matter. And Apple also doesn't matter. And next we must go with Slavia to this creepy something. I'll go with him. Let's see. Day number five. So only choices that selecting the ending is at the day number six here. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go. I'll go with him. Very well, it's better to guess him. Are you sure? I asked Clave in a whisper. I wanted to be sure, but she didn't answer, just smiled. I looked speechlessly at Slavia for some time. Why is she always helping me? Very good. Good luck, son, both of you. We all need it. The camp leader and the other girls said their goodbyes and went their own ways. By the way, is it totally repeat the Alice, uh, Alice's route? Or. Well, we'll see, but I'll definitely want to skip all the text and actually find out what will be the ending. Because this kind of obvious what will happen. I was quite surprised that they are greeting our night walk through the forest to the abandoned camp as something normal. Well, it can't really be helped. Wait a minute, I'll bring a flashlight. A flashlight? Sure. While I was waiting for Slavia, I had a strange thought. Why is she always so kind, sympathetic and ready to help? Why did she offer to go with me to God knows where? It's always the quiet ones. Should I be concerned about you? I'm back. With a smile, Slavia gave me a flashlight. Shall we go? From what Electronic told us, the old building was built right after the war. It looked like a kindergarten or like a barracks I expected and definitely could hold less pioneers than today's camp. It had been abandoned for about 20 years. It was now totally dark. 
Seems like the forest was as afraid of us as we were of it. Trees politely moved away, groping at the sides of the bus and patiently watching us. An old hood somewhere far away, but more quietly than usual. I wasn't afraid walking next to Slava. By the way, if you actually saved before actually seeing two different endings, maybe I will not able to skip them, maybe. Well, I don't know. Probably in any other situation, even in the real world, I would be too scared to go into a forest without a proper pass. But I tried to get rid of this thought. <clears throat> also, it was strange. Slime probably seized my self preservation instincts and my sense of reality was wanted. If it continues this way, I'll jump towards some beast whilst with a smile on my face. You're not afraid at all, are you? Meaning? Slyo turned around and looked at me, smiling in a strange way, as if he's misunderstanding with gentle mockery. Or maybe I was just seeing things. Well, uh, night, the forest, the whole camp? Yes, it sort of gives me uh, the chills. Just sort of? Are you afraid? No, well, yes, but it's a natural human reaction in this kind of situation. I didn't want to show my fear, but I wasn't really scared. I just felt that being scared is what I should be in a situation like this. It was like my body had stopped producing antibodies to fight against an infection. I was scared not by the night forest, but by the fact that I was reacting to everything that was happening in the wrong way. On the other hand, I didn't want to make a fool of myself. I see. Slavin smiled again and continued smoking. The path, surrounded by trees and bushes, was becoming more narrow. The deeper we went into the forest, the less clearly we could see the moon. When moment comes, he hit the moon, and everything was submerged in the open pitch black darkness. I closed my eyes tight, and when I opened them, the moon had taken its place again and painted the world in the bright white colors of its night shroud. I only just realized how much I hate the dark. Finally, a clear space appeared far away ahead, and a minute later, we were standing at the edge of a forest glade. There was a ramshackle old camp building, heralded by rain rusting beetles. It smiled at us with broken windows like a gap toothed mouth. A silent rebuke from the dead to the living could be read in the smile. A cemetery for clouded the whole glade, so ghosts, ghosts, zombies, devils, and other evil entities seems to loom from the haze. This sight was enough to give the average person a heart attack, or at least a panic attack. If Slavia hadn't taken my hand, I surely wouldn't have been able to stand it. It won't be as scary this way. She smiled. I couldn't say anything else, just grasped her hand tightly. What am I even doing here? Am I looking for Shurik at night in the forest here? How could I ever, ever agree? This is not a single normal person who would. But the world around me can't be really be called normal. I tried to persuade myself that I was finding answers and that it can't really get any worse. To be honest, nothing bad had actually happened to me during the last four days in this camp. Besides, I had no special reason to think that something bad would happen. Maybe it's just the way the world works. People can't live without adventures. Shall we go? Hmm, yes, I guess. But we didn't make a move. Slavi seems to be waiting for me to take the first step. But I had just enough courage to stand still without running away. A moon showed up from behind the clouds again and lit up the old camp building. Now it less looked like a tomb 
but all that pictures in my imagination grew real. Visions of ghosts became more focused. The wallowing of the wind and the grass rustling got clear. Noises of the unknown origin could be heard from a fair. Seems like it was a great place before. I look at Slime carefully. Maybe she was scared, but she was trying to hide it. Knowing that I felt a little better and calmer. Uh, maybe let's go? Sure. I stepped carefully, watching every step, trying not to touch the old fence, the crooked many go runs or the rusty slide. In some places, the grass was waist high, so any wrong move could lead to broken leg or hands. At last, we came to the entrance and I pointed my flashlight inside. Darkness that looked back at me was much scarier than the view outside. At least the moon shone brightly there. I gathered up all my courage and crossed the threshold. The inside of the old calm building looked like a kindergarten from my childhood. The layout of the interior in the rotten furniture was similar. By the way, I actually thought that every single road will be the same, that will fall down as a pit or something, but no, it's different every single time. Well, I shivered, it, picking out more and more remains of the joy of children long gone with this flashlight. Creepy. Slime was not only holding my hand by now, but embrace, embracing it, firmly pressing herself against me. However, I didn't sense fear in her voice. I wonder whether it was a good idea to come here in the middle of the night? Perhaps not. Shall we go back then? No, what about Shurik? She said in genuine astonishment. Well, Shurik, why did he even come here in the first place? Maybe he isn't even here? Where else could be he be? I don't know. Eaten by wolves, maybe? Don't say that! Slavia frowned and stepped away from me. I was already so used to being with her that I was slightly upset by her reproach. Well, okay, okay. Let's assume that they are nobles. So you can never be sure. Well, since we are here, let's search. I search all the rooms of the old camp, playrooms, bedrooms, canteen, kitchen and toilets. I will look into the closet, which was choked with empty, decoyed cardboard boxes. Look! When we returned to the place we started from, Slavia picked up something from the floor and gave it to me. It was an old doll with stoned. Red threads missing a hand and an eye faded from them. So what? I pity it. What? This doll? Yes. Why would you pity it? Someone played with her, then just threw her away and forgot about her, and she's been here alone all these years, in the rain, in the cold. I couldn't really tell if Sly was serious or not. I don't think this is the time to think about such things. On the other hand, what would be the proper time for that? Sly will look really upset. Mm, yes, maybe. I took the doll and examined it. I remember how I once found a stuffed lion, the same way that Slavia just found her doll. I took him home, washed him, and was a scarecrow with him, as with other toys, even though he was long past his retirement age. Should give it to Eliana. Slavia laughed. So here, suddenly in the wind hold down the passage, sinking some kind of arrowed tomb. A light flashed, and I instinctively jumped, caught my leg on something and tumbled to the floor. Are you alright? Slime ran over to me and helped me get up. Yes, more or less. I tripped on a trapdoor. 
strange that we hadn't noticed it already, but the around door was cleared. It seems like it was opened not too long ago. You're not going down there, are we? I asked, trying to preempt Slavic's suggestion. She only gave me a sad glance. Come on, are we playing at diggers now? A month while lifting the hatch cover is quite an effort. My common sense was crying out, tell me I shouldn't do this, but contrarily, my logic suggested that if this world wanted to kill me, I would already be dead. But it's only because of Slavia, otherwise there's no way I would go down there. Two meters of a rusty metal ladder led down to a dirty concrete floor. I leaned over the edge and eliminated a narrow passage, going somewhere into the darkness. And what is there? I seem to help uh, about a bomb shelter under the old camp. A bomb shelter? Well, that's pretty logical considering the time it was built. I would surely need to go there. I don't know. Of course it wasn't necessarily him who opened the hatch, and it's obvious that someone had opened it just recently. Who would be more likely to get the idea of going down there than a mad inventor? If we discard theories of supernatural involvement, there can be no other humans in this forest. At least, that's what I thought. Alright, I'll go first. Then, if everything is fine, you follow me. What might be not, what might not be fine? Slavia looks scared, but seems to ask more out of politeness. Well, I don't know rats, for example. I afraid of rats. Yes, I shouldn't have asked. I sighed deeply and began to descend. <clears throat> he advanced slowly, holding hands. In the pitch darkness, the flashlight was not helping much. Only occasionally it would eliminate pieces of old newspapers and scrap metal line here and there. Suddenly I began to feel as if the walls and the ceiling covered in endless whistling cords were pressing in on me, as if the passage was getting narrowed. I spread my arms, trying to measure the passage smooth. Have you still found? asks Slavia sadly. Far from where? I've got no clue. Alright. Just then, a massive metal door appeared before me, as if from nowhere. Oh, right, Slavia softly. I tried the candle, and it seems to yield a bit. You ready? Not sure. So, speaking frankly, what could you prepare for in such a situation? The wheel turned a few times, swirling horribly, then finally reached its limit and went quiet. I pulled on the door with all my weight, and it reluctantly opened. There was some sort of chamber behind it, which turned out to be in the bomb shelter itself. When we entered, the light suddenly went on, making me flinch. Though it was likely that there was an independent power source here, at the time when these catacombs had been dark, people had been building things to last. Bomb shelter looked exactly like what I imagined. Had everything needed to sustain prolonged human existence during a war. The lockers contained chemical protection suits, gas masks, dryer brushes, and water cans. At the far wall, I noticed a lot of various tools pressure meters, radiation meters, a radio, and some others. However, this place looked like nobody has ever used it, which was not actually that surprising. Furthermore, it looked like nobody had ever entered it after it was built. Slavik gave me a questioning look. Well, Shurik is definitely not here. But was he? No idea, but if he was here, he couldn't just vanish. I look around the room again and notice another door in the wall to my left. Maybe there? However, the door wouldn't open. What if he buried it from the other side? But why? I don't know. 
Still, it was quite possible, assuming he was there at all. By the look of things, Shurik was hiding. Maybe I'm running from someone. Such thoughts made me uneasy, and I felt like putting myself on the other side of the door as fast as I could. I pushed hard, but the door only gave a dull creak. Hey, maybe this could work. So I handed me a crowbar. I fumbled with it, considering how I could better tackle the door. Let's give it a try. Very, very loud. Using all my strength, I managed to pull the door off its hinders and it crashed into the floor. While I was recovering from my effort, Slida pointed me, uh, pointed the flashlight down the newly opened passage. There is a corridor here, just the same as the previous one. Yes, this place is a real maze. Shall we go? Hold on. I sat down on the bunk, took a dusty pillowcase off a pillow, and whipped my forehead. I let me catch my breath. Slime sat down next to me and began to study the details of the floor tile patterns. Better turn on the flashlight for now. Oh yeah. She blushed slightly and checked the switch off. Clicked. Clicked. Just plain creepy. I got myself thinking that I have not been treating these events as real for the last half an hour. As if they had not been happening to me. As if they were just a dream. Just like back then, four days ago, in the first minutes after I found myself here. Yes, lately I might have started getting used to this world, this reality, as it has become reality for me. And that feeling deep in my soul that I had to find an exit was not so acute anymore. But now again, in the blink of an eye, the forest, the old camp, the bomb shelter. There was absolutely nothing supernatural about any of it, but neither was it anything normal, like anything from my previous life. Yes, agreed Slavia. Uh, don't you find any of this strange? What exactly? Well, the fact that we are sitting here, just you and me, in the night, would be normal in such a situation to instead wait till morning call the police? Yes, I guess so. She replied thoughtfully. Of course, I almost were serious. I shouldn't have. Well, almost is quite right, but still. But you just wanted to help. If Shurik is here, we should find him as soon as possible. At this rate, we will be the ones they're looking for. You know, he did manage to get lost here. Slava looked frustrated. All right, all right. I didn't mean anything like that. Maybe he's not here. Maybe he actually went back to the camp a long time ago. Mm, yes, maybe. But we should still check, right? Of course. Slavia got up and held up her hand to me. It seems like uh, since she wasn't as afraid as me. So I was already tired of being scared myself and now only wanted all of this to end as soon as possible. This corridor was identical to the other one which we came through to get to the bomb shelter. I was walking at a slow pace, carefully watching the floor and checking from time to time whether the passage was getting narrowed. Look! Slavia held my hand tighter and pointed at a bridge in the middle of the tunnel was wide enough for a man to climb through or to fall down. Maybe? I pointed the light down, but there seems to be nothing but ground as a button. I think we should check this out. The hole was shallow enough for us to climb out afterwards, so at first sight there was nothing to be afraid of. I climbed down carefully and helped Slavia. We found ourselves in some kind of mine. The walls and back ceiling were reinforced by wooden beams and rays stretched out in the distance. Here and there, the ass pressing down against the fragile design broke through the pores, which were rotten with age. It made the whole structure look a bit unreliable. 
Where do you think we are? Uh, don't know, some kind of mine? Could they have mine here? Uh, coal, perhaps? Perhaps. We started to advance slowly. Stones would... By the way, it's, isn't it a little bit too loud? Let me check the settings. Hmm, something like this. Stones would previously shipped under our feet, now and then. The beam coming from the flashlight, tremble it and jump it from one wall to the other, often casting shapeless shadows, which disappeared as soon as the light was pointed at them. It's curve, heads and above. Guess so. The faster you went, the stronger my confidence became that Shrek had absolutely nothing to do with this place. He couldn't have been taken by a Chupacabra, could he? By the way, I just recalled Chupacabra when I was playing Red Dead Redemption yesterday. <laughs> Here it is. Chupacabra. Alright, we can't rule out that possibility either. By the way, I'm not sure how that... Uh, in Western world, how this world is famous. Well, in Latin America, yes. In Eastern Europe, of course. Mostly due to X-Files. Last we came to a fork in the tunnel. Uh, where do we go now? I don't know. I tried to inject at least some semblance of calm into my voice, but I really had no clue. None at all. Not where to go, not where Shurik was, not even why we were here. By the way, I know what is on the right that says some kind of cave, and Shurik went actually right, left, right, left, and so on. He actually told us. What if we get lost? Yeah, right, let's leave a mark that we have already been here. I picked up a rather large stone and carefully carved a cross on one of the logs supporting the ceiling. Then, now we know that we have already passed the spot. Good. Slavia smiled. So, which way? But, I believe it's not related to the endings at all. This scene. Ah. Uh. So let's not pay attention to this cave on the right, let's go like Shurik did. Left, right, left, right, left, it is. <clears throat> After another turn, the flashlight lit up a wooden door. Well, at least that's something. To tell the truth, I was so tired of wandering around this mine that I had completely stopped thinking about Shurik. I only wanted to find an exit as soon as possible. What's behind it? You're just about to find it out. Past the door, there was a small chamber, which looked either like the utility room of a boiler house or like one of the bomb shelter's rooms. The floor was littered with empty bottles and the walls were painted with a mess of graffiti, which meant that other people had more than once visited this place before us. By the way, let's do one thing here. Just go to notifications. Maybe I don't need it. No, I must do this. One second. And... Mm, I believe it's done. Alright. Also, from the look of things they had done so rather long ago. Okay. I was trying the flashlights beams around the room, trying to check every part of it, when suddenly I found Shurik curled up in a corner. Shurik? No way, is this like a fifth time when I find you here? cried Slavia. However, it looked as 
if he was not paying any attention to us. Hey, you are! We've been looking for you at all night. Why in the world did you come here? Jack looked up at me with hazy, unseen eyes. And who are you? What do you mean, who are you? Get up already and let's go. I'm not going anywhere with you. Jack turned away and started in the darkness again. You want to take me again? You'll make me go in circles through the tunnels, don't you? Yes, you will. I know you. For what you are. Shrek was turned into an informal whisper. Cut this nonsense out already. I wanted to approach him and pull him upright, but Slava stopped me. He's not quite himself. Well, I'm not quite me myself either. He wander here all night. You sure won't be quite yourself. She shook her head reproachfully and slowly went up to Shurik while carefully staying in the light. I actually don't remember this expression of him, but okay. It's a light, it's me, Slavia. For real? He's crying now? Shurik looked at her and immediately started sobbing quietly. Of course, who else could it be? And that's Simeon with me? We came to find you, everything fine now. Oh, really not them? Certainly not, we us. He tried to get up, but he was apparently disoriented and would have fallen if not for Slavia who caught him by the arm. Easy there, careful. When they came up to me, I said, Alright, time to get out of here. He can't go back. Uh, back where? Into the mines? Yes. Shrek was speaking calmly, but at the times his voice was trembling slightly. Why is it? It's where they are. Who are they? The voices. Uh, what voices? I was starting to lose my patience. This place and this situation certainly won't went normal. But if there had been anything paranormal here, then by the loss of horror cinema, it should have long since showed its face by now. <sighs> Calm down, Shurik. Just tell us everything in the tale. He took a few deep breaths and started. Wait a second, he actually tell us what's going on? I needed some spare parts for the robots, and I heard that there was a bomb shelter in the old camp. And there's usually a lot of different equipment in bomb shelters. It's old, of course, but was disassembling. You can always find coils, resistors. So we went early in the morning. I thought I could finish quickly and get back to buy breakfast. I got everything I needed. He took some light bulbs and wires out of his pocket and showed them to us. But then, up there, the bomb shelter had some sounds from behind the door. Something like moans or wailing. First I got scared, but then I thought that a person could be in danger, so I went there. And here was this mine, this dumb maze, I got completely lost, and the voices, the voices always telling me something, sometimes shouting, sometimes whispering, and I can never make out the words. I was ready to burst into tears, but Slavia patted him gently on the head and surely continued. Anyway, I found this room. At least, here you can't hurt them. So you decided to sit and wait for a rescue, like in a B-movie. -mo I asked sarcastically. Slavia shot an angry glance at me. Well, in any case, it's time to get out, if there's no objections. Come, I know a shortcut. A shortcut? Yeah, you know, I walked all over this place. Alright. Shurik did not lie. Indeed, after wandering for just about two minutes in the mine, we found ourselves under a grate, through which we could see the sky. Then, why didn't you get out yourself? Try it, you'll see. I pulled myself up and put on the grate a few times. It's true, you can't break it just like that. But I used something heavy. I looked down at Slavia and Shurik. There is a flashlight, maybe. The flashlight. 
I found my twist it was not one of those cheap Chinese fakes from the 90s, which I used to have a lot in our summer cottage, no, it was a real Soviet durable metal flashlight. <clears throat> not the hammer of course, but if I tried hard enough, I swung it and started smashing at the grate, aiming for the spots where it was attached to the wall. Soon I got lucky, I heard scratching sounds and a few bolts fell down. A minute later, I was lying on the grass and the monument and rising in the fresh night air with delight. Also after the mind, any air would seem fresh. Well then, I'll be going, thank you. Shirk looked a bit lost. I asked him questionly for a bit, but ended up saying nothing and just waved my hand for a goodbye. After all, I had neither a strange nor be able to talk with him. And what would I say to him? Scolding him now is no use and the same probably goes for trying to learn anything. What a night. Slavi was sitting next to me and looking dreamily at the moon. Right so, if someone told me just a week ago that I would go to a funeral camp and would even have to crawl through bomb shelters. But it was fun. In a way, there was indeed something amusing about all of this. But there was also something strange. During the last few hours, absolutely anything could have happened to me, but in the end, nothing at all had happened. In a couple of years, I would probably remember this as just a funny incident from childhood, if I live that long. What do you think? Did he really hear something there? I don't know, it's possible of course, but most likely it was just his imagination. In such a situation, anyone could start imagining things. It was not only the most logical explanation, but also the most probably one because nothing had happened to me in Slavia. Well, I for one thing he should go see phys physiotherapist. Gosh. Guess he should, laughed Slavia. Alright, time to go to bed. I, I felt like I needed to say something to Slavia. I was not sure that I wanted to, but I could feel the need. Thank you. For what? She gave me a surprised look. I wouldn't have managed without you. It was nothing. Slime blushed. I was in her depth. Again. I wonder how I could repay her, at least partially, for all that she has done for me. I started the night sky slowly falling asleep. All of the day's adventures left me so tired that I had no more strange left. You know, under different circumstances, I would have surely confessed my love to you. I said losing touch with reality. Thoughts usually work much faster than common sense. But Slavia wasn't there anymore. It's probably for the best, at least she didn't have. So it's strange, why did she leave without saying goodbye? Well, whatever, I'll sleep on it and see you in the morning. I was so tired that barely made it to the camp leader cabin. But there was a light in the window. That means she's waiting for me. And that, in turn, means that I'm in for a lecture game. And this time it will be just as pointless as ever. I had absolutely no desire to discuss whether I was right or wrong. The lecture standing nearby was beckoning to me like a friend, as if suggesting I should sleep on it. Forgetting about the mind, Shurik and Kampleder. Here you are! I said blankly, still looking my cherished lecture. Simeon! Yeah, yeah. If I'm Shurik Slavia, we'll give you the tales tomorrow, and now I really like to sleep. She looked at me confusedly for a moment and then replied. Oh well, fine. I don't know if mentioning Slavia played its role, but half a minute later I was already in my bed. The events of the day kept turning over for a short while in my head, but soon it started to act. 
and it was as if my consciousness switched to save mode and started to reboot. Next day, finally. Okay, there's a lot of choices here. Uh, this one, we're skipping. Oh, gosh, what was this stupid sound? Uh, I think it doesn't matter what we will select, so kitchen dining hall. I was still a good care of my health. What? It's a new text here. And even better care at the moments when I couldn't bear it anymore. And now I was able to walk in, and my feet went even harder than much. So my feet will heal up eventually, while Hunter drives the wool from the wood. What? What's actually happened to him? Surely the pioneers uh, didn't finish up everything. At least a couple of sausage eggs, or in the worst case, a few pieces of bread should be left. It was so deserted and quite around the canteen that I even hesitated for a second. Isn't here where every pioneer seeks his happiness three times a day, and some even more often? Isn't it an oasis of this hated summer desert? Isn't it a secret chemical lab studying how types of meals are known to science affect immature teenage bodies? Now this will look more like a bastion. Abandoned by its defenders, a kind of a La Rochelier left by the Huguenots. Just get in, and the ghost of warriors who accepted heroic deaths here will surround you. The... what? The Kantian looked the way it always did so. So, it was just completely empty, except for Miku was cleaning a table. Seeing that, I quickly turned around and tried to sneakily escape, but didn't manage to make it. Hi, Simeon. Did you come here to eat? You missed breakfast, did you? I mean, I didn't see you. You could have been there, but I didn't see you. It's good that you came anyway. Uh, hi? Well, I, yes, I just came, wondering if there's anything left, maybe? There's nothing left, you need to wait for lunch, you won't help me, by the way, I'm cleaning up here. What for? What do you mean? She puffed up her lips and seemed offended. Somebody has to clean up, uh, we do it in turns, you will have your turn as well. Sense, but no. Okay, got it. I was go going to leave, but Miku still couldn't stop. So, will you help me? Wait a second, helping here? I don't even have the choice here. Now, won't you know I have some things to do? Oh, let's say, okay. I don't know why I agreed. Have an open that you make a decision first and then wonder for quite a while why did you say what you said? You think again and again and still can figure it out why on S you did that. That's how I felt weapon the tables one after another. You know, I came up with a new song. Want me to sing it? Not eager at all. Uh, no. She started to sing. It would be hard to sing and clean up at the same time. I think it's later then. Miku gave me a disarming smile. Yes, of course. So cool how you saved Shurik yesterday. The entire camp has been talking about uh, only about it since early this morning. I feel just like a hero. There was nothing much, uh, really. No, really, I'm serious. I would never dare to go into woods at night. And the old camp. You know the rumors about it? About a camp leader who shot herself? Well, they said she hung herself. And it's so scary in general? Yep, it probably is. I tried to isolate myself from external stealing and concentrate on the cleaning. It helped me to finish sooner than I expected. And now it's, a, it's done. Thanks. There was quite a bit of time until lunch, so I decided to go for a walk. 
I picked a random direction which could be explained by the single word forward. In the end, I found myself in the square. This wasn't a surprise at the moment. Monument of Genda appeared to be the central hub of this camp and a kind of a kilometer zero. I sat on the bench and started to sing. By the way, zero kilometer it's a point which actually it starts on point was any other destination. I sat on the bench and started to sink. Four days have passed and I haven't gotten even an inch closer to working out how I got here. It's true that quite a few strange things happened during this time, but almost every one of them can be explained logically after careful thinking. Every single one of them could have happened in normal life. Normal life. This time lost its original meaning to me here. Reactions to the environment, the actions and words of other people, or my own words, indeed, none of this here is normal. In the past four days my world view had taken a series of painful punches to the stomach and uppercuts which led to its being. If not knocked out, then seriously knocked out. Sometimes I don't understand why I act one way or the other say some things. Actually, I do understand, but not straight away. Such afterthoughts, however, don't help me to act differently, more sanely and appropriate to the situation at all. Moments of truth happening to me are becoming more and more rare. If my only wish during the first day was getting out of here, then now my main concerns are where to find food, how to avoid lying up in the morning, and what to say to organ meeting if Alisa complains about me. And those things are truly important to me. And day after day, daily hers like this overshadows the thoughts in my head about how world around me, together with this camp and these girls, are completely abnormal. But I can't do anything about myself, because I just forget. In the same way, the breath without thinking about it, I'm joining in the everyday life of the social and local inhabitants more and more without releasing it. I'm suddenly becoming an average pioneer. No, this is wrong. I shouted loud and slapped my face a few times. All of a sudden, the bell sounds Calling the pianos for the lunch came from the loudspeakers. Finally! I ran skipping an eldon to the canteen, leaving my inspiring thoughts back at the square where they could sound interesting to get alone and only if he was alive. The day has just started and I've gone through so many things already. Okay, here we obviously must go with Slava. And why not? Let's go. This will be the first time when I select this. I didn't want to walk here alone and hope that Slavia would join me, but I couldn't bring myself to ask. Well, it's obvious one basket for me and one for you too. No, let me go with you. Slavia smiled. Wait a second, it was your decision, not mine? Okay. I was a bit surprised, but I was also glad that it turned out like this. Lena seemed to take no offense at all. The ripping has commenced. What? The strawberries were delicious here indeed. I could probably eat them all if I didn't stop myself in time. Despite being wild grown, the berries were close to the garden once in size and had a rich red color, so it was clear that our visit here wasn't in vain. Slime was walking right beside me, as we had only one basket. I felt like a mushroom picker looking under every shrub and searching through the glass carefully. Pay attention! An entire bunch of strawberries had been left behind. Oh yeah! I'm sorry. It's fine. You must enjoy being here, don't you? You like nature, after all? Of course I do! 
Slava smiled. It reminds me of my home. We have similar beautiful virtues there. She gazed dreamily somewhere into the distance. Look, I always wanted to ask, what do you like in jail? You look busy 24 hours, 7 days per week, and it seems like you have no time to rest at all. She started to think. I don't know really. Doing a very self activity is enjoyable for me. Well, that's unsustainable, but still. I like knitting and serving. Things like that. Slava took a hand handkerchief out of her pocket. There were red, yellow, and green flowers embroidered on it. They were entangled with each other in a complicated way, creating sophisticated geometric forms. Geometric, maybe. Such a typical Russian handmade handkerchief. Listening at it, I instantly imagined Slavia dressed in an ancient seraphon, sitting on a bench beside the from Shackle House with a crowd of playing children running around. It's quite cute. Thanks. Let me give it to you as a gift. Such a proposal embarrassed me. Uh, you shouldn't. No, take it. I look at the handkerchief once again and put it into my pocket. Thank you. There were so many strawberries here that after a mere half an hour we had the basket filled up to the brim. It seems we're done. Yes. You've got a lot, so it should surely be enough. When we got back to the boat, Lena wasn't there yet. She need more time to fill the basket by herself. Yeah, I guess so. I look at the river. Sun sparkles happily and dancing across the water surface were the only thing that distinguished it from a mirror. It's how calm the river seemed. What are you thinking about? Nothing really. And you? Me? What will happen once vacation is over? We'll have to leave this camp and go back to our homes. Will I ever see you? Anyone I met here again? Will I ever see you again? She looked at me with her eyes so full of sorrow that I couldn't think of what to say. Lena came out of nowhere, breaking the silence. Oh, you're done already. Here. She showed us a bucket, a basket full of strawberries. Great. Now we can go back. And I still had Slava's face and those words of hers on my mind. Sadness and sorrow, when the kinds of emotions typical of her. Could she be hidden them all the time under a mask of cheerfulness? I had no answer to this question, and I knew I couldn't find one easy way. Maybe later. The way back took less time as I tried to concentrate on drawing and ignoring everything else. And we saw it. Okay, so... Here we must thanks to the gods' help. Mm. It says it doesn't matter what we'll choose here. Mm. And you must find Slayer. Okay, and after this there will be day number six. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I will say after this. Okay, we are going, we are going, doesn't matter, library. Mm. Stand guard. What? I didn't, I didn't select this before? You said I killed the cat. Anyway, it's Alisa, and that means it could quickly turn into a total mess, plus I still have ingredients to collect. Well, I'm coming later. Alisa left the library quickly without looking at me. It got me thinking. What could this book could be about if she was so ashamed of it? And ashamed Alisa is something extraordinary by itself. But Alisa ashamed about a book. But what's the point in guessing now? There's no way to find anything out. Finally, Jenny's deep groan rang out, reaching each and every corner of the library. 
Okay, is this one? Hmm. Okay, do nothing. Just stay seated. <sighs> okay, let's go. All I was doing was just watching the fire. We are going to find Slavia. Let's go. I'm really interested in where Slavia has gone. So I was wanted to leave this place as fast as possible and, if not to finally lie down to sleep, then at the very least, <coughs> no, at the very least, to spend some time alone, away from all these pioneers and all good media, you know, who just couldn't wait to occupy me with something again. I picked a good moment and fled into the forest. Night had fallen into the camp, an absolutely normal and unremarkable night. One of those nights when the dark sky, stars or crescent moon don't trigger any special motions, when the crickets... I still don't understand chirping or chirping, chirping. And the singing of night birds seems more like an everyday routine than a nocturnal chance. I wandered around the forest with no special purpose trying not to get too far from the camp. After all, there was a chance to meet Uliana out there and that natural disaster would probably be even worse than the camp leader. I sat down on a fallen tree and started thinking. Why is this all happening to me? Why do I keep getting myself into a foolish situation every time and everywhere? Even having suddenly appeared in a world pioneer camp in the middle of nowhere, I don't get to become a subject, an experiment, a victim of a sick, comic, cosmic mind, or participant in an intergalactic war on the side of a group of suicide-prone pacifists like a regular hero of science fiction. No, I get to hide in a night forest from a rain camp leader and her workers pioneers. The stars in the sky were shining brightly. Perhaps they had given their light not only to me and this camp, but also shine on the city where I was born and where my old home is. It was as if a pain settled in my chest. I envisioned my old flat squirrel and a detestable burning started making its way from my stomach to my throat. No, it was not wistfulness, more like a sad remnant. Because despite all that's, what's, that's happened, I felt more alive in less than five days here than I had for the last several years now. Now I really wasn't sure if I wanted to get back. Only one question still ate me. How? And why I ended up here? It flared up yet again in my mind. I haven't spent much time seeking answers, or even just thinking about my situation lately. My thoughts were occupied with everyday routine affairs. And now, in order to break away and be able to wish to stay here for good, I need to understand the nature of this place. It's just that even a night in girl in a golden cage has the right to know how and by whose will he gotten there. After and after that, to make the choice whether to stay or not. Probably I would have been lost in my existen existential <clears throat> thoughts for a long time, but I heard voices approaching Organ Mitterna and the pioneers. Looks like they're proceeding with their hike. I headed to the camp at a fast pace. I have no desire to go back to the camp leader's cabin because I would surely be scolded and just waited for it. It's much worse. Soon enough, I arrived at the beach. And I wasn't alone here. A pioneer uniform was lying on the sand. A girl's one. But no one seems to be swimming in the water. 
I almost thought it was some new Ronley when suddenly a voice came from behind. Skipping out on the hike. I thought you were still in the woods. I turned around and saw Slavia in a bikini. Sorry, I guess interrupted you. That's okay. I almost done. Why did they decide to have a swim during the night? Well, is it maybe prohibited? She smiled. Well, no. It just won't organ me to in the mind you leaving earlier. But you did the same. Slavia gave me a quick glance. Yeah, I did. I sat down the scent and started at the river. You don't like the hike, did you? No, it's not that. I just wanted to be alone for some time. And I've interrupted you. No, not really. It's not like you at all. What are you talking about? Well, to live like that. I'm not a robot that can only act according to a predefined program. She laughed. Yeah, that's right. I was still puzzled, and my fatigue was also becoming stronger and stronger. My mind was absolutely blank. To be precise, I was so heavy and full, so that not even a single idea would have the change to dwell there. If I would compare my brain at its prime, the broad highway full of speeding thoughts were taking each other and causing giant chaotic crashes, then now it's nothing but a forgotten teeny pass in a distant desolate forest which is only used on in times of absolute necessity. So I said the few things that crossed my mind. Don't you think it's all pretty strange here? Strange? Everything that happens here. It's an ideal model of Pioneer Camp. Of course, it's not like I know a lot about them, but it looks exactly like I imagine it. What are you talking about? Slavia glanced at me perplexedly. Did you ever feel that you're not where you belong? I don't know. More precisely, not where you are meant to be at all. As if thousands of kilometers away from home or even in another galaxy? I don't understand you. We are similar in this. I laid down on my back and looked at the stars. And what would you think if I told you that I am an alien from the future? Are you? Asked Slavia in that earnest. Well, let's assume I am. How should I return to my, home, to my time? Do you really want to? Yeah. All the conversations with you that have to do with my situation, even the slightest scenes of it, always end up at the same place. It's like she's offering me a chance to stay. Almost insisting on it. Well, let's say that I'm not sure. There, as we could call it, everything's like home to me. Or rather, more familiar. Practically everything is known to me and I am prepared for any situation. And there, in the other way around, literally everything, little thing comes as a surprise and everything's different. This is really that bad? I wouldn't call it bad. Unfamiliar, unclear. Sometimes it can be hard to change something, especially for people with my personality. But what do you really want? To start with, I can't answer the question until I find out exactly where he is. And go and find out. If only it was that easy. But what's so difficult about it? Everything's difficult. Ah, it's empty. I don't even know where to start. I am, and I'm constantly being distracted. You're talking about it so serious, it's almost like it's all real. She laughed. Who knows? A pretty long silence followed. Suddenly, Slavia sneezed. Bless you. Thanks. It wasn't a good idea to swim at night. You could get ill. How did you come in and it's cold out there? It's nothing. I'd rather sit here with you a bit more. 
No, just let me rest. Well, I was suddenly for it, but... Let's go. I'll walk you. But we didn't even walk a dozen steps before Slavia grasped my arm. Ah, uh, what's the matter? I suddenly fell dizzy. I touched her forehead. It is burning. I was never able to measure temperature, uh, body temperature by touch, but in this case it was obvious. I told you! Come on, come on! No, I, I couldn't fake Jenny. Listen, we'd better go to the infirmary. And what would you do in the infirmary at night alone? That's nonsense! No, it's not nonsense. If you don't want to help, I'll go by myself. She let go of my hands and was ready to leave. Don't get upset. Put this on. It's cold. I handed her my sweater, which I brought with me on the hike. Finally, I found some use for it. Good boy. Thanks. She pulled the sweater on and gave me such a tender and caring look that I just couldn't argue with her anymore. Okay, fine. The infirmary it is, as you say. Five minutes later, we were standing by the infirmary door and Slava was picking out the right key. I still considered this idea quite foolish. Nobody ever died of the common cold. At least not in the past century. I couldn't see any good reason to spend the night in the infirmary. Finally, Slavia opened the door and leaned on my arm. I'm still a bit dizzy, she said guiltily. Slavia landed on the bed. I sat on the chair nearby. Still, listen, alone for the whole night in the infirmary. After all, at least Jenny could get you a glass of water if you needed one. She wouldn't sketch the illness. She's young and strong. It's alright. I don't want to bother anymore. And the nurse will come tomorrow. I suddenly imagined myself in Slavia's place. Imagine that I had to spend the whole night here, alone. And by the way, I would simply like this. And shoes run down my spine, really? Listen, maybe I can stay with you for a while. I owed a lot to Slava. And, in fact, I didn't even want to leave. What for? Everything will be fine, thanks for walking me over. You should go and get some sleep. Am I still seen? It's fine. For a moment I thought, of course, nothing terrible will happen to hear him. But I myself would feel more relaxed if I stayed with her. I think. Oh, come on. Slime cried out as if offended. You won't throw me out, will you? I smiled slightly. Alright, but if you get infected, you only have yourself to blame. I was happy with my little victory. Okay, then what shall we do? There should be some playing cards in the chest. Rock? In fact, I didn't know any other games except that one and poker. Okay. We spent a lot of time playing. I completely lost the track of time. We chatted, laughed a lot. Slavia didn't seem ill at all. Then midnight came. Time to sleep? Probably. But where are you going to go? She gazed at me. Come on, you shouldn't be sitting in here with me. I can do it anyway. At the moment I could even fall asleep standing up. Slime watched me for some time and then drew the curtain and said, Good night. Night. I lowered my head on my arms and fell asleep in an instant. Despite being exhausted, I slept uneasily. It was more of a slumber. My awareness kept leading me and returning again. The best possible state for dreaming something psychedelic. Last number 410 drove past the room, it was snowing from the ceiling, and my computer's monitor suddenly rose from the middle of the table. Wallpaper blended through the walls, rubbish piles rose through the floor, and my old bed materialized in the corner. 
I was in my old flat again. The scenery changed to that of my hometown. It was like I was running through endless hordes of people bustling in and out, and then darkness fell on me. Primal, universal darkness. I jumped up in the row. I was sweating like a river. Slam was looking at me awkwardly from the bed. Just a bad dream? I attempted to smile. You were screaming. Screaming what? I don't know. It was incomprehensible. The cook only displayed zero sati. Simeon. Hmm? I'm freezing. Slava was rubbing the arms of her sweater, shivering. Hang on, I'll find a blanket. Search through the one cabin nets after another, swearing to myself about how the damn infirmary had nothing to cover up the pensions. I'm sorry, there's nothing here. Wait, I'll run and fetch something. You don't have to. Would you just lie here with me? Be much warmer? <laughs> what? Okay, of course, everything will be censored here. Maybe they actually miss all the text. Right? It is. It will. She was absolutely serious. Her voice sounded so piteous that for a second I was left breathless. Are you sure that it is a key? So it's not? She asked, blushing. No, why? I slowly took off my shoes and lay on the very edge of the couch, trying to occupy as little space as possible, trying to shrink and stop breathing. Slava gently embraced me and rested her head on my chest. Yeah, that's better, she purred. I was unable to say anything and just bathed there calmly. Very good. Thank you. For what? Slava kept her eyes closed and seemed ready to fall asleep at any second. For being here. It's fine. Two minutes ago she was desperately trying to get rid of me. No, really. Then you're welcome. She said nothing, but I was sure that Slava smiled. Contact us anytime as they say. You're so kind. You care so much. Well, I try. You're a good friend. Friends? Well, yeah, probably. Somehow this world hit me painfully. On the other hand, there was no reason to believe that I was something more to slayer than just a friend. What are these thoughts about anyway? You too. I just couldn't bring myself to find the right words. What up with the you too? It's been a pleasure dealing with you. We hope for parts of Actually, a beneficial cooperation. Oh yeah, it's cool being friends with you too. Let's go and play in the sandbox. This was twice as hard to endure that Slavia lying right next to me. I can't run, I can't hide, and even without her looking me in the eyes, I know that she sees right through me. You're distressed by something, aren't you? No, I'm fine. But I can tell that you are. Well, maybe? Want to talk about it? Well, not really, in fact, there's nothing really to talk about. Then you don't really know why you're upset. Yeah, probably. Then why get upset in the first place? Sly laughed. I guess I should not. That's great. She hugged me even harder. Not cold now? I'm fine, just tell me if you're not comfortable. No, it's okay. Like that time? The bot? My muscles, as I remembering that ruined competitions, reminded me of it with a dull egg. It's totally different. Okay, okay. She said slightly and raise her head a bit. So, everything is fine? Yeah, perfect. I started to worry. Slyer surely wanted something from me. I wanted me to do or say something. But what? Are you sure? Yeah. Probably. Well then, have a good night. You too. After a while, she fell asleep. I checked the clock out of the corner of my eye. It was only 1 am, 
And that meant that I still had to wind this position until morning. I wasn't really concerned about my arm going numb. Just being so close to Slavia is such a dangerous proximity. I couldn't sleep at all. Various thoughts were invading my head. Did she really consider this whole situation normal? What the heck? Wait a second. What is this interruption? Just when I was thinking how bad it would be if anybody found us, the door opened, the light switched on, and Orchid Mitterna rushed in. I had jumped and stopped for a moment. Simeon! Started the camp leader in a diabolically calm voice. I've been searching for you everywhere, and you, you escaped from the forest a half of time, then come to the cabin to sleep, and now you're seducing our best pioneer? Slime instantly woke up. He was staring at the camp leader with his sleepy eyes for a few seconds and then instantly understood what's going on and jumped from the bed. Orgadina, it's not what you think. I just fell in and Simeon walked me here. And then I caught cold and I told him to go to his cabin. Oh yeah? Sure. So you're sick, are you? I am. Answered Slavia humbly. Then you have to get treatment. She watched me menacingly. And you, get up and follow me. I understood that arguing was not an option and left the infirmary not even looking at Slyre. We reached the square without saying a word. Olga Mitterna viciously looked at me, at me and said, Time to go home. I need to have serious talk with you. I felt awful the whole way. The calm leader silently followed me. I think that once again I've got into a stupid situation which will be perceived totally wrong by everybody. Mm, nothing to discuss. What if I were in organ meeting in space? Two teenagers cuddling the empty infirmary at night. It's hard to come up with any apologies. The worst thing is that all these things always happen specifically to me. I always considered myself to have an analytic call mind. However, I really got to put it into practice. We entered the cabin and the camp leader continued the interrogation. Would you care to explain yourself? She seems to have calmed down a bit. At least this side of her character was appealing. She was of course an impulsive woman, but she also cooled down quickly. Slime already told you everything. You expect me to believe that? I can force you to believe it, but I'm not going to invent any excuses either because it's the truth. She looked at me for some time and then said, Tomorrow I will decide what to do with you. The camp leader turned off the light, I rolled myself in the blankets, not even bursting to undress and turned to face the wall. Interesting, what does she only blame me for? What happened? I wasn't there alone after all. Slavi is a role model pioneer, of course, but... No, I didn't intend to shift the blame to her. I just felt too ashamed for getting into an idiotic situation once again. Involuntarily, with no malicious thoughts, not expecting any trouble, I could have laid there pitying myself for a long time, but a thick overtook me and I blocked it out. Okay, it's the day six. Well, let's see how to get the better engine first. And it's okay if I save just here. Didn't sleep well. Well, we can save, we can finish if it's actually not skipping what we are doing after I load. So I'll better just start game something. I'm not sure. Uh, this. Save. Day six, by the way. Six and two perks. Okay, back. <sighs> so to get the bad ending. Uh huh. 
Mm-hmm. I think I got it. Let's go. I didn't sleep well. I kept walking up for a minute or two and then dropping off again. I didn't dream much, just some grotesque images forgotten by morning. What could meet you now woke me up? Wake up already. By the way, we are leaving. No, next day, not this day number six. I rub my eyes open and look at your questioning. What time is it? Oh, late enough. My whole body ached, and my head was heavily heavy like a bowling ball. Pull yourself together and go wash yourself right now. I stood up abandonedly, took my torture back, and went outside. I didn't want to talk to the camp leader at that moment. A lecture was clearly coming. A hard one. But I'll better put it off as much as I can. After all, I always did things this way. Trying not to fall asleep on my feet, I somehow made it to the wash campaign. Wash basins. The cold water knocked some sense into me. I should pay slimy visit. I still have some time left. Just to tell you I'm sorry. On the other hand, why should I justify myself? It was your idea. And what? What did I do wrong? Besides once again getting myself into a silly situation where all the odds are against me, I took a deep breath and went back to Olgon Meeting's cabin with the few intentions of proving myself innocent, or at least showing that I will stand my ground. But the room was empty. I sat on the bed and dropped my face into my hands. I need to come up with an excuse. Now, a nice and believable excuse. She won't believe the truth. Well, that's not surprising. If I was here, I wouldn't have believed in it either. Nothing worthwhile was coming to me. I was just sitting there, gazing at the sunrise. The door swung suddenly open and the camp leader came into the room. Welcome me and I'd still like to explain to you that... Not it. I look at you surprised. I understand everything. So you do understand it wasn't what it looked like? Why, it looked exactly like what it was. I don't want to condemn either you or Slavia. I understand everything. Hormonsy, hormones, all that kind of stuff. So I turned me and laid my head down my hands. What do I need to say to make you believe me? Nothing. I said it already, I understand everything. You don't understand a thing. My mother is under my breath. Okay, head over to line up. I stood up and dragged myself lazily along with her. But could I at least pay you a visit? Of course not. My complainer looked at me with such surprise as if my question was something completely inappropriate. I already warned the nurse not to let you in. Well, am I allowed to know how she at least? Well, it looks like Slav is actually sick. I didn't manage to ask how seriously it was as we reached the square already. Go and take your place. I took a place next to Electronic. So, what happened yesterday? He whispered to me. What are you talking about? Well, you suddenly disappeared? Well, nothing special. Telling everything, the entire camp was the last thing I wanted. After all, if even the camp leader got us wrong, then what would the others think? So I already started to think that it's not entirely wrong. The entire lineup consisted of a roll call and announcements that the showroom is closed today for repair. Finally, the parents run for breakfast, chatting happily. I miserably followed them. Frankly speaking, I wasn't in the mood for eating at all. After hanging around near the counting doors for a while, I turned around and headed away. I don't know how it turned out this way, but eventually the Emperor appeared from nowhere in front of me. Looks like my autopilot just 
he got in. I stared at the door at a total loss. They won't let me in anyway. What can I do now? Should I wait for Olga Mityuna's sentence, if it ever comes? Should I wait until everybody in the camp knows? And that's even worse. We get glances from everywhere. The alienation. That is what will happen for sure. No, I haven't done anything wrong, but in the enclosed cycle of this bizarre society, such behavior would be treated, if not as a sin, then a seriously deviation for sure. And that means that I've already got nothing to lose. <laughs> Almost got a car attack from this. I knocked without any hesitation. Just a moment. I pulled the doorknob, but the door wouldn't open. Hmm, it's locked. In a few moments, I read the hand through in the keyhole, and the nurse appeared. Good morning, Pioneer. Hi. I answered confidently. Well, you know that you're not allowed here? Well, I do. But if you'd... Nah, that's not the way things work, she said playfully. Come, leaders, order is an order after all. If you ask me personally, I don't find anything immoral in your behavior but Olga Dmitrievna. Maybe I can do something? No, you can't. I look at you angrily, turn around and walk away with theatrical showness. Slowness. I didn't know what to do next. I just pressed on forward, punching the trees that stood in my way. I can't form this burst of rage only when my hands were hard and badly and my lips were biting until they bled. And the most interesting things is that all my unbelievable awakening in an unknown panel camp has turned into the most trivial life drama. A drama as stupid as my entire existence. Yet again, I did nothing wrong. I thought something wrong. And they got it all wrong. Fine then. Just let everything be. Nobody was near the canteen. I sighed in relief and took a place in the farthest corner, hoping that nobody would see me. Somehow, stuffed my breakfast in, I was about to leave already when Miku dashed up to my table. Oh, good morning, Simeon. I kind of overslept today. Can I take a place here next to you? She sat down straight away. Well, I'm kind of leaving already. Is it true that you and Slavia like that? Well, you know what I'm talking about. She stared at me closely, blinking her eyes. Who told you that? Well, one should, uh, would expect the rumors to spread fast. But not that fast. I started slowly going to rich mode. I had it from Jenny and she probably heard it from... Uh, it was Sreyushkin, right? He, uh, he heard it from Olga Dmitrievna. I don't want you to misunderstand me. It's not my business, but if you don't want to, then don't answer. But if, if it's not a secret... You're right, I don't want to answer. I slew up and quickly headed towards the exit. It was a hot day. This amplified my anger, since I don't like the heat. Right now, sir, though, anything could drive me out of my wits. But I had to make my, up my mind now on how to conduct myself. I didn't want to run it into anyone, so I went to the forest where I could sing calmly. Having stopped in a glade, I sat on a stump, took a stick and started to pick at the ground with it. If there's nothing that's up to me, all I can do is to simply wait. What? In fact, what can I do? I solve the inferno? Even if I succeed, what comes next? Try to bring Olga Mitterner to her senses? Hardly possible. Funnily enough, this whole enigma turned into a simple everyday situation. If it was happening in my world, there would be no problems at all. Come on, really? What's the point? Even if I did sleep with the girl, who cares? Even if I was actually 17, even then nothing terrible would happen anyway. 
it would be slightly more awkward, but still terrible. And now what? I'm not the master of my fate. Also, was I ever? Is there anything at all that was up to me in my entire life? Have I ever reached any peaks that I was seeking? And now, once I've reached one, I couldn't hold my ground. Maybe it was just a spectacular from the very beginning? My mystical appearance in this camp, all the local resonance, all the events that happened to me, all that is just a weird game, and I only pawn. Well, if that is so, I will still play out my role to my best. And I got up and headed to the camp, prepared to take no prisoners. The plan wasn't completely finished in my head, but I've made up my mind already. There was no one at the camp leader's cabin. I rummaged through the cabinets and packed up a sleeping bag, my winter clothes, a flashlight and some other garments I found. I came out, immediately ran straight into Alisa. Going for a hike? Yeah, for a hike. I reassured her. Well, take care. She gave me a slight smile and went on her way. I hastened my steps to the infirmary. The nurse is a human, too, in the end, so eventually she will go to lunch. I hid in the bushes, waiting. Time flew by fast. My thoughts have settled, and I had a firm decision. I haven't sought my plan out beyond the first steps. I simply didn't care. The most important thing is that I act the way I think is appropriate, and whatever happens next, let it happen. At last, the nurse came out of the infirmary. She looked around and, noticing no danger, locked the infirmary with a key and quickly went towards the canteen. As she went around the corner, I got to the window in a few bounds and started to basically knock up on it. Slime showed up soon. Simeon, what are you doing here? You're not allowed to. How do you feel? I'm fine. But Olga Mityana told me to stay here for another day. She told me something completely different. Okay, get out. I said with confidence. What are you talking about? Wait, uh, what for? She asked fearfully. Get out now, I'll explain everything later. She looked at me closely for a while, but then opened the window without further arguments. I helped you to jump down to the ground. Okay, what next? Let's go! I grabbed her hands and made my way to the forest. Slavis stopped a few minutes later. Simon, just what are you doing? What's wrong? Do you think that everything was right the way it was? No, I don't, but it will be even worse this way. Why? We have a right to act the way we think it cor is correct. Okay, uh, but what will happen next? I haven't thought about it yet. Every step in my plan had gone quite well until now, but I wasn't keen on thinking even one step ahead. Take a look. I opened the bag and showed the things I took from the camp leader's cabin. And... Slava looked at me uncurrently. I don't know. We'll stay in the forest for a while. Show them that our opinion matters. But that's stupid and childish. Well, if you don't want to. She gave me a lamentable look. I'll do as you say. These words gave me the creeps. As you say. Nobody ever said anything like that to me. In any case, I think this is the best decision for now. Alright. I laid the sleeping bag on the ground and we sat on it. So. What are we going to do? I don't know. I've never been so close to utter failure. No, I wasn't questioning my choice, but indeed, I had no idea what to do next. What would you suggest? It would be nice to have something to eat. Have you brought anything with you? And that was exactly what I'd forgotten. Uh, no, I haven't. I followed slowly. That's fine kept sitting in silence, and one day they will look for us. 
So even if they do, they likely okay, no water to succeed. The forest is big enough. But food. <clears throat> but the Indian, I'll get hungry too. Okay, stay here. I will be right back. Where are you going? To get some food. Maybe you should go together. No, I'll be right back. I headed back to the camp at a rapid pace, leaving Slavia alone in the glade. I'm absolutely certain that she won't go anywhere and will wait for me. I wish I was as certain that I'll remember the way back as well. Even if they haven't started to look for both of us yet, then surely they'll have found out that Slavia is missing, so I have to move carefully and try not to get noticed. And you know, every single panel was a treat now. Not only those who knew me such a, an obvious kidnapping will surely be known to everyone in no time. And while getting to the cutting in few sprints was not hard at all. I had no idea what to do next. I can't just walk in there like nothing happened. Are you hiding there? I almost jumped out of my skin. Uliana was standing behind me. I get in hungry. She startled me. Come on, why so quiet? I was tongue of tired for a moment and couldn't think of, all, of an answer. So, why have you come? Hmm, so this is the choice. I was just hungry. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, really? Okay, I'll be right back. Much to my surprise, Uliana didn't ask any awkward questions. In the blink of the eye, she zipped out of sight through the door of the canteen. I was wondering whether I should trust her and wait, or should I, or I should flee before she returned with backup. However, Uliana interrupted my doubts quickly as she reappeared in a couple of minutes with a plastic bag in her hands. Here you go. The bag was full of buns and had a few packs of kefir on it. But why? Well, cause it's brave and cool. She smiled slyly. Best regards to Slavia. Liana waved goodbye and ran away. I stood there for some time in confusion, but then went back to the forest. It was completely unlike Liana, but frankly speaking, I was thankful to her. In the end, I couldn't get food by myself during the day without getting myself into trouble. About getting back to the glade, I found Slavia sitting on the sleeping bag in the exact same pose. Here, I gave the bag to her. You got it so fast, she said excitedly. Well, I found help. Slavia gave me a questioning look, but didn't, I didn't go into details. We ate busily without saying a word. I said with satisfaction in the end. Good. Really good. Yeah. I agree, Slavia. What are you going to do now? Maybe you have any suggestions? About what? Well, at least about how to deal with the camp leader. I don't know. And are you sure? Yes, I am. I interrupted her. This is an act of protest after all. She must be aware that she can't order me. I stuttered. All the ass around. I feel like I have said something stupid. Even though I was indeed all committing as Aaron's boy Slime was. You funny? She gave a cute smile. You could just go and talk with her. But if you want to sit here and wait, I'm fine with it. I tried to talk to her. Are you sure you did it the right way? What is the right way? To be honest, I didn't know that. Such awkward talks were always something of a insurmountable task for me. I bet if I knew how to deal with such cases, things would go another way. Because since I was afraid and blaming myself, there was no chance to be confident. I don't know. Slime burst into laughter. What? Nothing. I just feel like a princess who was safe from the evil witch castles by Prince Charming. I look at her. Carefully. While all this sounded quite romantic, I thought 
that what Slavia had just said was absolutely nonsense. But generally Olga Dmitrievna is an evil witch. It makes some sense. Yes, his similarity is definitely there. I say that spelling out every word. And princes are given no choice in such cases usually. Slavia continued in a cryptic tone. Given no choice? It's impossible. It's me who has no choice here. Just sit and wait until I get back to my reality by some miraculous chance. Does Slavia have anything in common with me? She's a role model piano, hardworking and beautiful. She has hundreds, if not thousands of options. Probably this is the moment I've been dreaming about all my life, such an unreachable girl as Slavia, not only sitting next to me, speaking and laughing, but completely dependent on me. But is it a good or bad thing? And what should I do next? There were no questions. More questions than answers. When it's hard enough to make a decision about my own life and take responsibility for my own actions, how could I do that for both of us? Before now, I'd keep myself distant from such problems in the hope of everything resolving on its own without my input, but I couldn't act this way now. And not even because of the fact that heaven only knows where and in what time I was. You know, I could be wrong. Slave with me currently. We won't achieve anything indeed by just sitting here. And not just that, it's stupid and childish, you were right. And what should we do now, then? Let's go! We got up, I took the sleeping bag and headed to the camp holding Slavia by the hand. Soon we came to the square where Olga Mityana was standing as if she was waiting for us. A long time, no see, she said angrily. Do you have something to say to excuse yourself? Oh, see, a choice I have nothing to justify myself for. We have no reason to justify ourselves. Wait a second. <laughs> What's the difference between them? Mm. Wait a second, this one is a bad choice. You have no reason to destroy yourselves. I don't know, let's select this one. I replied obnoxiously. Oh, really? Okay then, so you think all of this is normal? Fine. She paused for a few moments and turned to Slavia. Go to your cabin. I understand that you're not the one to blame. Slavia didn't move an inch, she just lowered her eyes and held my hand even more tightly. Slavia! As you can see, she doesn't want to. What did you say to seduce her? My god, I said nothing. I started losing my call. Why do you think we've done something wrong? We haven't done anything. At all. As if I haven't seen it. She grinned. So, what have you seen? She paused, but continued to a second later in the same tone. I've seen enough. Whoa, you're so good at drawing conclusions. Getting in shopping in the secret police? Stop it with your thrillness. I didn't even think of starting it. I said sarcastically. Okay, your time is up, and I'm not willing to continue this pointless argument. You're grounded till the end of the session. Oh, really? And how are you going to manage that? I'll lock you down, the cabin. And what if I object? Look at me, Tina. Gave me a surprised look. It was just now that I realized a crowd was gathering around us. I could spot Lena, Alison, and Unviana in the crowd. What do you mean by object? said the calm leader slowly. I meant exactly what I said. But you can't, a true piano. Well, that means I'm a false one. Or could be Luna pushed her pulse. What's going on? Pulsed as if she was pulling herself together. 
You think I can't force you? And how would you do that? I laughed emphatically. It turns the various mystical forces that I was least concerned about right now, the cult leader indeed had absolutely no idea about enforcing anything. You know what? What? It looked like Olga Midiona already understood that she had lost, but still couldn't admit her defeat because of her pride and her position of eldest and wisest in the whole camp. I? My second camp someone was a young division of community Miss Party, young people who failed to join it generally were treated as outcasts in the society. I... I'll send a rapper to your school. You won't be accepted to the Kamsamal. You won't be able to join the party. Outcast. For me, such people are heroes, not an outcast. I had no way to respond against such serious threats. Hmm? Me? No, French cat, I had never been. Especially my mother hates all these camps, and she would never let me to go in one of them. She was totally against the USSR and all the camps activities. Especially the modern one, which actually happened in the 90s. So, I had never been. Uh, and I think she was a very wise person to actually do this. Uh, so, I had no way to respond against such serious threats. Except it, you have no choice anyway. Slavia, who had kept silent until now, intervened in the mother. Olga Mitrina, why do you assume you're right from the start? Why Simeon always to blame for everything? What's so special about what has happened? What has he. What have we done wrong? Are you even sure of what you're blaming us for? And if it was anyone other than me standing here, could you act the same way? Slavia, you should know that. That's the point. I know everything. I know you. I know that Simeon hasn't done anything wrong. I know your prejudice against him. Without any clear reason, by the way. And so, he's trying his best. Yes, it looks awkward at times, but I know he puts all his energy, his heart on it. And you going to blame him just because he's the way he is? I was charmed by Slavia's monologue, listening to it without really getting whether she was praising me, declaring facts or stating her opinion, which is probably just, just, gosh, can't pronounce this word. I guess her exact words flew over me, got the melody of her voice was enough for me, he hypnotized and carried me away from the sick woman and stupid piano camp while calming and healing the wounds in my soul. Okay, I don't know what to do with you anymore. Oh god, Mitterna, calm down a bit. But don't think that I approve of your behavior. She turned away, sliced through the crowd, and headed to the cabin. I expected a storm of applause like in American movies, but crowds started to dissolve quickly and the show came to its end. And Yana just winked at me slightly. Well, you know, we kind of overdid it. I look at Slana. She was smiling. No. Not at all. I'd be arguing with you until late at night and you nailed it right and clear. I wouldn't get the right words like that even if I had an entire week to think. Come on. What? This is simple truth, not a trace of lies or flattery. She gazed into my eyes and burst out laughing. I just said few things that came to my mind and this is how it turned out. Just thought it's the right one. That's how the same goes. Yes it is. I just noticed now that we were still holding each other by the hand. After feeling a bit awkward, I tried to pull my hands free, but Slavia didn't let me. This gave me the chills for a second. Uh, where will, will we go? I had no desire to go back to my cabin. Strictly speaking, I didn't want to stay in the camp at all. What would you say if I suggested to return to the forest? Slavia looked at me with surprise. Well, you know, just sometimes... Okay, let's go. 
was expecting such a quick response and had no idea how to finish my sentence. I was just going to tell you about a feeling I get sometimes when you want to go somewhere outside of your comfort zone. At least for a while, at least for a couple of hours. I used to do this before, quite often, visiting rain districts or even neighboring cities. New places and sceneries calm my heart and help to release that the world not limited by my apartment walls or the daily road to university or the workspace. Hmm? I mean, what they become afterwards? Like summer, boarding school, whatever? I have no idea. Summer boarding school. Summer school. <sighs> so, let me think. About all these comps ideas. Why they existed in the first place, by the way? Oh yeah. To let parents live without their children? To live for themselves, right? What else? I can't see any other purpose for this. They were not forced, right? Yeah, I even believe it was in the Soviet Union, it was very hard maybe to get in one of the scams, especially Artek, right? Artek, Artek. Gosh, I don't know even how to pronounce it. Hmm. But anyways, there was nothing good in them. Why? Because it was a terrible organization, first of all. People usually don't like to work and don't like their work. They were forced to do this. That's why it was trouble or something. I don't know. <sighs> and so there are people who are doing better or worse than me. And so my typical problems are not as bad as they appear to be. I suddenly smiled. What? And yeah, yeah, also, camp leaders in Soviet Union were just regular people without any actually experience or education and what to do in these camps. They were just forcing in it. But for example, in America, I'm not sure how it comes here, but people actually working, doing their job. Uh, they finish some university about this and becoming camp leaders. It's not like some random 18 years old. It must be someone after some great university education. 30 years old or something. So I believe camps are better in other countries, but not in Soviet Union. But who knows? I had no experience in neither of them. I have no idea. It's kind of sad I want to have such experience. It's impossible to get it nowadays. Anyway, even if it's possible to get experience in both of the countries? Hmm. Nah. Doesn't really matter. What? Nothing, just remember it. No mind, let's go. Yeah, that's it. No mind, let's go. <laughs> we headed to the forest, still holding hands. <clears throat> when we came to a glade, probably the one where we sat an hour ago would be a different one, as I couldn't distinguish one from another. Yeah? Sly so gave me a question and look. No, let's go, father. Okay. After another half an hour of wandering through the forest, we came to a small lake. What a nice place. You right? Snowy smiled enigmatically. Then I suggest we stop here. Nice place. I put the sleeping bag on the ground and sat on it. Slavy did the same. And what are you going to do? I didn't know it was your idea to go into the forest. Yes, mine. Wait a second, here will happen something nasty. It might be. I had to make a decision once again. Well, I had absolutely no idea what could we do. We could talk, for example. But about what? Come on, don't get so anxious. Sly laughed. I'm not. I can see you. Well, it's just because. It's fine. 
As you say, recite and store it at the ground. Maybe you can tell me about yourself? But, uh, yeah, seriously, I wasn't sure that in alpha versions there must be something nasty. But in Steam release it will not. Well, there's nothing ready to talk about. It's impossible that there could be nothing of interest in a person's life at all. How so? I have an example of that. It's kinda strange that this game was actually supposed to be a hentai game, and actually it was until they decided to officially release it on Steam. How so? I have an example of that. You just... She hesitated. Could it be that you're not telling me something? Like what? I don't know. Like, you're hiding something from me? But why would I? How would I know? He'd know better. Well, I don't. You said it like... How? Not right? Slavia laughed again. I'm sure that anyone but you would not be so calm here. Hmm? We can stay. By the way, we can stakes. I bought some several different in the past, and they fine if you actually not don't want to eat meat. It's definitely not a meat. But in its own way, they pretty tasty. Well, the current one, I don't know how it was in the past, because nowadays nobody is using... Um, what is it? Oh gosh, what is this? You know this fake meat, it's actually... Uh, nowadays it's... People think that it's very dangerous, so nobody creates it. By the way, what is it? I, I can't recall it. Uh, oh gosh. Let me google it. You know there's also something like Asian oil or something? How's it called? Uh, why can't find it? I can't believe that I cannot find this thing. You know, in the past, in the 90s, this fake meat was pretty popular, it tasted very terrible, and nowadays it's very dangerous. If you want to get a cancer, eat it. So nowadays you cannot find this meat at all, it's impossible. Oh, soy meat, it's soy meat, of course it's soy meat. What? <laughs> no, soy, soya. So it's forbidden to use it, if you see it in your like, shop, store, never buy it if you don't want to die. Soy meat is very dangerous, and in America it's usually forbidden, you cannot find it here. Nowadays you can buy bean meat uh, or pea meat, but not soy. I'm sure that anyone but you would not be so calm here, and bean meat is pretty nice, I really like it. But replace it real meat, of course not. Okay, so what do you want me to talk about? Well, tell me about yourself. Anything interesting that happened in your life? Actually, everything <laughs> interesting. When Harold said his Hikikomori sitting at home doing nothing. Right now I was definitely sure that there was nothing interesting in my life at all, but, but finally he will recall it? Okay, well, let me think, let's see. I made a smart face. When I was a kid, like 5 or 6 years old, I guess. There was a small hut near my family's country house. A solid one, made from wooden boards, with star paper roof, so it could be used as a bomb shelter and a cause of war. So, one day I was sitting on top of it with somebody and... What? You thought I was one single nut? Non-alcoholic whiskey? Wait a second, non-alcoholic whiskey? Does it exist? Never heard about this. I would like to try it, but it will be strange because alcohol it's actually how, how can you fake the taste of alcohol? It's impossible. 
Mm, you can replace it maybe with some paper? Like cheating? I don't know. So one day I was sitting on top of it with somebody and suddenly fell off. And there were beds of strawberries behind it. And during those split seconds that I was falling, I thought, that's it. The Green Reaper had come for me, and my entire life runs through my head. A life just six years old, but still. Wait a second, life runs through my head, never heard about this. I mean, from real life. Only in books, movies, and, and here. Entire life runs through your head. How is it possible? So I went on those beds, and obviously didn't feel anything, as there was plenty of soft ground there. So, that's the story. Slime I loved. Uh, but that's so silly. I didn't think so at the time. And what about now? I don't know. Non alcoholic wine? Non alcoholic wine is compote. I don't know. I guess it is. Fine. Tell me something else. You call that silly too. No, I won't. Hmm, I started sinking again. Also, I once fell into a pond from a bridge and almost drowned. The story is all... It's not even said in an annoying tone. Let's try about regular I don't like wines at all. Maybe, well, white wine maybe. But red, all the red ones are terrible taste. Told you, there isn't much to talk about, so I told you the first story that came to my mind. Oh, speaking of which, the lake. Slightly look at the water. Let's go swimming. I'm not really fond of that. Don't even have anything to swim in. Oh, come on, so you be swimming naked right now? She gave me a captivating smile. Well, I don't know really. Of course I was eager to agree, but I still hesitated. By the way, what about the uh, package? Did you receive it? Oh, it's still in progress. Oh, come on. Slime laughed and ran off to the lake, unbuttoning his shirt on the way. Hmm, well. I stooped up from the sleeping bag and slowly headed her way. What's the hit one sound? When I came closer, Slime was already splashing the lake with all her clothes left lying around. Come here! Well, I'm not sure if I want to. I've muddled it slowly. Come on, it's fun in here. She didn't seem to feel awkward about my presence at all. Well, I wanted to turn away first. But here's the question. What is more appropriate here? If Slavia thinks it's okay and I act awkwardly, won't it offend him? But that isn't the most important thing now. I didn't bring my swimming drunks. I guess that wasn't the most suitable excuse at the moment. So neither did I. Slavia said with the voice a level quieter. Don't be afraid. I'm not, there's nothing to be afraid of. So get in. I didn't know what to say. I probably wanted to comply, but with everything happening some other way? Not in such spontaneous and random manner? And really, why is Slime so friendly to me? Or is there something more to it than that? Then I really don't get it. It's up to you, she said disappointedly. Why surprise then? What for? Because? When I'll get out, I'll need a way to dry myself. Oh yeah, fine. I quickly went back to the sleeping bag, picking up branches on my way. Collecting firewood wasn't a problem at all, but how do I light the fire? I had neither a matchbox nor a lighter. Like every educated person, I knew that it's possible to do it by wrapping one stick against the other, but I've never done this before. Well, I had no other ideas. Started to drill one stick into another slowly? What the heck? I was lucky that sticks were dry enough because otherwise I'll have no chance at all. 
Actually, I was quite skeptical about my chances, but after just about a minute, some smoke appeared and I, and a faint fire fired up, dying out a moment later. Really? He was able to do this? At least it was clear that I could handle this way of starting a fire. It took me another 20 minutes of suffering, but in the end, I had a small fire burn next to the sleeping bag. I was throwing more sticks at it lazily. This is how it turns out. Man can adapt to anything, and so I could probably even survive in a snowy forest. My surrealist thoughts were interrupted by Slamia, who suddenly appeared right above me. Oh, you good. I lifted my gaze and quickly turned away. She was wearing a shirt, but thanks to its dampness, it wasn't hiding much. It wasn't a problem. In the lake, but it's quite different when she's so close. One wouldn't get lost with you. Slime set with your back against mine. How it will dry it off quickly. Somehow I was hoping to so, uh, so too. So what? What? I asked with a muddled voice. Tell me something else. I don't know really. I felt like something was stuck in my throat. Storytelling was definitely out of question. You couldn't so stiff suddenly? Really? Why would I? It's nothing, just... I had a feeling that I won't be able to just sit like that any longer. Anyone thinks we're clouding my mind. You think... This is normal? What? Sitting like this. What's wrong with it? Seems like Slavia really didn't understand. Well, you are... Do you really not get it? I sighed helplessly. But I'm not really sure. The voice sounded cunning. What do you think? Well, I... I'd... Maybe shouldn't call back. Hello, Sasoro. The words splashed through my head. She's giving her consent. Hmm? Of course, of course this will be a black screen. Something wonderful happened between us. Something that I couldn't even dream of six days ago. Wait a second, instead of tons of text, there will be just one single phrase. Uh, maybe it is the reason for me being in this camp. It was amazing. Yeah. For a while we just lay close to each other. It's kinda chilly. Hang on. And folded the sleeping bag, and we got inside together. Slava rested her head in, on my shoulder. Mind if I take a quick nap? I just feel so tired. Sure, go ahead. Soon her breathing became deep and steady. We being quietly rustling leaves on the trees around us. The grass was swaying next to us, and tiny bugs buzzed annoyingly overhead. Suddenly, I realized that. This was the best place I've ever seen in my life. Thinking that, I fell asleep. Okay, it's the final day. It's still night. I opened my eyes and saw the top of an orc roaring above. A strong wind had risen, chilling me to the bone. The full moon was staring right at me. Night has fallen. I couldn't really tell what time it was, but it didn't matter much. Slime was still asleep. I tucked the sleeping bag around her cosily, got dressed, and headed to the lake. I was really thirsty, and there wasn't any other option available. Besides, I don't think the water here is poisonous. We are not around Chernobyl or anything. At least I want to believe that. I scooped up some water and eagerly dipped my face into my hands. The water tasted so good that I that it felt like it came from a spring, not a lake. My reflection stared at me, brought in the water and touched by the moonlight. It seems to be smiling. Word? I didn't even notice? Were joyous? I headed back, fully intending to sleep till morning. And a tweak snapped nearby. I turned to see what made the noise and saw someone behind the tree. 
Yakuza. I call out the word. There's no need to scream like that. The voice seemed familiar. I came closer and saw Lena. What are you doing here? Taking a walk? At this time? What, I can't? No, just strange? I leaned against the tree and pondered. She's definitely here for a reason. Besides, we barely made it here. You can't reach this lake on a walk. And even at night, Slavia sleeping a dozen steps away was a clear view. And? What? Are you going to say anything? Am I supposed to? Up to you. I don't get what you're saying. No key? Been here for a while? Well, not that long. How long is that? Not long. Lena snapped. No, right? Is it all? I don't know. We stood silently. A while longer. You should probably get back. Slimy will get cold. So you saw. It was hard not to see. If you see that... Well, what am I supposed to see, hmm? Seems as clear as day, I guess. So you're not going to say anything? What is there to say? After you show at the square today, words don't seem to be needed. There was no show. It just... It's like I'm justifying myself to him. That's none of your business anyway. Exactly. It's your business. Just be careful. Watch out. What are you talking about? If everything comes to you so easily, you probably won't value it much. So you should. I don't get it. Well, like Slavia, um, this time it's magical. And then you do it another time and another, and then you get tired of it. Maybe. Then I lost. That's what I'm saying. You need to cherish what you have. And if you don't put much effort into getting it. If you think I'm treating this like a game, you're totally wrong. By the way, it's a game. <laughs> I don't think that. But it's possible. Besides, how about staying out of the things that are not of your business? Just giving you advice. Don't remember asking for it. I think you should pay more attention to what you're doing and planning to do so you don't feel any tension. Regrets later on. No, oh, this is starting to sound like a threat. Hmm, it really is. Well, maybe so. Lena said mysteriously. So you? No, not at all. Not now, to be precise. She added in a whisper. Wait a second, she knows something? Strange. Lena turned and headed into the depths of the forest. I didn't stop him. When she was almost gone from sight, I noticed something in her hand blinking in the moonlight. What a strange girl. I sighed and returned to Slyo. The warmth of her body kept me from the cold of the night. I hope it was keeping Slyo warm as well. So? Finally, the last day. And let's see what will happen, but sh something terrible should happen, no? I woke up with first rays of the sun because of the cold. Obviously, the sleeping bag was warm and it hadn't had enough time to be covered with hoarfrost, but still it was naughty for me to spend the night in a forest. Stun gun? I have no idea. Will they actually tell us? Maybe not in the ascendant. Carefully, in order to avoid waking Slavia up, Slavia up, I got out of the bag. A fresh morning air finally dispelled my drowsiness and the serenity of last night swept over me. I guess it was the happiest moment of my life. Intimacy, tenderness, love, patience, all those emotions interlinked in me during those short hours. I look at Slavia and she was beautiful. Her face was set in a motionless expression of absolute tranquility and peacefulness. I guess that's how angels sleep. As I had no wish to wake you up, 
just sat down by his side and reserved the way the morning began. Nature. The fresh dew, light winds, dancing tree and leaves, and patches of sunlight the water used to be alien to me yesterday. The concrete jungle of a huge city were the only forest I'd known before. And if someone had told me that I could just sit and enjoy things like that, despite the night cool and annoying mosquitoes without computer or internet, I definitely wouldn't have believed them. Good morning. I look at Slyre. Morning, do you sleep well? Better than ever. Me too. She reached out and kissed me. A kiss seems overlasting and I just dissolved in her. Having breakfast would be great. Slyre finally spoke, letting go of me. Yeah, I guess so. Do you know what time is it now? No, but I think it's still early. Hope the canteen is already open, I'm so hungry. Me too. We got our things and walk to the camp, holding hands. The canteen was indeed open and strangely we were its first visitors. It wasn't a surprise that breakfast wasn't all that luxurious. Alpha uh, two eggs, dry bread and watery tea. You know, I never liked the local food. In Isa, to tell you the truth, it's not a lot. But there's no choice. And it's quite good on an empty stomach. That's right. And like me, she was eating carefully. And I was dropping porridge on my shirt and spilling tea over myself as usual. Do you always sit like this? Anything wrong with that? I asked with a full mouth. She just laughed. Oh, no, not always, but it happens when I'm really hungry. Of course, I can be more civilized. Well, I can try at least. No worries, it's nothing. Soon we finished breakfast and went to the exit. No sooner had I noticed that we were still the people on the canteen than Olga Mitrina appeared on the threshold. Oh, it's you. Well, I won't ask where you spend the night. So, is it? The camp leader was obviously embarrassed. Good morning to, to you too, Olga Mitrina. Slava said with a bright smile. Yeah, morning, morning. Okay, just don't forget to pack your things. You won't? Uh, what does she mean? Some hike again? Asked Slava when we left the canteen. No. Today is the last day. Have you forgotten? Last day of what? Last day of the term. To say that her words struck me down was an under understatement. How? Why? Why so surprised? Didn't you know it was announced during the lineup? But even at those lineups which I attended, I was just sleeping in my feet. No. Now you know. Slava smiled naturally. And what should I do? Her words stirred a mass of emotions inside me. On one hand, I'll get out of this cursed camp at last, and I'll get some answers. On the other, I have just found something very important to me, and now I have to let it go? What do you mean? Nothing. And when is that departure? In the evening, at 5 or 6 o'clock. Well, still a lot of time. Yes, but I have some things to do. And I should find Jenny, she might be worried since I was absent. For the whole night. Oh well, worrying is so much like her. See you at lunch. Slavik gave me a kiss on the cheek and ran away. I kept standing at constant entrance. I had absolutely nothing to do, nothing to pack, so the only things to do was to wander around the camp, to eat him and sing, sing, sing. I would give anything to be able to empty my head for these 10 hours. A voice pulled me out of my trance. Hello. Electronics stood before me, as merry as usual. You do. I replied absent minded. You know, the whole camp is talking about you. I guess I know why. So you did it already? He asked giggling. Do you really think that concerns you? Well, no, I just 
and keep quiet. Leaving him alone with his speculations, I walk to the square. Why does he behave in a way that drives everything, everyone mad? Also, it's probably just me, he mutters. I was completely immersed in my thoughts, not looking around and didn't notice Miku until she bumped into me. I was sorry, I shouldn't be... I should be more careful. I was losing thought and didn't notice you. You know how it happens, so... And hi. I looked through here and kept walking. Oh, Samuel, wait a second. What's up with Slime? Tell me. It's so interesting. It seems that everyone in the whole camp except me and knows about it. No, not that I'm curious, but since everything is so serious... Lena took pics? I don't know. Maybe. Saying that she is not curious is like denying in your world some truth. Not so special. And so without turning back. Well, if you don't want to. I tried to isolate myself from the outside irritations. So Mika's other words passed by. The square scenery was soon replaced by the beach. Wait a second, how can she actually develop pictures? It's still 80s. There's no like instance photography or anything else. Luckily, the journal gem of the Soviet pop sand wasn't around. I took a place on the sand and started gazing at the river. Started gazing? Yeah. YNS is the whole camp so interested in my relationship with Slavia. In my world, nobody would have said the word. At least, not out loud. At least you don't hear the things they say behind your back. When I was ready to endure gossip, just as long as I don't have to report to everyone about my private life. The sun was rising higher and higher, and I was not enough. My eyes were already closed when I suddenly heard someone sitting down next to me. It was Alisa. Congratulations? A minion? Don't you know? Yeah, it doesn't take an Einstein to work it out. To be honest, I'm sick and tired of this. Everyone here just to mention it. Enough. And what did you expect? Is it always an honor for the camp? I would even say it's exceptional. She laughed. And to show up the camp leader just like that, even Ulyana couldn't manage it. In easy, probably. I didn't know how to respond to that, or whether it was compliments or mockery. You know, you're making too big a deal out of it. That was nothing unusual for me. Moreover, well, I don't understand why you have to poke your nose into my life. Don't you think it's just my personal business and nobody else? Maybe so. Maybe so. Alisa said seriously. We sat silently for a while. I wanted her to leave as soon as possible, but Alisa was watching the pioneers on the beach. It didn't seem that she was planning to go anywhere. So, what are you going to do next? Uh, what are you talking about? Today is the last day. Yeah, so what? Everyone will leave. So? And Slime will leave too. And you will leave too, so? We'll break up. I know that already, thank you. Obviously. And what do you think about that? What should I think? I can't stay here forever. Of course you can't. But what? You will let you go just like that? No. I mean, what can I do? Only speaking, I really had no idea what to do next. And by the way, we can actually see it. This train is the background. So there are other people here, right? I don't understand when they tried to leave this actually camp, they were not able to do this. It's very strange. My head was a complete mess. I'll be able to get out of here. It was the most important thing for me during last week. And now I have no answer. A much more difficult question. How did summer romance end for common summer Soviet teenagers? And my romance was a summer one, for sure. They just went home and that was it. They could live thousands of kilometers away from each other. 
in my case, in different worlds. It's not like one can come up with a decent solution for such a problem in a couple of hours. By the way, as I can see, he actually doesn't care about Slavia, but he actually cared about Alisa in her island. All like I know, that's up to you, you to decide. Alisa grins, stood up and ran to the river. It was only about half an hour till lunch, so I slowly walked to the canteen. Pierus hadn't managed to occupy all the three tables, so I was able to choose quite a good place, but to my regret, not my favorite one in the corner. I was just about to start eating when someone abruptly pulled out a chair on the table near me and took a seat. Hi there, how are you? It was Liana, an extraordinarily polite version of you. I was fine until now. I sneered. Oh, come on, better tell me. What are you going to do? Eat? I said. I'm not talking about that. The session's over, you know, Slavia are gonna part. What's next? It's like my future is the priority issue for all the local residents. Hey, what really is the matter? Just curious. Curious about a what? I don't ask you. What are you going to do tomorrow? The day after tomorrow? Or in a month? Why do you have to get into someone else's life? I'm not getting into anything. Malian said offended. You're not really good at all that stuff. True enough, you're still a kid. So you got to explain, since you're the adult here. What should I explain? So you're going to stay in touch through letters, right? And then you're going to go to this camp next summer together? Talking through letters? It sounds so wild to me. And I don't mean the idea of paper sheets and envelopes. I mean the possibility of losing Slavia for a year? Or probably even longer? Or forever? So what? May I join you? I raised my eyes and saw Slava standing near me with a food tray. Okay, it's time to go. Polaroid? Available in 80s. Well, as I see right now, there was no picture, so... What she was held in I still don't understand. But you really think that some of the pioneers can actually bring Polaroids here? In the camp? Mm, it's kinda low possibilities, you know? Elena jumped and dashed off for a far corner of the canteen. It could be a knife and she tried to kill us. Who knows? I still don't uh, try it here. Ending. Yes. What were you talking about? You know her? What could you possibly be talking about? Slime smiled. Took care of your business? Yeah, now I'm completely free. I can help you pack your stuff. By the way, so far, amongst uh, regular endings, I'm not talking about Miko. Alice's was the best so far, despite that we got only a bad ending, not a good one. Seriously, it was very creepy when actually we left alone in the whole camp. But here, pretty regular. It's not like I've got much to pack. Well, then you can help me with my stuff. Sure. It was the perfect opportunity for a quite top with you. Also, I had no slightest idea of what I should talk about. Soon enough, we finished our meal and headed to Slavic's cabin. Is it the first time I see it? By the way, yes. And <laughs> what is this picture on the left? What the heck is this? Wait a second on the right. I will try to actually show you by hiding my face here. Is it somebody naked in the snow on the right? I mean, here. I don't know. It so looks strange to me. Everything in it was clean and neat, unlike an organ meeting in this cabin. Oh, I'm not sure what I should start with. She took out her trail bag and started to rummage through the cabinet. Meanwhile, I sat on the bed and started to gather my thoughts. Do you have any plans 
for after the comp? What are you going to do? Well, you know, she raise your eyes to mine and give me a smile. I'll go back to school. Oh, yeah. And you? Uh, what about me? It's not like I'm really considering doing it to high school for a second time. Me? Well, me too, I guess. Also, I don't really feel like going back to my city. Seriously speaking, even if I felt like going back, I had nowhere to go anyway. Why? Just because, because there's nothing to do there. Nothing at all. There's no one waiting for me there. But your parents. My parents. Well, you know, they're not there now. But where are they then? They're sort of working abroad. Ah, so you're one lucky guy. She smiled merrily. Why? They sent you foreign stuff and all? I wouldn't call my situation lucky as such. Well, anyway. Don't be upset. She really looks like she doesn't understand what I'm saying. I'm upset about it. And that was true. Then what's up? Many things. For example? Well, for example... I was about to begin a vast outburst about my situation and my wish not to have to part with Slavia when the door was flung open with a bang and Zhenya entered. Ah, there you are. Yes, we are packing. I see. It's a good thing I didn't come 10 minutes later or they have disturbed you. Parking? Slavia blushed and kept on stuffing his things inside the bag anxiously. What's up, Eric, oh lover boy? That form of address gave me the creeps. What? Nothing. Just stared at me intendedly for some time. Watch it. Now more than just yourself depends on your choices. I didn't reply and with those words Jenya left the cabin. She definitely knows something, I'm constantly saying this. And for some reason, your ending is blocked till we get the true ending of this game. It's kinda interesting. What does she mean? I think you can never know for sure. And yet, well, I wanted to talk to you about it myself. Was able to start, but then... About what? Slime will look at me carefully. It just... Today we are leaving, right? Right. <clears throat> and we will move back to our cities. Well, yeah. And when will we, I see you again? Slime grew thoughtful. I don't know. And I don't know either. But you could write me letters. She smiled, but her smile didn't bring me peace of mind. Yes, of course, but you know that's not the same. What is it then? Can I go with you? I decided to take a chance and speak plainly. And what will you do then? Slavia seems not to not be surprised. What a bit wet. Studying my parents? And what will people say? I wasn't thinking about the opinions of other people. And to be honest, they didn't worry me much. Well, you can always find a way. What way? Feel think of something. Simeon, you are too young for this. In fact, I'm not. So what? Maybe after some time? How much time do you need? A year? Two years? Five? You say it as if... I don't know. She seemed confused. So everything that happened here was just a holiday romance? I started getting angry. No, of course not, just... What? I'm not ready to discuss it right now. Let's talk about it later. When later? We have only a couple hours left till departure. Slavia said nothing and continued to pack his things. I expected almost any kind of reaction from her, but not this. In fact, she just pushed me away. Turns out she doesn't need to continue our relationship. So, I'm not that important to her. Look, I still don't understand. What? Asked Slavia without turn. Why don't you want... And how did you expect it to be? 
but like can find a job rent an apartment and what can you do do you at least have a school living certificate fuck yes it's lying somewhere in the closet it's not important here why not if you have a goal you can overcome any obstacles moreover saying not that big that's what you think maybe you're right but anyway i can't understand your reaction after all if we just leave that's all that's the end i didn't say that but it's obvious where did you get that idea from she shouted perhaps it was the first time i had seen slavia like this well let me put it differently i don't just want to go back to the place where i live and to communicate with you only by letters or phone calling for a chance to meet it would be hard for me to well What's the problem then? You know, not everything is up to us. Who is it up to then? Also, no one would know how right she is better than I. If it was all up to me, I would have never found myself here. There are norms of society, laws, morality, ethics after all. What do those have to do with anything? Are all those that important? If they are not so important to you, they are important to me. Okay. I'm even ready to behave according to your standards, but there's something more important. Maybe. But I can't so suddenly. I don't have much time to think. I pause for a moment to gather my thoughts. I can only offer myself, because it's the only things I've got. Well, I don't know what might happen to me in an hour, but I'm sure that whatever happens, you have to start from scratch. I want to start with you. You're speaking so beautifully. But imagine how I feel. For you it's so simple, but I have my own life that I'm used to, and to change everything just like that? I had one before too. I said softly. What? I'm saying that it's unavoidable. A change is a part of life. You cannot live without facing them. You cannot live. Anyway. Slavia looked thoughtful, stood still for some time, holding her back in her hands, then came up to me, sat beside and put her head on my shoulder. Okay, I believe you. If you say so, then let it be. At that moment, I felt perfect happiness. It doesn't matter that a week ago I was in a completely different world, living another life. All of that is gone. And now it seems to me like something wild or alien. I don't even understand how I could consider that normal. Now I'm less concerned about how and by whose will all this happen. Now I'm not looking for answers. Why would I, when they all right here, in front of me? Now I have a long road ahead, hand in hand with the person I love. And looking back makes no sense. I could sit here forever, not noticing the time, but Slavia finally looked at the clock and gently whispered in my ear. It's time. Yes, exactly. We go to the bus stop and I run to the camp leader's cabin to get my things. You're so disorganized, you should have gathered them in advance, laughed Slavia. I don't have much to pack anyway. I leaped out of the house and ran towards Oka's meeting's cabin. The camp leader stood in the dress hall, apparently waiting for me. I thought you wouldn't come. I didn't reply, I just wandered inside, packed my winter clothes into a bag and ran out. Come on already, it's time. In a minute, we stood at the bus stop together with the other players. So, see, it wasn't a Polaroid or something. Nothing happened. Evans here, began Olga Dimitrina. You live in our camp today. I'd like to tell you something important. She was visibly nervous and desperately lost for words. I hope that you'll remember the time you've spent here for a lifetime. Still, retain only pleasing memories about Savionok. Also hope that you became at least a little bit better, managed to learn something and found new friends. Come back next year. The camp leader turned away. It's 
seems she was trying to hold back her tears. I didn't expect her to get so emotional, but I completely agreed with everything she said. Perhaps it was the first time that I didn't turn a deep heart to her. I think I'll miss this camp. And even old commit you know. Also, if this is the start of a new life, then why not come back here one more time? Savionek was far behind. The week had passed like an instant and come to an end, but it was the beginning of something new. My new life in a new world. Together with Slavia. The moon was shining, making everything as bright as a day. Beyond the bus windows, endless fields were passing, an occasional dressed up in grey but no less cheerful outfits, decorating in the distance with the dark green of the mighty forests. Anyway, surrounds were at least of my concerns now. I was enjoying the moment. Slavia and I were sitting in the last row, looking at the other pioneers. I heard Uliana was going wild, she was running through the cabin and shouting. Lena was reading a book and Alisa was sleeping. Seems like this world is absolutely normal. And it doesn't really matter how I got here. If everything turned out so wonderfully, I became a different person, met Slavia. What are you thinking about? Life? And how's it going? Just great. She laughed softly. You know... Well, let it wait a little. The bus is rocking me to sleep. I will take a nap if you don't mind. Sure, go ahead. She rested her head on my shoulder and soon fell asleep. The imminent arrival at the district center and a new chapter in my life didn't worry me at all. When you are on the top of the world, small things don't bother you. Therefore, I fell asleep as soon as I felt tired, with no fear of anything. And... You're waking up in our flat? There are dreams that you don't want to wake up from. It's like one is floating down a warm river towards a place far beyond the horizons, blissfully watching the vain world in and behind the clouds. The past is left behind, its echoes do not tear your soul. And the future is right here, you just have to reach it. To reach out. It doesn't matter what is awaiting you there, the very process of immersing yourself in this very world of serenity and happiness is itself much more important. I've always believed that the universe was once in this state and one day it will return to it again. Our life is just a blink of an eye, just a second of compar comparison to the universe, the birth and death of stars is a minute and those of galaxies are ours. But even all of that, all put together, will not even be a day. Nobody thinks how to live each specific second, so does it really matter what each drop in a stormy river running beyond the horizon of existence does? I opened my eyes and stretched blissfully. Had no desire to stand up as I felt like I was in perfect bliss, muffled in a blanket. After all, I don't have to go anywhere, as usual. Actually. And I don't have any plans. So why shouldn't I just sleep? I rolled over and started at the old world wallpaper covering the curved wall. I wonder how long ago the last time they renovated this room was. And why does here have wallpaper instead of bare woods anyway? Michael like warming bells began ringing somewhere deep in my mind. I threw the blanket away, jumped up, and furiously began to look around. Yes, I was in my flat again. At first I was paralyzed. The shock was so strong that my brain was unable to process what was going on. I just stood and gazed on the screen of the monitor on the table opposite me. I couldn't think. 
and forgot two breaths. Finally, my mind began to clear. What happened? Anyway, I fell asleep on the bus going to the district center. Yes, something like that. And Slava was sitting by my side. And now I'm back here. Seems like during the week I spent there in the camp, I had gotten so used to the fact that I'd never returned to my previous life that I now I just have no idea how to react to all this. After all, at first my main wish was to get home. But in the end, everything was like in a bad movie. At last I had come back, but I'm still shocked. No, I felt no fear. I was rather interested and upset. After all, I already made up my mind to start a new life with Slavia, leaving all my problems behind in self suffering self examination, unfinished affairs, and plans for the future. Obviously, that life could not be worse than this one, at least. But there's no returning to it now. On the other hand, if someone had told me a week ago that I would be sent in a different world just like that, in the blink of an eye, I would not have believed them. So, what makes such a fantastic event happening again so impossible? Moving my legs with difficulty, I went to the kitchen, got a glass of water and returned to the room. The ice cold liquid with a disgusting aftertaste, disgusting aftertaste of bleaching powder what? revived me to some degree. Now I have to decide what to do next. Suddenly I realized that I couldn't bear the silence. After turning the computer on, I launched a random song in the player and managed to calm down somewhat. I mean, seriously speaking, what can I do? Listen to a list that absolutely nothing is up to me, but someone's will I was pulled out of my usual world and then sent back? No answers were found during the week of the camp in the camp. What's the point in speculating now? I must forget everything that happened like a bad dream. Maybe souls were just hallucinations and don't really care now. The only thing that prevented me from completely forgetting the short period of li my life was Slavia. I recalled his smile and all the time we spent together. From the meeting on the very first day to the night in the forest and our departure from the camp, my heart firstly jumped inside my chest, spreading a breath of pain all throughout my body. I like you at first sight. So gentle, caring, understanding. Just like that anime hero. What was her name? The one who helped an antisocial fellow like me deal with depression? Is it welcome to an NH game? Might be. And if you think about it, there's no such people in real life. Slime asked nothing in return, needed to know and current management. Never expected to be understood or priced for her work. She just was being herself, a girl that cannot exist in real life. If you think clearly, that's really exactly what she was. It seems like I've seen one single week long dream. About the pinner comes, Soviet teenagers and their camp leader about warm summer nights and guessing around a fire about lighthearted children's game and simple human joys about one moment that lasted a week and the other lasting summer. But not just seen, I've been there, was part of everything, my eyes unwillingly filled with tears, not tears of pain or despair, tears of sorrow and bright melancholy. Even if everything is over, I experienced something that most people could never even dream about. Slavia image flashed in my head, bright and brighter. I would love so much of, for Hyun to return from the camp with me. Maybe I, I have nothing to offer you now, but my entire life is still ahead of me. I guess I learned a lot of useful lessons from these events. I couldn't help thinking that it all seems too perfect, like it was written according to some simple plan. A loser hero, fantastic incident, and wonderful transformation. I guess it's not possible. Not in this life. Will I become the person I was before only a day or a week later? Well, it's the most realistic course of events. One thing's for sure. 
I will never be able to go back. About a month has passed since I returned from Sabionok, or to say it more correctly as since I woke up. I returned to my usual life as a loner, surfing the internet for days, going outside only to shop, as expected, it began to suit me again. Well, obviously moments of melancholy and depression occurred, a person like me just can't do without them, but they lasted no longer than usual, except those times when, while sleeping, I returned to that summer, that mysterious calm. But after awakening, I tried to banish these souls as soon as possible, after all, what's the point in dreaming of becoming a wizard? Even if miracle happened, and I was proof that they do, they happen completely independent of us, the word sweet doesn't give you a sweet taste regardless of how often you pronounce it. But nonetheless, something has changed in my existence, formerly I didn't think ahead, didn't really care how long I would live with a one week or 40 years, but now I look forward to it with optimism. Not like I tried to change anything or to become a different person, but the world now seems more understandable. Not simple, not friendly, no, not friendly at all, but just understandable. Before I just couldn't cope with some events of facts, so I can't hope release that they were the, there for a reason. Now I started seeing life is something simpler. What happens, happens for the best. Or at least it happens and I can live with it. And if I can't, I'm powerless in that case. I guess I started smiling more often. Or at least I didn't carry that look of deep, universal frustration 24 hours all week. In my acquaintances on the internet, obviously, noticed some change in me. And their opinions agreed that the change are good. Now I think I'm ready to live on, since the Savionic and its inhabitants. Without them, I wouldn't be able. It was the beginning of January. The city had barely covered from the New Year of the hangover. The streets were almost empty during the day, not to mention the nights when the only stench of walking down the street seems extremely busy with some business rushing somewhere for reasons that couldn't wait. I had no such reason. I just decided to have little walk. It's necessary to get some fresh air sometimes. A winter's night is the best time to be alone with yourself. I always thought that true solitude and can be felt in a crowd rather than in a burning hot desert, bound this plain on top of mountain, caught with snow. It's a stream of people, words, thoughts, and inspirations. Everyone had their own aim and direction. And I was the only one strong amongst them, deserving no attention from others. Maybe they are like vectors moving in different directions. They never meet at harder than coordinates. It's the same things here. These people are walking, running in one direction, and I'm dragging along in the others. But did they feel lonely? Before? Yes. But now? Highly unlikely. In the bright, blindness lights of the city, the noise of cars and the thrilling crowds enjoying a heavenly symphony of silence. But now, the situation is slightly different. It's just me in the streets. So I'm not, not only with my own self, but with um, the whole world. Being a sand grain in a desert is not the same thing as being a water drop in an ocean. In the crowd, nobody noticed me, nobody paid my any attention, but now everyone who peeks out the window or see me while driving past will think, why can't he just stay home? Maybe he has some urgent matter? Suppose he's mad? Is he just drunk? I never liked standing out from crowd when it's not appropriate, so opposing society was never an option for me. But now it was different. As I would try to tell everybody, look, I can be happy too. I can, I, you need your TV and your hot chocolate, but I just need the snow, the night, the dark room, and a dull monitor screen. Look, I am not any worse off than you. 
felt sadness in my heart, but it was a silent sadness. Do you really need the things that they have and I do not? Maybe I have something much more valuable? I didn't know this. I came to the bus stop to 410 Road. This brings back memories. I sat down and rummaged in my pockets trying to find cigarettes. However, the packet was empty. Fine. I made it up and threw it into the bin. Maybe I'll get healthier. A lonely star was shining in the sky. Today, I read on the internet that, according to the calculations of scientists, one of the most beautiful astronomical events has already ceased to exist, and we'll see it only decades later. Maybe the star has already exploded as well, and now there's only a beautiful image in the night sky. Somewhere near, near lost planets on the edge of the galaxy. However, why does one or another thing exist? Is it simply because it just there has shape and can be touched? Or is it because we believe that it exists? That was so the answer is simple. But on the other hand, even if the star is gone, we can still see its cold light. Maybe it helped someone to get out of a snowy winter forest, give someone hope or a bit of warmth to someone else? To the simple astronomical object that exploded God knows where and do all this? Can billions of people believe in something that doesn't really exist? But belief itself never made any object real. At least, none that I've ever heard of. The snowfall grew stronger. Not was a real snowstorm. Midnight. Will my courage turn into a pumpkin in a few moments? Maybe the return to Sabionic is the end of my own version of the Cinderella tale? Even so, is it really a bad end? Why, any tale contains at least a bit of truth. I remember it slamming, stood up, shook off the snow and went slowly into the night. I felt no sorrow, had no regrets. Maybe all this is just another episode of that tale, that warming dream which I wanted so much to continue. Why can't it repeat what happened once already? And what if I meet Slavin reality? <laughs> okay, that's it. Hmm. Well, as I can see, in Alisa ending he actually accomplished something. But here in Slavia ending, nothing was done with his life. Well, he says that he is feeling better, his attitude changed to something better, but nothing really happened. Hmm. Uh, let's see what else we left. Definitely will not able to finish this game today. It's simply impossible. By the way, why not to check what actually Lena had in your hand? I can try this. Okay, your changes for your ending in the day number 5.6. Okay, I'll take a pause for several minutes and we'll start a new one. Well, I don't want to get the good ending for Slavia yet. I can left it for the very end. Okay, uh, be right back.
Ну окей. На бэк. Вис нью кава ти. Well, before it was cutting out the... True Endure? What does it mean? No idea. Uh. Okay, well, let's me open the list of the endings and see how I actually get the ending for Lena. Her first choice is actually at the end of day one, when we actually need to surprise her book. Well, it's kind of obvious. But that's not all. So, as I said, day five and six are important. Uh huh. I think I understand. Okay, let's go. A new game. Skip on this. Uh, doesn't matter. Да, no, да, no, Let's take them. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we must price your book. Did I do this before? Let's see. I did not. Hmm. A good book. Thanks. Honestly speaking, I haven't read it. By the way, I read it. Uh, but I think that such literature suits you very well. And that was all. Okay, we should not bet with Alisa. Uh, so right now, doesn't matter what you'll select. I believe uh, today I selected this first time. Let's go to Clubhouse. Nothing new. Music club. Yeah, kitchen is not available now. So here doesn't matter, so let's go along. Okay, we are not going to bed with you. We are skipping the tutorial. We are lose against Lena, by the way, it's important to lose. And after this, you must go to this. Football, volleyball, okay, sport place or something. It's very important to go there. It's kind of interesting. Right? Right. I didn't do this before. Nice. I wanted to get away. How could I ever lose in the first round? There was no excuse for me. The sports ground seems to be the best place to go to be alone at the moment. Who would think about playing soccer in the evening? I sat down on a bench near the pitch and started to think about what had happened. Well, actually, who? I, many times when I actually go in and start at night, the people playing at night. With lights on, of course. Suddenly, from the volleyball field side, I started hearing sounds. It seems to me like sounds of rasping. Oh. Whistling? Turning, I saw someone desperately swinging his hand. Who is he gesturing to? To my astonishment, it was Lena. She was throwing the 
shuttle cock up in the air and attempted to strike it with the rocket. However, to be really, really honest, she sucked at badminton. I was just watching for a while, but then I started to go after her. I went around the volleyball courts and got inside so that she could see me. And I was as timid as a deer, so I'd rather not repeat previous mistakes. Hi. Oh, by the way, it's her new outfit, nice. She glanced at me and immediately hit the rockets and the shuttlecock behind her back. You like badminton? Not really. I see you're not really getting it. Maybe you want some help? To tell the truth, I was not very good at badminton, but just like any other child I used to play it from time to time. I tried twice and failed. Let me show you. Thank you. She blushed. I want to join the badminton team, but I don't see it happening really. I wouldn't even try today, but she looked up at me. I never have any luck at cards, but seemed like I was on fire today, so I thought it could be the same as badminton. After these words, I realized that losing to Lena is doubly upsetting. I would never think of you as being so keen on sports. She blushed again. Excuse me. Come on, uh, let me show you. I took the rocket, threw the shuttlecock up in the air and struck it with such strength that it flew over the fence and got lost among the trees. Oh, sorry. Well, I didn't expect that from myself. Never mind. Also, it was the last one. The last one? Let's go and get it. It better not. This in the forest. What is there? A goblin? I laughed at loud. Maybe. Seems like I was the only one joking around. There's no one there to be afraid of. Come on! Well, if you are with me... He went out of the sports ground, and I started to inspect the trees. All of a sudden... Gosh, what is this? All of a sudden, the screech of an old prison night. What the... What is this? Song? I didn't think it really funny, but wait a second, it's holding this. Oh gosh. <laughs> Lena got so scared that she seized me with both hands, giving me something like a hug. <laughs> Some grip was a bit awkward. To feel a girl's body and its warmth so close to me, I was filled with tenderness. I had a deep desire to protect you and to guard you from anyone, even if it's only an owl or another night bird. My only wish was to let this amorous last forever. However, all good things must come to an end sooner or later. After a while, I realized that it was an owl that was switching on a branch next to us. He was holding our shellcock tightly. He said, what you were so scared of? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Take a look. Isn't scary at all. Then I looked up from behind my back. Right, not scary at all. Hey, wait a second. I gently got out of your hug and came closer to the outlet. At first, it seems that it's get frightened and fly away, dropping the shuttlecock. But the outlet was still perching there. I succeeded in grasping the shuttlecock and carefully taking it from the bird. Hey, look, it's almost tame. Would you like to pet it? Maybe some other time. I handed the shuttlecock to Leo. Thank you. She smiled gently. I have to go. Good luck at badminton. Then I smiled again and hurried away to the camp. How speed can a girl get? Okay, that's it. Day number three. Mm, let's see. Yeah, sorry about the promise, Lena. It's kinda obvious. Let's go. And it's first time when I'm selecting this. Hmm. I was sure that Lena wouldn't mind if I sat next to her. Hold on. Oh, wait a second. Sorry, maybe later. 
I gently loosened my sleeve from her grip and headed to the farthest corner of the canteen. Jane was shouting something in my direction, but I tried to ignore her. Hi, good morning. Having heard the librarian shouting, Lena had been stealing glances at me for a while. Morning. Stingy enough, she didn't blush, but smiled instead. Would you mind if I join you? I'll get my meal and be back in no time. Yeah, sure. In a minute, I was already sitting in front of her with a simple set of plates and on a tray, porridge to poached eggs for pieces of white bread, bullet sausage, and a glass of compots made of unknown fruits and berries. Have a nice meal. Thanks. I was trying to eat as neatly as I could, no jumping, smearing the food or spilling the compote over myself. By the way, why he did totally opposite this slaughter? Seems that eating like a human and not like a hog was not that hard at all. As usual, Lena remained silent, which means I should start the conversation. Going to the dance tonight? Probably. She was silent for a while. And you? Mm, I don't know yet. So I didn't want to go there at all. I didn't like dance parties since my school days. Why so? What do you mean? My mind was still far away from my school times. Why don't you want to go? I didn't say don't want to go to. Okay, son. But if you invite me, I turned red and looked away. I don't really. Sorry, just kidding. I'm well confused. I'd better not joke like that. Fine. Lena said indifferently and focused on her foot, while her face turned even more red. Why am I stuck on these dances? You have nothing else to talk about. But wait, is there actually anything? By the way, maybe you know what Jenya wanted to ask me? Hmm? I mean, when I just came in, she wanted something from me. I don't know. I see. Conversation reached a dead end, so I tried to simply focus on my meal. Lena finished her breakfast first. I should go. See you later. See you. Okay. We had everything. Eh. No? By the way, let me check one thing on my monitor. It's okay. Hi again. Lena emerged from behind the nurse back. And that's all? That was everything that knew was here in this one. Then she seems more spirited during lunch. No way. There are lots of boxes. Okay, what should I select? Mm, okay, I'll come. Well, it's also kind of obvious. Nice. That's how a true pioneer should answer. And after these words, I barely came a step closer to the be prepared, always be prepared motto. Then you can go. Wait a second, see new music? I had never heard this one. First time. It reminds me of something. What should X? It's so it come? Well, I don't know. Okay, I look at Lena, who was still staring at the ground. I guess all the time she spent staring at the ground was enough to learn everything there is to know about the life and habits of different insects. Plus, Lena likes to read, so she probably read many biological, botanical, and so on books. Well, actually, like I read a lot in the past, but such books I will avoid for sure. Perhaps she wants to become an entomologist? Uh, where will you head next? Lena's words drew me away from the obscure thoughts. We'd been standing at the square for some time, and my speculations about Buck's lives were only an attempt to escape with this awkward situation. So, why did I see it as awkward? 
Just don't forget, alright? Don't forget... Uh, what? Well, tonight after dinner at the infirmary, your face got a slightly grumpy look to it. No way, that's impossible. Alright, alright, right after dinner, I'm at your service. I saw too late at my words Lena blushed even harder. I need to find a way to keep this situation. Why did the nurse ask you to go to do it? I don't know. I was just sitting on the bench and reading a book when she came in. It's smart to ask a loyal person, would never say no. Okay. Well then, after dinner. Okay. I'll be off then. Yeah, sure. She walked up somewhere beside the clubs and I just stood at the square for some time. So, what's next? Well, let's see. No, you must go find the answers. I'll check. Uh, uh -huh. It's day number three. Okay, here we must select. What? I think I'd rather see the guys with their giant robot engineering? What? Hello, Benny Rava. Things are pretty well, we already finished one of the endings. That actually was kinda lame for me. Well, epilogue is always very nice design. I mean, wrote. Right, wrote. So, if you compare this game to Doki Doki Leadership Club, kinda obvious that this game is much better. It was like created by a way professional writer, despite that they were anonymous on Dwatch. Okay, giant robots engineering. Uh, I don't know if I selected this one, but I'm not sure. Hey, yes, I selected this. But I didn't pay attention to it was giant robot. Okay, here doesn't matter, so let's just run away. Okay, dance. And dance. One more invitation to dance would completely ruin my pride. I started to think about an appropriate excuse to leave and was looking for the moment to do so. Once then I saw Lena. <clears throat> I started to see, uh, okay, she was slowly heading my way. Maybe we should go? Uh, where to? I was so immersed in my thoughts that I didn't really get what she meant. To say infirmary. But if you want to stay here and dance? I doubt she was going to dance. Lena had stood aside the whole evening. No, I'll pass. Let's go. At least I won't have to stand here like a shy nerd. Seriously, trying to conceal myself in the corner wasn't very pleasant. A ball in a china shop would be more agile than me on the dance floor. I didn't have a slightest intention of dancing in the first place. Well, shall we go to the infirmary? Wait a second, it's a new song as well? I mean, music? That's right. How many music in this game? Lena brought me out from my thoughts. We'd been just standing there as the canting for some time. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. I must actually uh, find all this music on YouTube and add to my playlist. What for? She looked at me in surprise. Well, for getting me out of there. I shouldn't have told you that dancing is not my thing. It's, uh, you know, so boring there. Seems to me you don't like dancing. There was not a trace of sarcasm on your truthful, even childlike face. Seems like she really doesn't understand. Yeah, don't like it at all, I'm not into it. Me too? No one ever invites me to dance. Then you blush and start at ground as usual. Strange. What strange? Well, no one ever invites you. You think so? Again, she look at me. It's an expression of surprise and a lack of understanding. I got confused and couldn't find what to say in return right away. Yes, 
Certainly. If I liked dancing, I would have invited you for sure. Thanks. He didn't say a word for the rest of the way. And I honestly felt too confused by my awkward compliments, and I just didn't know what topic to choose for a conversation. It was completely dark by that time at the gloomy building of the infirmary, covered in the night mist, who looked strongly like a haunted house. I felt a strong desire to turn around and walk away without making any noise. I threw a quick glance at Lena and noticed that she looked like usual. Shy, modest, uncertain, but not in any way scared. Just made me even more uncomfortable. Can't be that she's not scared while I... Holy shit. Suddenly it all hooted nearby and I shared it. And it seems easier to not to hear it, not pay attention to it, or just not be scared by it at all. I hardly could believe it's a sort of option, but I didn't want to ask you about it, given away my own fear. I entered the infirmary and found a switch in the dark. Will the nurse come later? What? You have a uh, whole emote here. What? Who is this one? Practical mind mic. Wait, was that really nice old his emotes? Me interesting. Maybe I should follow this channel as well. No, actually not. Okay, this is. <clears throat> she won't come. Okay, she won't come. Understood. Oh, oh, wait a second. What do you mean she won't come? Mm, I see. So that I am afraid to be alone with Lena? Indoors. At night. With no one around. Only in movies does something happen under such circumstances. I still think that she's mentally unstable, but who knows. Does Steven from Australia? Maybe? By the way, you'll read him something? Because Australia, so right now there's a daytime for him, right? I don't know. Australia is totally on the other side of the land, doesn't matter where you are. Just that I'm with Lena and not with Liana and Slavia. Or Slavia. And by the way, there's summer for them, right? It seriously changed my attitude towards things happening. There are the boxes. She pointed at the messy stack of boxes. There were about a dozen of them. It would take much more than 10 minutes of work. I put one of the boxes on the table before me and started to take out its contents. There were bandages, lots of little packs of bandages. Here, take this. Lena gave me a piece of paper. There were some fields and I quickly realized that I should put the name in the left, the description in the middle, this one and the quantity in the right field. It's not a database, but it'll do. The walk started in full swing. Simeon? Hmm? Yesterday everything is turned upside down? You mean antipods? <laughs> they are. What? I look at Lena. She stared at me for a couple of moments, seemingly making up her mind to do or to say something, but then lowered her gaze again. No, no mind. It was physically hard for me to just sit without saying a word. However, I didn't dare to speak first, not only because I couldn't think of a good topic for conversation, but that I was just feeling shy. This girl could easily be embarrassed by anything. Well, we know that she is slayer, a big liar. She will not be embarrassed. Simeon. Yes. You can't in them all over again. Indeed, I had started to take out and put into the database the bandages. I had already counted. Oh, sorry. She didn't answer. Hey, uh, where from? I mean, where did you come from? I mean, where were you born? I mean, where do you live? Well, I... There's a town not far from here. 
Not far from here? Where is it? Somewhere. Looks like she doesn't want to talk about it. Is Lena hiding something too? Is it explicable in the case of Olga Dmitrievna, but in Lena's case? It's absolutely not like her. Is it a secret? No. Just... So, is it somewhere in the south too? I should have thought of something more original. Every single one of my sudden ideas turned out the wrong way, and this attempt to play spy worked out even worse. And I thought about South just because the only pioneer camp of the Soviet Union I remember was our tech. Yes. Lena hesitated to reply. I couldn't quite tell if she was lying or not. Don't you like it here? I wonder what part of what I said made you think so. Absolutely not. I like it here. I think his friendliness sounded very insidious, grating on her eyes. What about you? I like it. It's so calm here. There's a lot of books in the library. And the people are nice. Nice, but not all of them. Why? Did you really say that plus be out loud? Turns out, I did. On weekends, he often streams the game Dev Run this time. Wait a second, what is Game Dev? Ah, he's actually developing games? What? Didn't quite get it. <laughs> Let me check his stream. Oh, really quick. I mean, the past one. Uh, let's see. Past broadcasters. Uh, King Quest 4, by the way. I actually love all the King Quest games, but I'm not going to stream them because I played them, and some of them are <clears throat> definitely not for me. It's where you can die every single time. Yes, I'm playing game development in C. Wait a second, it's nice. It's the only. Uh, Programming languages that I still can valid for game development. C++. XCOM. I stream it only one stream, but it's, this game is too long to actually stream it. I, am, I can't do this. And yeah, I must return actually back to SNES games. I still have several of them to finish. Okay, after Red Dead Redemption, I mean the second game, I will return to Super Nintendo games, that's for sure. And I still didn't finish all the games from 1996, gosh, I can't believe this. <sighs> it's too poor to promote him, <laughs> I see. Turns out, I did, I did, uh, I said it loud. Well, you know. Ulyana, for example, she's like an energizer battery. It's completely unbalanced point of power application. Battery? What? Maybe I really was sent back in time. Uh, never mind. Alisa, saying a pioneer is the kid's role model, it certainly doesn't describe her. Certainly doesn't describe her. If everything started following her example, it would be a complete disaster for the country in 20 years or so. Emma, thinking about it now, you can draw the conclusions that everybody did follow the example of Alisa Dochevska in, in the 80s, where I probably am right now. Just not like Zach, actually. Not like Zach? Not like what? Not like what you said about her. To begin with, I hadn't said anything. I just stated the fact that she is not the best example to follow. Well, maybe. Sounds like you know her well enough. Probably. Ask that question only to keep the conversation going and didn't expect an answer like that. Alice and Lena were so different, the idea that they could be close was unbelievable to, for me. We came from the same town. As if she had foreseen my question. We have common friends, even so Lisa is one year older. Okay. It's a little bit strange. Oh, not like that, I'm just surprised. Everyone gets surprised. Lena smiled a bit. I took the second box. 
Analgino activated the charcoal. Analgino activated the charcoal. Science solution. Potassium permanganate. Fratilin. Analgino. Well, it's definitely just regular Analgino. <sighs> Elena always spoke in symbols and this. How can I communicate with you if every conversation turns into a monologue or just an awkward silence? I wasn't quite satisfied with such a state of things. Sometimes it looked like she's hiding something behind her mask of shyness. But what? You know, I read a book not that long ago. Do you like science fiction? Not much. Damn, NASA fella. Well, if you don't like it, then what books do you like? Different kinds? The conversation wasn't going smoothly and I had to turn it off for the better. Who knows why, but I thought about the dance again. Feelings of uneasiness, discomfort and even shame all helped me once more. Looks like I'm not that different from Lena when it comes to such things. I'm shy and afraid of things I don't understand or can't do. I should probably overcome my own fears before anything else. And this will help me to understand him better. I've made up my mind. There are only a couple of boxes left. Yes. Hey, I've got an idea. How about we go to the canteen afterwards? I think the day recovery was taken back there. What is it doing in the canteen? I hesitate. What for? Your sensor's look made it clear that she had in the slightest idea what I'm going to offer. Well, frankly speaking, I just don't know how to dance, that's why I don't like it. That's the reason I was so confused back there. Maybe I could thank you by dancing with you. But I... She stopped sorting up the medicine for a moment, blushed and looked right in my eyes. I got a bit stubborn. It really was a stupid idea. By the way, by the way, uh, many actual reviews of this game saying that they didn't like the main character because he's actually acting stupid and so on, but I can't see what stupid things he's doing. He is doing everything right. I would do simply the same. It's okay. If you don't want to, I don't insist. What if someone sees us? I suddenly didn't think about it. It's not a big deal. But everybody is asleep already. And no one is going to go to the canteen at night. How will we get in there? I should have thought about it beforehand. Well, this moment I regretted that I still didn't get my cell phone from the leader's cabin. We're gonna meet him and talk my heads off then. And I forgot it. <coughs> anyway. I had to say something to get away from this awkward topic. Hmm, what kind of music do you like? Different kinds? Again? I'm not really into it. Then let's imagine that it's playing now. I mean, that you, that we heard, playing. How's it? Like it plays in your... head? I still remember the melody the parents were dancing to. The music and the words were really clear in my memory. I'm not sure I can do it. You can just try. Probably. I've got her consent. In Lena's case, even that probably can be considered yes. We sold the sorted medical supplies for the rest of the time, writing down their names and quantities. I should pay more attention to every word I say after such luck. I stayed silent most of the time, so soon we finish the last box. I gave Lena the filled in list and started to stare at her, like I saw Bigfoot riding in a unicycle while juggling piglets. It was amazing, frightening, and above all, mesmerizing. She suddenly, suddenly broke out laughing. But what? It looks at yours. Uh, what about it? It's just funny. Really? Yes, so where are we going to go? Uh, where? Your last words unsettled me. I completely forgot what we were talking about. Frankly speaking, I had completely left 
this world for a moment. Well, you know, to dance. Then I blushed right away, and her face took on a strange expression of shyness, uneasiness, and fear. Oh yes, or I was just lost in thought. Let's go to the beer. I don't know why I choose that place. Maybe because you could run at the piano at the square, in the residential area, or near the canteen, but not on the pier. That's what I saw at least. Maybe because of the large, bright moon reflecting on the water in the night. And it's a full moon today. I don't know how, but this solution just offered itself. If you don't like it, then we can know that's a really nice place. Then unlock the door, and we made our way to the pier. Night fell on the sleeping car. Should we follow the road? Why? She'll be faster through the forest. There's a nice path there. Hmm? <laughs> Salam alaikum. Hello there. Well, they could be. Who? And all that? I loved. How are you? A shadow of displeasure across your face. Well, despite that I know Russian <laughs> on this channel, I'm speaking only English, no matter what. That's it. Sorry about that. No mind it. Sorry. If you want to. Okay. But can I? Without finishing, she grabbed it onto my arm. Is it okay with you? Now it's my turn to blush. And of course, we walked through the forest. It was hardly a forest, though. More like a small grove between the camp and the pier. About a hundred meters long. I would never think that there would be anything to be afraid of, even on my own. But it just seems like Lenosphere was contagious. And what, what the heck is this in the middle of the screen? Branches swayed over us. I shuddered and Lena clung to my arm even more strongly. Don't be afraid. Must be a squirrel. Yeah. A squirrel. Regent Bear. Night was really beautiful. I walked closer to the river and called Lena. Look! The beer, the bone house and the moon were reflecting in the water. Looked like another world, with the surface of the water being the door to Wonderland. Uh, you could just jump and find yourself on the other side. May have this dance? I extended my hand to her and bowed clumsily. Lena hesitated. I must have overdid it with my mannerism. And nothing to fear. I'm no good at it either. Why either? She never said she couldn't dance, so it was kind of obvious. Okay. Lena gave me her hand. I let her meet aside and gently put my arms around her waist. We just stood like that for a few moments. And what next? Well, I don't know. Do you remember the song? Barely. But I remember. Great, let's watch like in the movies. How's that? Instead of answering her, I hurriedly started to move in a cycle with Lena. See? Not the hard at all. Yeah. You watched for several minutes. Or whatever you could call it. I felt her warmth, so we have where we were not that close to each other. Her chest held heavily, and her face started to blush more and more. Then didn't look at me, worked in her eyes from one side to another. I suddenly realized that I had never felt anything like this before. It was tenderness overtaking reality, as if I found myself in another, better world. I realized that I didn't want to let this girl to go and that I would give up anything just to go on watching with her forever. I clasped Lena tighter. And only then she did uh, look straight at me. How many mistakes came in this, in this text? There was a surprise and confusion in her gaze, but no fear whatsoever. She wasn't afraid of me and didn't push me away. And you said you can't dance? I really can't. 
I was confused. I didn't expect that reaction from her. Well, has your confusion, shyness, and fear disappeared though? Uh, you do dance pretty well? I know. A playful smile crossed her face. Or maybe it just seemed so to me? No, I swear, I saw it. How is it possible? The image, image of shy and bonus Lena didn't fit together with this moment at all. Uh, what should I say? What should I do next? I could only keep on watching with her in this dance, which was getting stranger with every passing minute. Timon, Timon, where are you? <laughs> what the heck, Guy? Why she was always there? The voice came from the edge of the forest. Damn, worst time in hell. Timon! It was Olga Dmitrievna. She mustn't be worried because I should have been back a long time ago. I should have guessed that Talbot's camp leader would start searching for a lost pioneer. I should have warned her beforehand. Oh, there's no point in thinking about it now. Lena looked at me questioningly. Being seen together would not be the best thing. Why? Uh, let's go and tell her that everything is alright. No, let's hide and return to the camp later. Your idea was strange. Everything was going so well. At least something was starting to work out. Or seemed like it did. But what was that something? Seriously. <clears throat> She's very strange. Despite that in Alice's ending we actually figured out who was she, but Something still hiding. I don't know what. Oh, Jason! I decided not to argue. It wasn't appropriate in such a situation. Look at Mitrina, shot it for a while, and left. Let's go. <clears throat> yes. Then I didn't grab into my arm on the way back. I was a little bit frustrated, but wasn't certain enough to take the first step. We kept silent again. It was not typical of Lena to start a conversation, and I just didn't know what to say after everything that happened at the pier. She kept looking at the grounds all the way back, keeping her usual expression. What a bizarre change. Oh, to be more precise, what was bizarre was that smile on the pier and Lena's words. She stopped at the square. Well, I have to go. Okay. Thank you. For the day. Yes. Yes. Lena turned around and headed to her cabin, and I kept standing where I was. What the hell was that? The dance, the sudden change in the mood, and then everything was back to normal. It was like I was embarrassing another Lena in such a short moment. That's right, she wasn't herself, she seemed a completely different person. Maybe I don't know her well enough? I had a feeling before that Lena hides something under her mask of shyness. It takes much longer than two days to understand someone. Damn, what should I do? Maybe I was just seeing things? I walked to the leader's cabin. The whole camp was sleeping, so there was no use and uh, no one to see me. So what? What's wrong with the pioneer taking a walk at night? When I was almost at the door, I heard a noise behind me. The branches of the birch near the trees rusted as if someone moved there. There shouldn't be any wild animals about here. Someone must have been watching me. Wait a second, it's, it's, it's happening constantly, right? Well, I do know that there's another girl in this camp that still was not present. I don't know actually how that related to the whole plot, but we'll figure it out sooner or later. That very moment I rushed in the direction of the noise, forced myself through the bushes and looked around. It was too dark and I didn't see anything or anyone. There was no point in going on, even if someone was watching me. He must have been gone already. I went back to the cabin. The light inside was on. Looks like she's still awake. 
Simeon, where have you been? What do you mean, where? Me and Lena have been sorting medical supplies since an infirmary. I told you before that I would do that in the evening. Really? When was that? Took you long enough. I was in the infirmary about half an hour ago. It was closed and the lights were off. Well, we decided to have a little walk. I'm afraid about you while you out having a walk. Well, sorry. I'll let you know beforehand next time. Please do. Go to bed, it's late. Can't help agreeing with you. It was by any measure a hard day. I was too tired to think about the imminent events and I doubt I would have any decent thoughts. The main thing is that I have not a single idea how to react to all of this. To Lena, to the camp, to the whole world. I practically haven't spent even a minute on looking for answers. Moreover, I've been avoiding it as if the possible discovery scared me. And Lena. The time I spent with you was much more important than all of my attempts to return to the real world. I could worry myself for a long time, trying to understand what I did wrong and what I didn't do at all, but exhaustion overcame me. Finally. And which day is this? Day number four. Uh, let me check the list. Ah. Okay. Uh, it's new text. I was going to head for breakfast when somebody knocks the door. It was Lena. <clears throat> good morning. Yeah, good morning. I was taken aback a bit. The events of the previous day were still fresh in my memory, but I didn't really want to speak about them. You're probably looking for a good medium now, aren't you? Well, no. I mean, yes. Lena was her, uh, her usual self, shy, easily embarrassed. That dancer on the pier now it seems no more than a dream. She's not here. I'm sorry. Hmm, okay, so I'll go. Okay. When Lena left, I thought that I had been too cold towards her, so I decided to be nicer on our next encounter. Still, regardless, the morning was shining and beautiful. Mm-hmm. Okay. It doesn't matter what we will select next. Uh, okay, I got it. Uh, let's go, let's go, uh, uh, I don't know about health. Uh, now I place. Okay, we must say that you'll look gorgeous in it. And it's first time when I select on this. Thank you. It's alright, I'm just being completely honest. We were quiet for some time. And that was all. Mm. Let's see. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. We're going with Lena after this. Okay, yeah, that's right. But let's ask about the bundle this time. What is it? Nothing. She blushed. Thank you. You're welcome. Slime ran away. That was all? I was afraid of this? Seems like I shouldn't have asked. I don't care. Me not giving it to you. Let's eat this apple. Okay, we are going this lane, of course. I wouldn't have to go there alone, will I? Don't get me to a thought for a moment. You may be right. We'll go together tomorrow. <clears throat> I 
Within the last few minutes, I've noticed that Lena had a strange look on her face. As if she wanted to say something but didn't dare to. The piano started to disperse as if they had forgotten about Alisa and the explosion. Even though our leader seems to calm down and didn't react when the one wannabe terrorist left the square hiding behind Ulyana. But Ulyana is very small. We should go to. Yes. Night quickly fell on the camp. The only brief moment between the first rays of the setting sun to complete darkness here in the south, or maybe in this world. A brief moment, yeah. You don't have enough time to enjoy the variety of the sunset colors. That's actually right, that's maybe the only thing that I'm missing from. Mm, Eastern Europe. <laughs> it was too early to go to bed, but the leader confidently walked to her cabin as if mentally dragging me with her. I'll good meet you now. I'll take a little walk. Okay. She looked at me intently, but didn't find any reason to object, shrugged her shoulders and kept walking. I went back to the square. I didn't really want to look closely at the trivial damage done to the Gander statue. It was at the exact center of the camp. If you don't know where to go, you should start from there. I sat on the bench and looked at the west. I wonder if Earth air hair revolved on its axis as it should. By the way, he is actually sitting here, below the statue. Very, very close. I mean, Shurik, of course. Whether there was an actual north or south, it's hard to say. At this time, I didn't have any ideas on how to check the fundamental laws of nature. Hi. Lena appeared next to me, as if from nowhere. I can't sleep. She looked at me in surprise. Well, yes, it's too early. Where is it? Yeah, of course. Sit down. I moved away a little. Saying a little was in fact an understatement. I actually shipped myself to the end of the bridge. Thanks. Then I sat and looked at the sky as if she had forgotten about me. It said. Oh, uh, what is said? That Shurik disappeared. Yeah. Since I'm the god. She was as calm as usual. You've been silent most of the time. She blushed and felt embarrassed only when she had to speak or do something. That same silence, which could be seen as awkward by many people, including myself, was quite natural for her. Could hardly imagine Lena making an effort to carefully choose the right words to start the conversation, make a good remark, trying not to look stupid or alternately trying not to look as rude as Alisa. I just wasn't able to compare her to anyone, she was just content with being herself. Does it mean that uh, my attempts to start a conversation with her could be seen as rude? Does the expression become friends could be interpreted as an intrus what? intrusion in her private life? Maybe. But something in this girl attracted me. Maybe it was her mysterious and she certainly wasn't lacking an appearance or feminine charms. I didn't have an answer for that. That's why I still hadn't been openly accused of being annoying. I'm sure he'll be uh, found. How can you escape from a submarine? Elena didn't seem to appreciate the joke. It was a joke. Okay. This guy must uh, seem like a large submarine to me only. I hope so. Tomorrow we'll get meeting and we call the police. They'll find him, for sure. And what if during the night? Her expression grew sad. What if something ha happens to him? A long night in the forest. Anything could happen. He must be lonely. No one forced him to go there. What if he just got lost? He shouldn't go walking in the forest alone. You don't have any pity for him at all. Shirk may be sitting there all along. Of course I pity him. I felt ashamed. 
In any case, Lena was right, a person was missing. Anything could happen to you tonight. You aren't seriously going to go search for him now, are you? She didn't reply, still looking somewhere far away. Where the last rays of the sun shined over the tops of the old trees as if trying to leave a bit of its warmth with the people. Do you really think that roaming around the forest in the dark is a good idea? Probably not. For some reason I was sure that was exactly what she thought. Recently, I seem to be starting to understand Lena even without words more often. And she seems to be influencing me physiologically, making me agree with you. Lena's silence was more informative than any chatter or attempts at precision. They looked for him during the day already. Everywhere? He stopped watching the sunset and looked at me. I don't know, uh, it seemed everywhere. What about the old camp? For the first time, your words sounded self assured and not vague or indifferent. Where is it? I have no idea. Electronic told us. Well, if you trust him. I grinned stupidly, but Lena kept looking at me seriously. Sure, but it's not too far. So, you do want to go? Of course, I don't. Well, we can if it's just then back quickly. Okay. Lena smiled and gave me a flashlight. She appeared from nowhere. Yeah, that'd be useful. Does it mean she's prepared beforehand? And nothing was up to me? Actually, we selected this, right? Strange that it was not his choice. I saw it. As if doomed and headed to the forest with her. How many times are you doing this? At least six, I believe. Night fell to the camp. I walked slowly. Lena was next to me. Yeah, but not too close. It was strange, but it looked like she wasn't afraid of anything. Moreover, she didn't seem to be bothered much about what we were doing. As we went walking in the forest at night, but just watching a movie with other people playing leading roles. Actually, Electronic said that the old camp was not too far, and if we walked straight to it, then it would be hard to get lost. After a few minutes, I was completely unsure that we were walking straight, and after a few more, it started to seem that it would be a miracle for us even to get out of here. But I didn't want to lose face before Lena, so I tried to walk cheerfully. The world was full of silence, flickering shadows, and gleaming moonbeams. The grass quietly rusted our, under our feet, and the branches rusted over our heads. Old oaks stood to young birches, large mushrooms emerged from under the ladder, as if talking off their large heads in salute. On any other day, or rather at any other time of the day, it would have looked really beautiful. It may be safe at night too, but nevertheless I shuddered at each gust of wind. Look! When I pointed forward, I rubbed my eyes and saw a gap between the trees. In a minute, we were in a rather large clearing. In the middle of stood a building, which looked like a village school or a kindergarten. A pen was falling off the walls. There were several holes in the roof, like the aftermath of bombing, and the glassless windows looked at us sadly and a little threateningly. It was not a very pleasant sight. I couldn't remember how I'd made imagine this place a moment ago. It was like all the images had been erased from my memory, replaced by this depressing graveyard view. Well, it's creepy. Lena was still standing silently, but a natural expression of fright appeared in her face. Do you think he's in there? I have no idea. If I was sure, then the haunted house would be the last place I'd hide in. Shall we go? I didn't manage to answer. The moon appeared from behind the clouds and illuminated the glaring with new colors. Actually, in one color, the white of the grave. That's why they constantly mix in American and British worlds here. Let's see more clearly the distant trees, the mist 
Sure than them. Feel like the temperature dropped several degrees, making me shiver. Are you afraid? Anna asked calmly. Honestly? She smiled almost imperceptibly and took my hand. It would have caused a storm of emotions in any other situation, but at that time it felt like a basic necess necessity. We slowly walk to the building. Walking through the playground, I pushed a merry-go-round, causing it to creak nastily as it made half a turn. So every single time, actually, his behavior different. So with Slavia here, didn't try to even touch anything, and here he actually did something. Lena shivered and grasped my hand tighter. Sorry, I probably just remembered my childhood. Did you like merry-go-rounds? Never. And he answered yes. Yes, actually, I, I don't know. I don't remember. Probably all children didn't like them. I didn't like them. What? Why? I was dizzy when I wrote them. Because of this? Well, I didn't like them because they were boring. No wonder if you spin too fast. I like swings more. Well, you can get dizzy in a swing as well. I actually like that uh, only complicated to some playgrounds, like a big, very confusing constructions or something. But why would you? I don't know. The conversation had distracted me a little, and I stopped worrying myself about everything. About Shurik, about our night trip, about Lena. Music so scary? Because something terrible will happen, obviously. After all, this world is not so alien. Finally, we reached the doors. The inside of the old camp building reminded me of a kindergarten, the one I attended in my childhood. At first glance, even the room arrangement was the same. Shurik! Shurik! A grave like silence replied to us. Even the wind outside had calmed down. Looks like nobody's here. Should check anyway. Lena's courage still didn't chase to surprise me. Or should I say, her lack of normal self preservation instincts didn't. I don't know if this behavior is strange for this girl or not. Okay, let's do it. We thoroughly examined all the rooms of the old camp, I even inspected the attic. There were signs that people had visited this place everywhere. Newspapers, empty bottles and other garbage, but there was no sign of Shurik. I turned to the hall where we had started to our search. What should we do next? I have no idea. Lena sat on the steps and stared at her feet. I think we should go back. I began carefully. It's late and... Can just the two of us really search the entire forest for him? You may be right. She looked sad and her expression let me know that the search was not over yet. Well, I am. I waved my hands in resignation and sat next to her. We should think about the worst outcome. You say? No, but are there any wild animals around? I doubt it. Lena calmed down at once. He may be sleeping somewhere. He'll wake up in the morning and return to the camp. Uh, yes, of course. I jumped to my feet and started to walk in cycles around the hall. I really wanted to leave this place to get out from the forest, but it was as if Lena's behavior was keeping me here. I wanted to go on trying to pursue her, but then I noticed something on the floor. It was a trapdoor. There were little heaps of garbage and dust around it. It must have been opened recently. Look! Do you think Shuriki is there? Then I squatted and carefully pulled on the hatched handle. It might not be Shurik, but someone surely used it recently. I had already regretted finding the damn gate to hell. Let's check it out. The trapdoor wasn't very heavy, so you could open it without much effort. 
I directed the flashlight into it and saw ladder going down a couple of meters. Looks like a cellar? Let's go down. I look at Lena for a few moments, trying to understand what was on her mind. Did she have a craving for adventure like Kuliana? So, where's your useful spirit then? Or maybe she just went a bit nuts? Lena didn't seem like a crazy person. But anyway, who even said she really is a human and you can evaluate her with human behavior logic? That thought should have scared me, but somehow I didn't pay it any attention among the millions of other thoughts. Some of them were more important, for example, what could be down there? I climbed down and looked around. Everything is okay. After I made sure that there was nothing to be afraid of, I called Lena. We stood in the long corridor, which suddenly was in a cellar. Its architecture more resembled KGB dungeons or subway maintenance tunnel. I don't know which would be better. There were countless wires along the walls, fastened by metal hooks every half a meter. There were lamps under the ceiling, covered by rusted shades. Crumbled concrete crunched under our feet unpleasantly. Shall we go? Lena, without any emotion. Where to? There? Well, yes. What if Shurik is there? What would he be doing here? In any case, I wasn't really able to refuse here today, so we forgot about our affair and headed into the darkness. Lena walked next to me, holding my hand. The silence of the dungeon was interrupted only by the sound of our steps and water dripping from the ceiling. We moved forward slowly, maybe too slowly, I suddenly felt a surge of claustrophobia. I gritted my teeth and squeezed my the torch, but loosened my grip at once, her full of breaking our only source of light. Then I kept silent and her silence seemed louder than any words. I started to fear. Say something. Door. A what? There's a door. She pointed forward. We came to a massive metal door with biohazard sign. Looks like a bomb shelter? Yes, I heard something about it. Oh, why is it here? I have no idea, maybe because of the Cuban missile crisis? Cuban? I estimated the approximate time of constructing the camp. Makes sense. Am I building a bomb shelter? Here was like uh, building an airport at Faggots in Northumberland or Blackhawk in Vistha in the United Kingdom? It wasn't deep enough and too far from civilization. The door wheel dully creaked. I had to push it with all my strength before it turned a couple of times. What the heck? I made up my mind and opened the door with difficulty. We enter the room, which seems to be the main living quarters. There were some beds, cases, some scientific equipment. They had been thoroughly prepared for a nuclear apocalypse. And we didn't find any sign of Shurik there. Though. Look! Lena was holding a flare gun and smiling. Uh, why would I need it? To fight monsters. There are no monsters here. At least I wanted to believe that. If you say so. I guarantee it! I didn't want to upset you, so I tucked the flare gun into my belt. It might come in handy. We strongly searched the room once again. There were two exits. The first was the door we had entered and the other one was another door exactly the same in the left wall. For moments, I felt excitement the urge to reach the end of this labyrinth and to learn what price awaited me there. However, this surely was in a computer game and there is no options to save. Is it? Hmm. But I was able to save. <laughs> Maybe with this? Lena offered me a rusty big crowbar. No, I give it a try without it first. However, the door didn't want to budge. 
only cracked nastily, and the drawer wheel didn't turn a millimeter. Okay, uh, give it to me. It's too easy with the crowbar. In the end of the obstacle collapsed, hitting the floor loudly. The kingers were rusted completely through. I pointed the flashlight into the passageway. There was a corridor just like the one he, we had come here through. Oh, uh, let's go. It was like Lena was constantly driving me on. Where are you rushing to? Me? I'm not. She blushed in confusion. Again. What should I make of her? First she doesn't fear sin, then she gets lost after a word. You look like you don't fear anything. I don't know what should I fear. You will protect me anyway. She added, barely audibly. So Lena is counting on me. She believes in me no matter what. It's possible. Stupid, naive, but possible. I knew clearly that I couldn't protect anyone, even myself, nothing is up to me in this world. The powers that brought me here could do anything. That didn't exactly mean that an inevitable death awaited me in the end of the tunnel, it could be lying in wait anywhere in this camp. Let's go! I tried to walk faster, but Lena seems to not be bothered by that and she easily kept pace with me. This corridor was exactly the same as the previous one. In every last detail. There was nothing shocking about it, but at some point I got the feeling that we were walking in circles. The flashlight in my hand started to tremble visibly. The spot of light jumped all over the walls and the floor, and suddenly it lit up a rather big hole. The hole wasn't too deep, and down below we could see rails. What's down there? Looks like a mine. Shall we have a look? Why not go farther along the corridor? I don't know, I think we should go down there. I estimated the height. It would be possible to pull ourselves out. Okay, let's check it out. I jumped down the hole and helped Lena to get down. It really was a mine. I wonder what they could have mined here. What minerals are there in this area? I don't know. Well, yes, yeah, stupid questions. Looks like there are none now. We headed into the darkness. It was hard to walk because I couldn't choose where I trod. Mopling wooden planks or uneven ground. Hmm? Seems there is no one scarier than. What? Someone will shriek. Oh, well. This time, yes, but just before that, actually, Lena was trying to kill us here, and there were zombies. Lianas? What the hell say? Lianas zombies. There were several of them, not just one. Well, this time it's Lena com uh, accompanying us, so I don't think she will try to kill us. I wasn't able to stick closer to the walls either. The knownness of the tunnel forced us to stay between the rails and I didn't want to let go of Lena's hand. So you didn't see the ending of my previous stream of this game. Shrek was not alone here. Well, this that, this time he will be. And maybe in true endings there will be more people here. I'm not sure. Anyway, this one is regular ending. That I'm trying to reach. So, there should be only Shurik. Finally, we reach a fork. Just great. Where should we go? Well, I'm not certain that we'll be able to get out of here at all, especially if we are going to play Pac-Man. And by the way, Shurik actually happened here, not by himself, he was leaded by someone. Play what? Never mind, we'll get lost. What if there's an exit to? There may be one, and what if there isn't? So should we go back? I bit my lip. Little blood and yelled as loud as I could. Shurik! <laughs> the loud echo rebounded from every direction at once. Soul even fell from the ceiling in some places. See? Then I will go on alone. 
What? I grinned stupidly. Hello? A waiter? It was fine, Shurik. He may be... Lena blushed at once and star started at the ground. No, no, no. That won't do. If we go, we go together. Okay. Then let's go. She smiled and took my hand. How does she manage that? But first we should. I took a sharp stone from the ground and scratched across on one of the beams which supported the walls. Now you'll know where we started. Okay, right. Left. Right. Left. Right. And left. Easy. So, somebody told him to use this path. This is the fastest path to this area. Around the next door, a wooden door appeared in the light. At least it's something. What? At least it's not another fork. Uh, what's in there? You don't have any choice but to check it out. I strongly pulled the handle and opened the door. There was a room behind it, which might be one of the maintenance rooms for the bomb shelter. Empty bottles and cigarette butts were scattered everywhere, the walls were all covered with scribbles. So that means there's another exit from here. I didn't want to believe that the people who had left all that had come the same way as we did. Sadly, Shurik wasn't here! Look at this enemy by Raba! Shurik is not here! What the heck? Uh, it's something new. It's the first time when we cannot find him. I don't know. <laughs> but he's not here. We check everything. Oh. I slide down the ball to the floor. He must have been everywhere now. Not every. Wait a second, how Lena knows this? So Lena actually knows this place. Lena pointed to a door in the corner. It looks similar to the one leading into the bomb shelter. There probably should be an exit, as you said. Shall we go? Let's rest for a moment. Okay. Lena sat next to me, very close, and took my hand. It's alright. Uh, what do you mean? That we haven't found Shurik. We should think about getting out ourselves. We'll get out? Yeah, probably remember the way. Or at least I thought that I remembered it. I'm not afraid at all. She suddenly said after a short pause. Hmm. That's good. Because I'm with you. Suddenly there came a noise from behind the door to the mine. I jumped up at once and started looking for something I could use as a weapon. The noises of heavy footsteps was getting closer. <laughs> Finally the door opened and Shurik appeared from behind it. In the silence I froze, staring at him. Eh, there you are. Did you think you could hide from me? Oh, what? Did you think I wouldn't find you? What I did? He was insane, that was for sure. His face was distorted by a scary grimace. His eyes gleamed behind his glasses. The missing banner held a metal rod in his hand. Are you mad? It's us. Yeah, I can see it's you. He took a couple of steps towards us. I sincerely shielded Lena. Do you think you could make a fool of me? Leading me there, here, in there? To the left, to the right, to the left, to the... Wait a second, now it's left, right, left, right. Interesting. And I followed. I followed. He rides the metal rod. Everything after that was like it happened in slow motion. Shrek charging at us. Me pushing Lena out of the way. The rod slowly arcing towards my head. My head with this flashlight going up. Following all of that, complete darkness, rapid breathing, blood hammering in my temples, silence, dreadful, heavy silence merging with the darkness. 
I moved my hands, trying to find the wall, when I felt someone search. Touch. Sorry. Don't be afraid. I have a familiar voice now. Man. Who are you? You damned lunatic! I shouted. He left. Uh, which way did he go? Where to? Yana's voice didn't sound too calm, but certainly it didn't sound like it should in such circumstances. Calm down. She helped me tenderly and pressed her body against mine. I tried to get my senses to recall my breath, to adapt to the darkness. What should we do next? You have a gun. What the heck? Uh, well, who do I shoot? It's loaded with a flare. She might be right. I took the gun from my belt, pointed it to the side and fired. Pfft, that's very creepy. The room was illuminated by a bright red light. The flare lying in the corner looked like a firework or a sparkler. Let's go quickly, it won't burn too, for too long. Uh, where to? Then I pointed to the second door. It wasn't hard to open it and we headed into the darkness. The flare burned more dimly with every second. I stumbled with every step, even fell down a couple of times, but didn't slow my pace. If it goes out. Finally we saw a light in front of us and came to a ladder, leading to a grating in the ceiling. The flare hissed and went out. Thanks God. It turned out that we were right under the statue of Genda. The grating was rather sturdy, but we managed to open it after breaking the bolts with the flashlight. After reaching the surface, I collapsed on the grass, exhausted. That was terrible. Lena sat next to me. Just dreadful. By that time, I didn't give a damn about this world to come the 410 bus or my previous life. The strangest and nastiest thing was that there was nothing supernatural in these events. Shurik just went crazy. Insane. Nothing strange about it. I would have two in his position. And I patted my hand. My head tenderly and smiled. It's all over now. I don't know, there's a crazy pioneer in the woods, you could even say a maniac killer. I think he's gonna be alright. Alright? I'm not sure about that. The most important thing is that we are okay. She still smiled. How can you be so calm? I told you before that, I have nothing to be afraid of when I am with you. Indeed, I may have said Lena and myself back there. But it was only by chance. Nothing more. If Shurik had been swifter or crazier, mm, thanks for the compliment. You're welcome. Though no, we still should have stayed here in the first place. You're probably right, she said calmly. I got really sleepy. Because of stress, of exhaustion, of how late at night it was, we should go to sleep. But I have to stand up and walk to the leader's cabin. I wasn't ready for that. My eyes closed just for a moment. Stars looked down at me from the sky. Thousands of them, even millions. Now their light didn't seem to be so distant and cold. On the contrary, they twinkled to me as if whispering among themselves, telling merry fairy tales in eager competition. About a galaxy far, far away, in violet fluffy piglets, about mysterious asteroids belts where ships have disappeared, about a fearless starship captain and his brave crew, about exceptional treasures and unreachable peaks of a planet on the edge of the universe. I wonder, is it a dream? I lift my cell a little and realize that my head was in Lena Slow. Did I sleep long? I asked in confusion, but didn't rush to get up. I don't know. I don't have a watch. She laughed. Approximately? Well, maybe 20 minutes. Oh, that's okay then. I lay down again, feeling nice and calm like never before. 
The events of the night were becoming distant, as if I was starting to forget them. Like the story the stars were telling me. Shurik has come back. Uh, what? I jumped on my feet instantly. Uh, they he is sleeping on the bench. Then I pointed to the bench in surprise. And what are you? You were sleeping so peacefully that I didn't want to wake you up. I felt a sheer of fear because such behavior was not just strange. It was not just inappropriate. It scared me more than shook in sanity in the dungeon. A lunatic who half an hour ago tried to kill us arrives, lies on a nearby bench and falls asleep. And she just sits here? Nothing to worry about. She just seems to be a little off. Lena got confused and blushed. He woke unsteadily and didn't look towards us and it made a noise. She was about to cry. Okay, don't worry. There was some logic in her, to her words. She probably did the right thing. In any case, we had to interrogate Shurik thoroughly. I jumped up, walked quickly to the bench he was sleeping on and slapped him. Ouch! He <laughs> woke up at once. Uh, what's in here? What are you doing, you bastard? Uh, what? Shrek stared at me with a scared and moreover sane look. What's it all about down there? Uh, what? Where? In the dungeon, in the mine, in the bone shadow. Did you go completely nuts? I don't understand you. He looked around. Why am I here? And where should you be, in your opinion? Wait, I know, you should be in an asylum. I went to the old camp in the morning for the spare parts and then... Don't you remember anything after that? Then I asked after walking up to us. Yes, and I... Don't pretend! I sat calmly and sat next to him. It really looked like he wasn't lying through. You don't understand anything, it's unscientific. Who cares? Don't think that I trust you. Nobody was kinda cure just. She talked to himself, mumbling something, not paying us any attention. Let's go, I said quietly. Shall we just leave him here? He's not in his right mind. He has to sleep. It's dangerous to leave this psycho alone. He may strangle an electronic with an induction coil in the night. <laughs> it's going to be alright, trust me. I had no reason not to trust you. However, I didn't have any reason to trust you either. On the other hand, who cares now? I wanted to fall asleep as quickly as possible. Okay. We left Shurik, who was still murmuring something to himself. Mm hmm, we are here. What? Where? I have to go further on. Then I smiled. I hadn't thought about anything all the way here. Just followed him and hadn't noticed that he'd come to Oregon meeting with Kevin. Mm, yes. Thank you for today. There's nothing to thank me for. Just good that we came back alive. We'll see what Shurik has to say tomorrow. Thanks anyway. She said mysteriously and averted her eyes. You're welcome. Well, it's time for me to go. Lena quickly turned around and walked quickly in the direction of her cabin. I suddenly had a thought that something about that was a bit off, not quite alright. After all that had happened, just, well, it's time for me to go? It usually goes different in such situations, doesn't it? I have no idea what I expected, so... Exhaustion hit me again. Walking with difficulty, I entered the cabin. The lady was sitting on my bed. Simeon, she started to talk sadly. Where have you been? Well, I... Prepared for a scold and I didn't expect that reaction. I went to look for Shurik. Alone? <gasps> a choice, an important choice. And we must say alone. Interesting. Yes, alone. So... What about Shurik? 
looks like Olga Dmitrievna was really worried about the fate of the lost piano. What's so strange about that? The leader can treat her work lightly, but it doesn't mean that she's a heartless person. He's okay. As okay as he could be in such a situation. That's good. Go to sleep now. Wait, but... She turns the light out quickly, showing that the conversation is over, and I couldn't ask anything. So, should I? Ask why she didn't scold me? Still, Lena, what happened today? My thoughts shown their face before stopping completely. Day number five. So here will be important choices. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, so this doesn't matter where where I will go, so let's go here. Mm. This it's a new choice. Okay, fine. Looks like I've upset Miko. Let's where the cookie crumbles. Leaving the canteen, I sat on the bench, standing by the door, and sighed tiredly. My feet were still hard and a bit, although not as bad as before, and there was still nothing in my stomach. There was quite a bit, <coughs> a bit of time until lunch, so I decided to go for a walk. I picked a random direction, which could be explained by the single word forward. Okay, so here we must go not with Lena, but Slava. Hmm. This doesn't matter what you'll select. Also doesn't matter. But it will take a pause. One minute, be right back.
Well, not very coffee, but tea. <sighs> okay. Um. Okay, so it doesn't matter what you'll select. It's like, it's, 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 it's quite off. Okay, now it's better. Uh, clubhouse. This one. All right, here. Uh, trying this. What? Wait a second. It's not a new choice, but only Lena and Lisa stood out in all the splendor. Well, of course, it was quite natural for Lisa to be arguing with someone like that. But Helen and Lena talk at a raised voice? Came close silently, trying to find out what was going on. Why it's different now? But okay. No. You listen to me. I'm not going to listen to anything. Really? Great then. I listened on the way and her eyes met mine. At first she obviously was confused about what was going on. But then... So you were eavesdropping? Oh, me? No! She began slowly advancing on me, and I took a few steps back. Lena, however, remained standing where she was. Well, I kiss him. And listen! Alyssa stopped halfway and turned back to Lena. By the way, did you know he was peeping on me today? A what? Peeping! And he saw everything! Is it, is it true? I don't want your hands distressed me. They make me glance and start with staring at the ground. As if she was cut off from the world. No, nothing like that happened. Having thrown an angry glance at Alisa, came up to Nena. Why are you denying it? I even have a witness. She witness even worse than you. So you'll stick to your claims that it didn't happen? I took a second to think, but really, why do I have a, such a pathological desire to exonerate myself before them? I thought I widely needed a uh, need to hear opinion or need to remain unchanged. So how would I know what she's thinking? It didn't happen! Then I threw a baleful look at Alisa and her eyes her eyes to me right after that. Eyes full of discomfort and hope, it suddenly became unbearable to stare into his eyes. It didn't happen. I repeated less confidently. Well, whatever. Alisa sneered from behind me. It's up to you to decide who to trust. She said to Lena of handling, then turned away and headed to the bonfire. Is it true? I felt uncomfortable, like a fish out of water, feeling the urge to end this as fast as possible. And why should I have to excuse myself to her? Oh, so what if it did happen? I look at Lena boldly, but notice only a bright sunset gleam reflected in a tear which was going down her cheek. No, I mean, you don't need to lie. She wiped off her tears and tried to smile. After all, it's only... it's none of my business. No, why isn't it? Why... why is it? Just that I... well, it was an accident, get it? An accident, which was caused by Uliana, nothing more. Yeah, sure. It's true! I believe you. Lena was saying everything with absolutely no emotion, like she didn't care at all about what was going on. 
I was almost able to believe it, but she turns a few seconds ago. Seems to me that you don't. What is this? Some kind of a game? Dana said quietly, but there was a hint of anger in her tone. You really need to convince me of that? And even if I believe you? What then? Could it all become true? I'm not trying to convince you of anything, I just want you to understand that I'm not guilty and didn't want to. Should I care at all? Dana shouted. I was standing with my back to the bonfire. But I was sure that all the pioneers had turned in our direction. If you want to peep at someone, do it! Do whatever you want, but why do you bother me? Do you bother me? I'm not. But really, from any point of view, it looks that way. I'm trying to excuse myself to Lena with no success. Like a guilty child, or maybe even like a husband who slipped up. Just so you know. I don't care. Then I turned away and headed back to the camp at fast walk. I didn't try to stop her, now it certainly wasn't the best solution. She's on the edge, no attempts to convince her or deal to reason would help. Since when is she like that? Screaming that way, getting mad. With these thoughts in mind, I returned to the bonfire and sat down on a wooden log. So, let me check by the way. Hmm. So there's no other choice, and the next day we should do nothing, and that's all. Okay. Alisa asked after sitting herself nearby. Uh, what? Was a great success, hmm? As you see. I growled out while packing out the coals with a stick. It grew completely dark, and the glade was plunged into darkness. The surrounding landscape was reminiscent of a picture from a child's book about a wood monster in an old forest creature. It's just about to spring out from behind the tree. Predatory owls hood menacingly in tree branches, even mice looking out from snakes stare at you with distrust. I was not afraid at that moment. Everything was different from the previous day when I was in the dungeon at the old camp. The moon was shining brightly, paying close attention to our brave troop. Ward was sleeping, waiting for the morning, basting in the moonlight. As I thought, so it was expected. But why? I finally managed to pick up the largest burning log and throw it into the center of the fire, causing the flames to rise about a meter high and a vortex of sparks to spread out in all directions. Does Lena often behave like that? How? Screaming at others? I couldn't believe she would act in such a way. She's a human, like anyone else. Alice yelled. As you hadn't noticed it before. What the hell did I notice? Here. Uh, what do you mean? I mean, this is your true face? What do you mean, true face? Oh, you're so stupid! Uh, finish what you started. She's not what she seems like. Not like how you thought of her before. Uh, so, how is she? Okay, I'm sick of this. Alyssa stood up, intending to leave. I didn't say anything, just sat and listened to the silence of the forest. By the way, if you want to follow her, I think she's on the island. And what island? The one where you were guessing strawberries today. And what is she doing there? <laughs> you really are an idiot! Alyssa stormed the ground, circled the campfire, and sat upon it. I must have really lost track of things. My head was absolutely blank. To be precise, it was so heavy and full that. Uh, so that not even a single idea would have the chance to dwell there. If I would compare my brain at its prime to a broad highway whose speeding thoughts overtaking each other, causing giant chaotic crashes, then now it's nothing but a forgotten, tiny pass in a distant, desolated... Wait a second, did I read this before? 
maybe. Force which is only using times ops absolutely necessary. I try to think over what I had happened, unless it's somehow, but it seems I was bashing against an invisible wall. Moreover, it was impossible for me to find a single emotion in my soul, any response, as if it had all happened to someone else. I failed to convince Lena that I am not guilty. Should I care? Lena cried, screamed, and then left. So, what? I don't feel anything about it. Should I? I beat my lip until I bled and stood up. I couldn't have to stay here among these laughing pioneers. Should run away. Doesn't matter where to. To the forest, to the mine, even to space. I don't care just so long as I can get far away from here. I see the moment when the camp leader was looking in the other direction and vanished in a tomb the forest shadows. There had been no rain for a long time. However, I'm not sure whether it rains here at all. What a stupid idea, of course, it does. The plants need some moisture. The night was fresher than the afternoon, but the air still hadn't had enough time to cool. I felt a little dizzy from the evening stuffiness. Suddenly, I realized that I really wanted to swim. It's quite a normal desire because the days are hot and you constantly feel soaked with sweat during the daytime. I didn't even notice that I'd been approaching the pier. Why not the beach? Thoughts of Lena came over me again. Everything that I tried to ignore came out and brought lots of an inconvenient questions, inappropriate answers, and wondering desires. It was obvious that I had been led to the pier by my subconscious. But do I really want? To apologize to heal for something, to convince you of something? No, unlikely. I just wanted to get some sort of reaction from her. Wanted her to say, yes, I understand everything, and just smile. And hello, Peregrine. Thank you for the raid. You were steaming till. Wait a second. It's past midnight already. <sighs> and then I could stop myself from feeling like that. It was necessary for me to be understood by someone, even in this world. I tied a boat, pushed it into water, got in, and took up the puddles. It was easier to roll this time, my hands were still hardened, but I managed to develop some sort of technique that allowed me to travel quite directly. The river seems frozen, spreading under the boat like a Translant well. The moonlight was piercing deep in the water, so it was almost possible to see the bottom. I started drawing. Surprisingly, the island now seemed the same as it did in the daytime. Here, usually, everything is different. After dusk, it felt like another world, a mystery world. Scary times, but beautiful in its own way. World of shadows and whispers, a nocturnal world. Hello there, Paragon. So, what did you play today? Tonight. Well, I don't know what time is it right now for you. <laughs> Slowly walk around the island, looking for the boat which Lena took to come here. The grass softly rusted under my feet, the occasional waves peacefully struck the shore and bouncing back like flies to tie it from beating on the glass. So, every single Saturday I'm just playing visual novels. So, it's like 8 hours of reading non-stop. So, my voice is usually completely dies the next day. Well, it's already died. Alright, the breeze from the water lastly steered the leaves of the trees. Out of habit rises in a real desire to make the night grow thin. I look at this wonderful picture with such delight that I did not even notice something until I stumbled into it. It was a boat. Well, of course, she wouldn't get here by swimming. I headed towards the center 
of the island. Up to 100 meters, I heard a little rustling from behind a tree. Don't come any closer. And I, <laughs> it's like a <laughs> Gendel sailed company. I hesitated. Don't come any closer, she said louder. Louder? How did you know it's me? So she hadn't indicated that she'd known that. Alright. I leaned against the tree, trying not to look behind it. Alisa told me that you would be here. So what? It was difficult for me to know what emotions Lena was experiencing. Your voice was steady enough, even so I could read irritation and annoyance in it. I could not understand whether she was angry or whether it was all the same to her. That came out awkward. I was doing my best to avoid unnecessary apologizes and excuses, but couldn't find other words to use instead. Was it the only reason you came? No, well, I don't know. I don't know, but you still came. Yes. You shouldn't have. Oh, why? Of course, if I'm bothering you, why are you following me? I. She was right. You certainly looked that way. Moreover, well, I definitely felt attracted to her. You shouldn't think like this. How should I think? I don't know. I only draw conclusions based on your behavior. I really don't know. I guess I better go. I was confused, and it was hard just to be a narrow here. Why? Since you came. You seem to hear a playful tone in your voice. Alright. Uh, and? What? What did Alisa tell you? Nothing special. I see. Yeah. Well done. Yep. You just stayed silent for a while. Since you came. Tell me about something. Well, I don't know. For example, about what happened this morning. What about what happened this morning? You know. You yourself didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to, but now I want to. Lena's voice trembled. I couldn't understand what was happening at all anymore. Maybe it's not you behind the tree. Uh, don't look! Okay, okay, but... What's wrong? Nothing, just don't look. Alright, as you wish. So, nothing happened? Well, something did, but that was all just a silly incident. Then why are you so worried about what I think about it? I'm not worried. And anyway, you, yourself, said London, begin to feel irritated. What about me? Why are you so concerned about this situation? Who said that I'm concerned about this situation? Then what? Nothing. She said in a whisper and fell silent. Such talk would lead us to nowhere. Lena won't say anything and I seem to be too stupid to guess or even just to be sure about myself. Sorry, I guess it's all my fault. Just cannot understand. Why? What? Why do you keep apologizing? For everything. What you did, what you were, for what you are doing, even for what you haven't done yet. What? Maybe she was right, but I couldn't behave differently. I felt the need to apologize to her, to everyone. So, they would not think badly of me, wouldn't laugh at me, so can put away something unsaid and eliminate misunderstandings. Anyway, that's your business. Lena got angry. Apologize, my excuses, why should I care? Okay, well, I'm not guilty and fuck, I don't think I could be blamed for anything, but then what's wrong? What is wrong with you? How about that something be wrong with me? I don't know, I uh, just think so? No, uh, you just think so. She laughed. It's because if you know me, I didn't answer. Let's leave. Let's say it after a while. 
I didn't move. Just could not. Had no strength to do so. I wanted nothing at this point. I didn't want to excuse myself to apologize. I didn't even want your understanding. I was too tired of everything. Why? Just leave, she whispered. I don't want to. Then I'll leave. Let's just go together. No. How long are you going to be offended? By what? What's wrong with you? Everyone here behaves normally except you. I didn't care what my words meant. As if they had been said by someone else and the topic of conversation meant nothing. You really don't understand anything. Alisa was right. About what? Never mind. I closed my eyes to think it over. No, I can't go. I don't understand, don't know what to think, what to do. And since when did I stop worrying about my situation in this world or how to get back? Since when was the only thing I could think about Lena or how others could look at me? How my actions look from the other side? Just stupid and it's not like me, in fact. It's inappropriate in this situation. In short, I didn't do anything and don't intend to justify things which I didn't do. There was no reply. Hey, do you hear me? I finally decided to see who was actually hiding behind the tree. But no one was there. So she left. I rushed over to Lena's boat, but she was already far away, almost near the pair. Whatever! I shouted and walked along the shore. I got back relatively quickly and without much trouble. However, my hands still act terribly and my eyes were closing themselves. Probably such a psychical or more importantly emotional load is too much for one person. I walked slowly towards the camp leader's cabin, staring down at my feet and thinking about nothing. Someone called me at the square. Hey! Alisa ran after me. Have you been into the island? Yes. To tell the truth, I didn't want to talk to her about anything, but I already didn't have the strength to lie to her. And how did it go? Doesn't matter, I'm very tired and I'm going to sleep. Come on, tell me! Your face had such a nasty grimace that I shuddered with rage. Why should you care? Well, I just... She mumbled some dismay. Mind your own business! I snapped and quickened my pace towards the cabins. Alisa didn't try to stop me. And knowingly, all that meeting I had not returned yet. And I could not find my key. But if I lost it, the only thing I could do was wait. Plop down into the deck chair and close my eyes. My heart was heavy, and my soul was being torn apart by regular expectations. From time to time, I had a feeling that I was already dead, just without releasing it. I had been thrown to hell. But really, instead of trying to get out of here, I'm spinning on a diabolic runabout. It goes faster and faster. I became more and more involved in the life of this world, of this camp as if I had no past life, the real one. As if I was always interested in the opinions of others. Damn it, I never cared about it! Why it right here? Why right now? I recall the face of Lena, in tears. Yeah, probably not the opinions of others, but her opinion was the one I cared about. I had far footsteps. And after a while, Olga Dmitrievna appeared. She looked at me for a few seconds, seemed like she was about to say something, but then just sighed, opened the door with her key, and went in. I followed her. Shapeless shadows, blurry memories, fragments of feelings and emotions swirled in my head for a long time. For so long that after a while, I couldn't tell. Where was or what's happening to me? The only salvation was sleep.
D6. Alright, there's another choice during D6. That's actually do not have. Yeah, interesting. Okay, let's do this. Look up, because somebody was shaking my shoulders. It was too hard for me to open my eyes, so I just wince pathetically. Get up already. You're going to miss the lineup. Once I released what Olga Miriona wanted from me and what time it is it was, I rolled over to face the wall. I was so tired that I wanted to show the camp leader just so she would quite disturb my recovery from a hellish yesterday. Simeon, get up immediately! <laughs> I mustered up my strength, opened my eyes and sat up. Oh, look at me, I understand, but I had a hard day yesterday. Can I sleep in at least today? I started cleaning. It's out of the question. Lineup is mandatory for every piano. And you already missed it a few times. My head went completely numb, so I just couldn't find any arguments against it. In a couple of minutes, we were already standing at the square. I dozed off, taking great pains to not fall asleep on my feet, so I missed everything that all could be done announced by Switch. So, right now, she announced that. Tomorrow will be the last day and we are leaving it in the evening. The majority of the pioneers seems to feel the same. Electronic yawns constantly, Alisa had hu huge buggy eyes, only Yana seems to be full of health and energies, always. I set my eyes over the lineup, yet again, I couldn't find Liana. That's what. She knew she's a diligent and committed girl. So I you to miss such events. On the other hand, that was too much for her yesterday. Such stress. She's probably uh, depressed. Also, such behavior from her was very surprising. I mean, I suspected that she was not the kind of person she wanted others to see her as, but I never expected such a drastic change. Lena, amazingly. Someone reminded me of Alisa in more harsh and brutal times. And now I was not sure how to behave around her. I was simply afraid of her. Finally, lineup was over, and the pioneers dragged themselves off to breakfast. Miko caught up with me near the canteen. Simon, good morning. How did you sleep? Any dreams? How are you ready for breakfast? She is always blubbered without a break. Adding a cute smile, but at the same time. I'm okay, answered Leslie. This quite gloomy, maybe because of the weather, it's quite dark, it may even rain, so yeah, everyone is sad and gloomy. I thought maybe something happened, but no one told me what. Can you imagine that something happened and everyone knows about it apart from me? Who was sad about it, but then. Don't worry, you won't miss the end of the world. And literally a snarky remark. Hmm? It looked like she was so into her monologues that she was completely oblivious to everything around her. And if you are going to miss it somehow, I will make sure to let you know. Nothing. Enjoy your meal. I march to the canteen. It's a film step. To get my daily portion of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. To my surprise, a seat in the front corner was free. Sit down and tried really hard to make a face that would let everyone know that there's really no need to come anywhere near me unless there was an emergency. I just wanted to sit alone and think. Moreover, keeping my mind off other things was making me less sleepy. Hey, mind if I join you? I didn't know the slightest thing in there. Strange. Sure. I answered after hesitating for a second. But more? A bit. Did something happen? Not really. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. There's nothing to tell you about. He kept eating in silence until I asked. Why did you go last night? Me? I just wanted to be alone for a while. It's not like you. I 
felt a bit more lively. Really? Well, maybe. It's also not often that you are seen so blue. She might be right. Even in the most unfavorable circumstances, I've always tried to have a positive outlook on things. Not that I was an optimist, I just always tried not to feel too down. <clears throat> Keeping my previous life in mind, it's only nature. As soon as you let depression get a hold on you, the news will start to look very appealing. What? As soon as you let depression get a hold on you? Interesting. Perhaps once Slime was done with him, I was still poking the porch with my spawn. I'll be going. By the way, uh, have you seen Lena? Nope, why do you ask? I didn't see her at the morning lineup. That's odd, that's not like her. Maybe you're right. I don't think that's a big deal, to be honest. Yes, of course. I was just wondering. I sat for a few minutes at place and then headed outside without finishing my breakfast. Today was quite gloomy. The first gloomy day during my time here. I've kind of gotten used to the bright and burning sun. The heat that would only subside by the evening seems to be an irreplaceable component of this place. Looks like even here the weather changed after all. Almost like it's much in my mood. It looks like just more proof that this place or its creators are sentient and have great storytelling skills. Sometimes I really wanted to focus on a single theory of mine, concentrate on it and forget about all other. Just to decide for myself that it's all done by aliens or I'm in parallel universe. Or witchcraft or military experiments. Just to pick one and be done with it. To stop thinking about all possible explanations to this situation, constantly jumping from one to the other. Just to focus on a single one. But it's impossible. I have almost no facts about anything. Nothing extraordinary has happened to me here yet. Yes. Some old things took place, but they can and do happen in the real world too. After yet another cycle of similar thoughts, I found myself at the bus stop of Road 410 and the gates of the Camp Savionic. No answers, no hints, no clues. I was walking wherever my legs were ta taking me. It was quite in the residential area. Not a single person there to be precise. My astonishment grew even more when Electronic appeared around the next door. I wanted to go out to him, but stopped, because he was going a little too confidently in a known direction. Mm, it's strange, this goes against his nature. Anyway, what can I talk with Electronic about? And yeah, I'd have to start the conversation first. Seems like I was completely in despair. However, it would be interesting to follow him and to find out where he is rushing to. As a child, I like games of spies and had a chance to put myself into a real spy's shoes. I decided not to sneak and hide in a special way and just tell him quietly at a distance. Soon we came to the library. Electronic knocked and went inside. I stood behind a big tree so nobody could see me and began to wait. He was absent for quite a long time. Becomes this a stupid idea because in fact, uh, what difference does it make if he went to the library? Maybe just decided to get something to read? He was working fast, so what? Perhaps he has some business afterwards. Gosh. It almost killed me. My thoughts were disturbed by a loud door slam. Uh, what the heck is going on here? I looked towards the library and saw Electronic running away from there and Jenny who ran after him shouting along the way I don't want to hear it anymore or to see you either. 
they ran past me, but naturally they were so off in changing that they didn't notice me. The whole situation seems very funny and I decided that I needed to find out what the matter was. I wonder, where could electronic be running to like that? Uh, what? We must select? Oh, it's a very tough choice. And where are they going? Clubhouse, maybe? Because kitchen and infirmary... Let's check the clubhouse. Guess it was quite obvious that he ran straight to his native cybernetic club. I entered without knocking, but didn't find anyone inside. Electronic, it's me! The sound of footsteps came from the next room, and soon Electronic himself appeared. Okay, I was right. Hi, Simon, I'm just. His eyes ran guiltily, and his shoes had visible traces of sweat. Kind of a sports, I see. Sprinting! I. You saw that? He asked, don't. Yes, probably by chance, so I decided to stop by and to ask how you were doing and what happened and uh, nothing special really indeed praying from an angry librarian it's nothing you can tell me i smiled deservingly really and won't you tell of course uh silent as it is cross my heart seems i exaggerated say a bit but looks like it had convinced him Okay, he took a debut gathering strange. You know, I would like Jaina since the first day. At Salesforce, I wanted to fall to the floor and start rolling around, shaken by violent attacks of water, but out of respect to him, I refrained. Still, his next few words flew past my ears. And so I just decided, well, and you saw what happened next. A brave fellow, indeed. Well, you try harder, I guess, and you will succeed. I patted him on the shoulder, trying really hard not to laugh. Thank you for the support. He smiled sadly. Okay, I have to go. I have some work to do. I shot out of the clubhouse like a bullet and finally laughed out loud. However, if you think about it, Electronic and Jenny would make a wonderful couple. They are actually a perfect match. It is strange the, that Jenya rejected him. I was going towards the square thinking further about this episode. At the end of the day, Electronic is not such a simpleton. Just like that, he declared his love in releasing that refusal will follow. Or on the contrary, is it because he is just as simple as an apple pie? Either way, you can feel the honest and sincerity in his behavior. More complicated people would spend hours, days, months, years thinking about how to present this in a better way, what consequences it could have, and whether you should even bother. I would do so myself. No, rather, I have done so. But he just said it. Successfully, of course, but it helped could have also gone differently. These thoughts made me completely melancholy, so much that the lunch signal, usually so anticipated, didn't trigger any emotions at all. The canteen was chock full. It seems that the camp was slowly emerging from the morning depression. Maybe the sun that had come out from the clouds contributed to that, or maybe something else that I missed while running after electronic. Only the places next to Liana and Alisa turned out to be free. I braced myself and started walking towards them. Eating was still a necessity. Can I sit with you? Just sit down. Why so gloomy? Just that you too cheerful. I'm trying to maintain the energy balance in the universe. Liana giggled. Old enough, the girls didn't pay any attention to me and talk about their own concerns. At first I thought it was good, but then I started to think that they were just talking to no taking no notice of me. By the way, uh, where's Lena? 
because of all my thinking I completely forgotten about you. I don't know. Alice answered absently. Uh, has she still not appeared? As you can see. I took a look around the canteen, but didn't see her anywhere. And nobody's had anything about her? No. Don't you find it strange? What is so strange? Maybe she's reading, maybe sleeping or something? Seems more like you're talking about yourself. It's none of your business, is it? Alisa interjected earlier. Well, if a person is missing, he went so worried when she disappeared. That's quite different. Yes. And why, I wonder? I had no answer, and I just one quick look at Alisa before going back to my foot. She didn't insist on continuing the conversation. Lunch was over, I suddenly stood up and went out of the canteen without a goodbye. So, Lena disappeared. What should I do now? On the other hand, why should I do anything? Why me? Where am I? And why am I here? Who are all these people? One cannot be absolutely sure whether Lena is what she seems. Perhaps all this doesn't even exist, and so why should I worry? However, for me now Lena is still the same Lena. The modest, quiet girl I met on the first day. And even her strange behavior could not affect my attitude towards her. In the end, it's not certain that I still exist. So why the world is logical, at least to some extent, I have to play by its rules. Krigan went to the camp leader's cabin. Once inside, I saw Olga Dmitrina lying on the bed and reading a book. Do you know where Lena is? No, why are you asking? She's nowhere to be found. She missed both breakfast and lunch. So what? She looked at me blankly. What do you mean, so what? When Shurik was gone, the whole camp was searching him from the early morning. I don't understand you. There's something strange happening to the camp leader again. She was behaving absolutely incomprehensibly, illogically. Do you think it's normal? So where is she now? I don't know. Look at me and apply it calmly. This is too much! I start to lose my temper. Ask Miko. She is her roommate, after all. That was a good idea, because obviously I wouldn't get no more answers here. I went outside, slammed the door, and went to look for Mikus and Lena's cabin. It was nice that the orchestra girl had told me before where she lives, which is why I was at the door of the cabin a minute later. I think we actually saw it's inside. The Miku sent it, right? I should have knocked, but for some reason I couldn't. After a few deep breaths, I knocked on the door several times. Come in! I heard a familiar voice. Yeah, I saw this one. Hi, do you know where Elena is? No, I haven't seen her today. You're looking for her, right? Did you think it's strange? By that time, I started suspecting everybody of hiding information about Lena's location, of conspiracy, of involvement in me being her, of Kennedy's assassinations, and of, of what? Of hundreds of other terrible things. Well, you know, maybe I thought she went somewhere and then I just got lost on doing things, breakfast, music club, helping to clean, and then lunch, and then... And then... Okay, I see. And what about yesterday? Was everything normal? Well, she came late and immediately went to bed. I didn't even notice anything wrong. No change of finding out anything here either. Thanks. I said abruptly and left. At that moment, it seems to me that the missing Lena was the only living person in this pack of dog and dummies, and I had to find her. Ever. It seemed almost impossible to do this alone, so I went for help. Who would be most willing to help me? Of course, Slava. I decided that at this time she would be engaged in cleaning someone's in, for example, the square. So I went there. 
my sixth sense didn't let me know. Hi. Hey. Have you seen Lena? No, why are you asking? Nobody's seen her since this morning. She was absent during breakfast, as well as during lunch. Strange. I was seeing this, to put it mildly strange. Can you help me find her? Sorry. Maybe later I have good clean hair to finish. It was like a lightning strike. I took a few awkward steps back and ran away from this place. That was not her. It was as if somebody had replaced her. Not only her, but also the other inhabitants of this camp. Wait a second, what is this ending? It's kinda strange. What is happening? The strangest thing is that it doesn't have anything to do with me, but with Lena. Maybe she came here the same way as I did? Exactly! That could be the reason why she behaves quietly most of the time. Actually, don't think so. Jenny might be, but not Lena. No, wait. But what about her knowing Alisa? No, something does not add up. My head was going to explode, and I started to choke. After catching the breath, I looked around and found myself in the bus stop. I sat on the curb and covered my face with hands. If before nothing had really been up to me, but was going relatively smoothly, then now I was, as always, helpless. But the situation was totally different. Watching the battle, fought from the side with no threat to your life and being on the hotspot without being able to help the ones you care about are two different things. I was just sitting. Time passed and the sun began to fall. Probably dinner has already started. Also, what's the difference? I still don't want to eat. I stood up and trudged back to the camp on rubber legs. As always, the only thing left is to wait. I decided to go to the beach. While everybody was at dinner, I could sit quietly and sing there. So what could I think about? Enough, maybe. However, my expectations were ruined. On the beach I met Jenya, which greatly surprised me. You also come here? She looked at me from behind her glasses. Do you think I'm not a human being? No, I don't mean that. Then what do you mean? Nothing. Hmm? She has been taken by aliens. Well, abducted. Might be. By the way, have you seen Lena? No. I actually suspect that Jane is the same uh, outsider from this world. She behaves very strangely. I see. What do you want from me, from her? Well, nobody's seen her since yesterday evening. Do you think that somebody could get lost in this car? She laughed loudly. And she looks succeeded. That was a special case. Yeah, special case, she knows something. Those guys are two pairs of a pot, in a pot, and you never know what to expect from them. Immediately remembers the morning incident. Tell me, why were you chasing electronics this morning? Jenny Cotts? Uncomfortable. It's none of your business. Uh, just ask him. Because he's a fool. She turned away after these words. Maybe you shouldn't be so strict towards him? Even to me it wasn't clear whether I'm defending electronic or just keeping the conversation going. Then how else should I treat him? Well, give him a chance. You know, such an act requires a lot of courage. You say it, as if it was something special, some kind of achievement. Would you be able to do that yourself? I thought an answer after a while. I don't know. Haven't had the right moment yet. Hope you'll have it soon. Jenny said rudely and walked towards the country. I sat down on the sand and thought, true that electronic was able to say it, but can I do the same thing? This is a question, a big question. If I got the right moment, but which and when? 
It's always easier to think about something ephemeral, to get ready for dozens of possible situations, to predict the following events for many steps ahead. But most of the time, it all goes differently. Even a small event is enough to ruin all your plans. And if you're not ready to do it at any time, whenever, under any circumstances, if you're ready only when everything is exactly as you had expected, it's unlikely you'd ever get anything worthwhile. Therefore, the only correct answer to Jenny's question was no. By the way, this game actually teaches you a lot of different things. A lot of life situations that can happen to you. It's very nice. But then, because unsaid and how hard it's a forced answer. Just no. This only simple yes and a simple no. It's always been hard for me to understand that. Between these two extremes, I always work in a great number of different answers like maybe, perhaps, probably, even. Not sure, but I will try. I was so absorbed with my thoughts that I didn't notice how the darkness stole across the camp. Under other circumstances, I would have gone to sleep now. But looking for Lena at night was not a good idea. Got up and slowly wandered endlessly. Soon the path led me to the sports ground. I stood there for a moment and was about to leave when I heard noises. Club? Another club. Something painfully familiar. I ran towards the wobble course and saw Lena, who was unsuccessfully trying to hit the shuttlecock with the racket, so she's still here. I stood in shock for a long time. My head was completely empty. I just looked at her. I felt a sense of joy. Joy at finding her. Joy at seeing her again. Finally I came to my senses and decided to approach. But after a couple of steps, I stopped. And what do I say now? Glad I found you? Where have you been? I was worried. After yesterday's conversation, it's very unlikely she wants to see me. And what if Lena asked me why I was looking for her? Why I was worried? I did not know why myself. Probably it's because she was absent for too long. Maybe if it wasn't her, but some other person who know I'd have been worried the same way. Maybe I have behaved differently yesterday. She would not have disappeared today. I'm not sure, but I'll try to come up with something other god. I took another step and stopped again. Probably, maybe, perhaps, not sure. Again again, this words appeared in my mind, in my life. Unconsciously, without my will. But why? For what purpose? I have to make a decision once and for all. Also, there are two simple words, yes and no. Finally, it's all clear. I went to the court, approached Lena, smiled and said, Hey. She turned and looked at me. Hi. You were absent all day. Yes, I was walking around. Everything she said was quiet and calm, with no trace of embarrassment or shyness. It's no emotions at all, in fact. He worried about you. So the only one who worried was me. You shouldn't have. But you can't. You can't just disappear like that. I tried to smile to make my words not sound like a reproach. I don't think that anybody cares about it. I care. For one. Why? I read surprise in your eyes. Because, because it's not right? No matter how I tried to be perfectly honest, it came out wrong. Hmm, I see. Okay, I won't do this again. Seems like this conversation was not interesting to her. Silence followed. Just didn't know what else to say, and Lena seems to be quite content with the silence. Are you any good? Finally said, pointing at the rocket. Not very. He won't I? No, I don't. She walked to the bench and put down her records and burned them. Okay. The 
Does it trust? I did not expect that response. Want to look at the stars together? Yes, of course. I sat down beside her. Lena intently studied the sky. Lots of small lights shined above me. Some of them were brighter, some were barely visible. I never really understood what people seeing just sitting back and looking at the stars. After all, here on Earth, there are just small dots of light, and it's unlikely that many people know what kind of celestial bodies they are, as well as their size and how far they are from us. Of course, it's so romantic to just enjoy the light of distant stars, but for me, it was like staring at a brick wall. It also has its potholes, and even since the brickwork patterns to the stone, a stellar sky in miniature. So, what do you see there? Stars? She said mysteriously, is your head up? Yes, I know. I see them too. But what's so special about them? I don't know. Seems that they talk to me. There are the people there. They have their own lives, probably much better than ours. And they all do look at the sky and see the as me and you. Voices of the distant stars. I had already had that somewhere else. You can call it that. Interesting theory? No, no, the theory is quite common. Lena looked at me. In the dim moonlight, I noticed a small tear rolling down her cheek. Or at least I thought I did. I guess I'm just a more, let's say, practical person. She said nothing. Just start in the sky again. But if you think about it, of course, there's endless interstellar space, millions of planets, hundreds of galaxies. It's fascinating. I was sounded in unnatural excited. You don't need to talk about all these things. About what? About this. About everything. No, the stars are really beautiful. Why did you come? No, she was crying for sure. I? I? Was looking for you? Why? I don't know why, it just was. You found me? Happy now? Well... I mumbled. Why didn't you go to Alisa? What does she have to do with it? Are you trying to say that's not about you? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Why did you bring this topic up again? I thought you already cleared everything up. Of course, we didn't clear anything up. To be precise, we didn't even start to. However, I don't understand why all this is necessary. You think I really want to talk about it myself? If you don't, then why? Because. Because. It's because of you. Because of me what? You and Alisa. Uh, me and Lisa what? We don't have a relationship. We don't have anything at all. Don't lie to me. Then I turned away, sobbing quietly. Why is this so important to you? What else can I say if you don't believe me? Tell me the truth. I already told you. Send God to you. Why should I go to here? I don't want to go anywhere. Why are you sitting here? I'm judging you. Oh Lord, how am I judging you? And I didn't answer. I've been looking for you for the entire day because I was worried. I came here because I you here. I'm sitting here because I want to be here. What don't you understand? Just stop crying for a moment. Is it true? Of course. I mean, something to you? When talking into account all the things I've just said, this question came at me unexpectedly. Well, yes. If only you could hear yourself now. She cried, got up, and walked briskly towards the exit of the sports ground. Wait! I got up with her and grabbed her arm, but she pulled out of my grip. Don't touch me! Now Lena was a totally different person. And I couldn't say that she was aggressive, assertive, or super strong-willed. 
She just had no doubts about what she was doing. Wait! What did I say? That's all true! Save all nonsense for her. I tried to stop Lena once again. Now she glared at me so strongly that I did not dare to argue. Just imagine how I feel. You make up a bunch of stupid things and now you think that I'm guilty of all mortal sins. Why should you care? I should! She stopped for a moment and looked at me. It's all lies. In my anger, I bashed my forehead on an iron post. You can just beat yourself up here. I'd seen Lena be many things, but not worthless and indifferent. Wait, let's talk calmly. We have nothing to talk about. She crossed the football grounds and I trailed behind, trying in vain to pursue her to listen to me. I don't know why I'm going all this. To prove that I'm right? So I won't be misunderstood? So I will look bad in her eyes? Or is there some other reason? In any case, at that moment, I just felt that it was necessary. We came to the square. Lena was pretty fast, I could barely keep up with her. I had to say something, my heart was filled with different options, but nothing suitable. Wait! No answer. Listen! No answer. Will you stop it? No answer. Well, wake the whole cup! We'll wake the whole up. So what? What's the difference? Strange but at that moment, I was more worried about our behavior than Lena. She stopped. Thanks for accompanying me. I'll go on alone now. Lena said bitterly. You haven't listened to me yet. Wait a second. Okay. To me it seems like I have already listened several times even. So what do you want from me? Me? From you? Nothing at all. She sounded much more confident than me. There was no trace of doubt in her eyes. But what can I say? What can I do? Damn it! I was ready to burst into tears. Don't get so emotional. Nothing happened. Nothing happened? Something definitely happened! You won't lose anything if you pay no attention to me. Let me decide that. No, seriously. Why? There are many pleasant activities you could choose to do. Well, to be honest, I don't need it anyway. You don't need it? Why do you constantly mention Alisa? Then his face changed. This is none of your business, get it? No, now it's my business. She looked at me as if she was ready to kill. Why are you bothering me? You have her? So go to her. She won't refuse, I assure you. Lena started screaming. Her hair, the shirts, her face washed and her eyes bloodshot. Calm down. I won't go to her. Why did you even think so? Just see, I'm here now and I'm not going anywhere. She seems to calm down a bit. She's really crazy. What's going on here? I turned around and saw Lisa lazily chewing a bone. In the wrong place, at the wrong time, this situation is a perfect example. I just froze in surprise, not knowing what to say. But Lena was smarter. Time to pass him on, catch! Alisa looked surprised. No wonder she hadn't heard the entire conversation. Uh, what? I said catch. Within a moment, Lena became like she was before, calm and unruffled. Uh, what should I catch? Him! She pointed her finger at me with disgust. She complains about, he complains about how he loves you, how he cannot live without you, and stuff like that. Uh, what? Alyssa's eyes popped open wide. No, that's all wrong! Then it's just joking! I giggled nervously. Why? This is exactly what happened. Listen, everything has its limits. I said quietly to her. Do you want there to be victims? Why, I already suggested to you you should go to her. I don't know what you're talking about here, but don't involve me! 
You don't know? Lena said it softly, but her voice had a trace of rage in it. The same scene again? I saw look at her writing it. Listen, I understand that you well. Mm, but I don't know, really, not a single word. Not even a single thought about him, I swear. You don't know? Lena jumped at her, and the first release smashed Lisa with a powerful right hook. Well, I understand a simple slap, but such a blow could break someone's jaw. Alisa collapsed and seems to lose consciousness. What should I do? Uh, we are going to do nothing. But as I said before, Lena is totally insane. I actually said it's the very first stream, right? She's very strange. <clears throat> I decided that whatever happens, it doesn't concern me. But on the other hand, how can I remain indifferent? Am I a real man? What are you doing? I ran over to the fallen girl and tried to figure out if she was alive at all. Completely out of your mind? You want me to leave, to shut up or do, do anything else? Fine, but this is turning into a complete madhouse. Maybe you need a straight jacket so nobody else will get injured? Lena stood, clenching her wrist. I can't even break your hand with such a blow. You... You don't understand anything! The tears swelled up, blowing down her face, and she fled from this girl. It seems to me that I could still hear Lena sobbing while I was bringing Alisa around. Finally she came back to consciousness. Uh, you left? Are you okay? Alisa moved her jaw from left to right. I love. I leave. I held you up. I told you about her. Well, it doesn't matter now. You have to get to the infirmary. It's too late for infirmary. I'll have a good night's rest and in the morning I'll go there. Okay, then I'll go with you. I can't refuse. Alisa said trying to give me a smile. All the way we kept silent. She was probably not really able to talk and I couldn't find the right words to say. All of this was a real shock for me. I found myself a mere spectator of a drama in which I just took on a main part. After the door closed behind Alisa, I stood for a long time and looked at her cabin. What should I do after all this? But they overcame me. I had to sleep. I think Lena is now in a state in which she is unlikely to adequately assess reality. Completely broken, I fell down to the bed and drifted to sleep. So what? The last day? It is. Hmm. <clears throat> What a strange music. Somehow I woke up in my apartment. It didn't trigger any emotions at all. Yet another day of my life, that's all. I got out of the bed and went up to the computer. A message window flashed on the taskbar. I sat down and started the monitor. Somebody wrote to me, and that means that somebody still needs me. The message contained only two words. Wake up. Wake up now. <laughs> Oh gosh. Uh, what do they want from me? And I have no idea. Is it spam? And what does it mean? Wake up. I'm not sleeping anymore. The window still kept flashing. I tried to close it but failed. Instead, yet another one popped out. And another one. And another one. And all of them contain the wa same wake up. What the hell do you want from me? I screamed. Soon the whole screen was blazing with identical messages. I couldn't bear anymore, grabbed it and smashed it against the wall with all my strength. Holy shit, what's going on here? The phone rang. Strange, who calls at me? I picked the phone and heard just wake up. As I said, sounds on the voices, men, women, children were screaming. Wake up! I 
I smashed a hole on the floor, but it didn't break and kept ringing. In a moment, the hole was filled with strangers. <laughs> Should move the antenna. The way grabbing my hands, peering into my eyes and screaming, screaming, wake up! <laughs> it's all the Phantomas fault, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I jumped off my bed in a cold sweat. <clears throat> what a dream. I came to my senses in a couple of minutes and took a look at the clock. It's 5... Wait a second, it's 5 p.m. It's... They already left. What the heck? How long have I slept? Why? All the events of yesterday flew through my head. Searching for Lena. Devastating conversation. Alisa defeated. I really have to walk to her. To talk to her. Maybe she cooled down overnight. I dressed up. Went out of the cabin. Hesitated a little while guessing my thoughts. Then headed to Lena's cabin. What shall I say? How do I begin the conversation? I can't just go with how, how are you? I was just passing by. Okay, so he got this message because it's already at the end of cycle. Just maybe one hour left. There's no way I should lecture her straight off the bat. Not reaching a specific solution, I knocked. Nobody answered, obviously. I knocked again, then pulled on the door knob. It's not locked. That's odd. However, there was nobody inside. Well, that means Lena's not here. I'll grab some food I might find here in the canteen. Going along the rows of cabins, I didn't meet a single pioneer. That's odd too, it's always crowded here. At this time of day. Nobody was at the square either. Coming out of the cantina, I started to get seriously concerned. It's time for dinner, but there's no sign of the hungry pioneer crowds. If only I was just that. It was just that. The canteen was closed. Looked like something has happened during the day. I sat down <clears throat> on the porch and started to consider the situation. All the pioneers were gone. Without any warning. Well, of course, it's hard to say that this camp on or my way for Ryan here is normal, but I hadn't encountered any completely inexplicable stuff during this week yet. There were lots of strange things, but maybe they hiding in that bunker? I chuckled aloud. Well, all this is way to put it mildly mysterious. I was nowhere near experiencing panic attack. No. Just that they have left? I almost jumped out of my skin. Lena was standing next to me. Y you? You can't just sneak up on the people like that. You nearly gave me a heart attack. Sorry. She said calmly. Now he words don't on me. Left. Hold on. Hold on a second. What do you mean by just left? The session's over. And the camp leader? She had some business to take care of in the town, so she went with them. Okay, and what about you? I stayed. Lena was talking with complete calmness, as if everything that has happened is completely normal and routine. Uh, how? Why is that? What's the problem? When the session is over, the children depart for their homes, don't they? And when was it decided that today is the last day of the session? You won't believe this, but on the very first day. Well, what can we announce this at the lineup? Yeah, even at those lineups that I attended, the last thing that crossed my mind was listening to the camp's leader's announcements. Then why didn't anyone tell me anything? I waited for a chance to get out of this damned camp for so long, and when it finally appeared, I obviously slept through it. Well, that's exactly my style. I ask them not to. Even if you would ask not to, Olga. Hold on. Uh, oh, what? I ask for it. Said Lena with the same confidence. And what, you ask them to leave me behind too? Yes. 
And don't you think that's all a little? Absolutely wrong. I started shouting. No, it's perfectly normal. I took a good look at Lena. Not a single emotion has crossed her face since the beginning of our talk. It looks like the girl that's standing right in front of me now is not the kind of girl that, afraid of crickets, blushes at every occasion and reads romance novels. Okay, I got it. Looks like this situation is directly connected to my mysterious, mystical arrival at this camp. Just, who are you? Me? This morning I was Lena? She replied patiently. Oh yeah, and I am Optimus Prime, born 9 million years ago in the highlands of Scotland. I wasn't afraid of you or anything around myself at that moment. I was just bursting with anger from within. Nice to meet you. I'm Lena. Okay, and now let's get serious. I think that what you're saying is frankly impossible. Today, as it turns out, is the last day. Somehow, I don't know a thing about it, and the camp leader departs with everyone leaving me behind just because you asked for it. Don't you find that all somewhat abnormal? Maybe I do. Are you hiding something? Maybe I am. Then spit out everything you've got! I told you already. I brought my face with my hands and took a deep breath. Okay, and what am I supposed to do in this situation? I don't know. And what are you going to do? I don't know. I'll go with the flow. Well, hands the flow. I hissed, abruptly spreading my hands. And why are you worried so much? It's the first time a flicker of interest has appeared on your face. How do you expect me to feel? Glad? Well, not really, but you... Yourself wanted it? Me? You mad? Who said yesterday that he cares and that he wants to be with me? What's that got to do with this? I pretended not to understand, but it was finally started to dawn on me what she was driving at. Your wish was granted. Uh, yeah, sure. I mumbled under my breath. Well, here I am, with you. That doesn't explain in any way what happened. There are always a couple of tricks that could help one succeed. And you? That is how? Yes. A smile crossed her face. Ahem, if I'd know that you so cunning from the very beginning. To tell the truth, I kind of liked this whole situation. Well, not really liked, but I was curious. Of course, I am very sorry that I couldn't have escaped with everyone else. However, I am having a tete a tete with Nana now. That might mean that I'll get a chance to see the real her. Wait a second, you should try to kill us or something. <clears throat> it shouldn't. It's actually a hentai game, so there must be some hentai here. Right now. And all the answers that I was longing for could be right there and not in some mysterious town which everyone else had headed for. Okay, so what are we going to do now? We? She smiled. Yeah, we. We are the only ones staying here. The canteen closed and I seriously doubt that there's any food left there anyway. Because all good medium should return the foreseeable future, but what does it matter? Okay, it doesn't matter. Any suggestions? Hmm, what do you want? She asked with a sly smile. I'll have grabbed something to eat. And then I don't know. Well, let's go and have something. Where to? There should be some food left in my cabin. Okay, deal. He went in and Lena rummaged around in the desk drawer. Well, the cookies want some? She handed me a half open pack of biscuits. Oh, how cute! I snarled. Why? Biscuits? Like in my childhood. I guess. She smiled and sat next to me. Well? I asked with my mouth all. What? So, uh, what are we going to do? I don't know. She wistfully gazed out of the window. What? What do you want? I? 
But really, what do I want? A mere half an hour ago, my only thought was to get away from this damned camp. But now, right here, next to here, something seems to change. Well, I, I don't know either. Think hardly. She drew herself closer and gazed into my eyes. Uh, well, I, you know, my face was blushing and my mind was racing. Now, just because I was such extreme proximately to a girl that quite clearly wants something from me, but mainly because that girl was Lena. Well, she studied me closely. Lena, I... what? To say that she didn't look like yourself was nothing. I was not afraid of this metamorphosis at all. Rather, I was afraid of myself. What I could do in such situation? I... Didn't you want to be with me? She whispered into my ear, seductively. I did? I mean, I do! Then what's the problem? Uh, you know, it's also... Besides, I have some other circumstances. What circumstances? She pulled away from you. Uh, well... Various circumstances? You don't prefer, do you? And I laughed. Hell no, how could you think that? Looks like I blushed even harder. And then what's the problem? I should that you want that. I tried hard to change the subject. After all, just a week ago, I had my own normal life. A life where everything was strictly tied up and well organized and where there was no place for girls. And now I'm some kind of mysterious scamp with Lena sitting next to me and hinting towards something? How should I behave in such a situation? Yes. She thought. Of course I do. What's the problem? What's mine? I was behaving like I wasn't even 17, which was how I looked now. As if I was much younger. Mine too? She smiled. I had to decide what to do next. Now, after the session was closed and all the pianos were gone, I had to seek the answers. Above all, I just had to behave, uh, beware this girl that could change her behavior and even her character so easily at will. But at that exact moment, I was possessed by only one thought. What the hell? Well, if you don't mind, I closed my eyes. She said nothing, just smiled and moved even closer. Our lips all locked in a long kiss. I forgot ever since that moment. I forgot about this word camp. I forgot about the local pianos that were in fact gone. I forgot about our lucky camp leader. I forgot about my past life and about my future, if it would ever come. Right now, the only one who mattered was Lena. Her soft lips, her warmth, that Bored deep into my soul, burning me from the inside. And where is it? I gently moved her aside. Hold on. Don't you think that this is way too fast? Why? She smiled and looked at me in such a way that I immediately felt ready to draw in her eyes. By the way, it's the first time we actually. Simeon, uh, don't really like the girl. I don't like her either. She might be the worst of one of them. Well, because she's trying to kill everybody. All the time. You sure, aren't you? I am. I whispered quietly. In that exact moment, I truly loved Lena. I wanted to hold her tight and never let go. And she felt the same, of course. That flashed by way too fast, and we became as one. When I woke up, it was already dark outside. Wait a second, it's the first time when actually we stay here? Where's the bus? I got out of the bed, put on my trousers, and had a stroll around the room. What was that? Just an animal, animal instinct, or maybe it was something more? No, it's all wrong, completely wrong. I'm stuck in this camp. I've lost my chance to get out of here, and most of all, I'm with a girl who probably has a split personality and mad depressive disorder. Totally yes. I look at the sleeping Lena. 
Anyhow, she's marvelous. Everything that happened between us literally only a couple of hours ago flashed before my eyes and I felt shivers up my spine. Nah, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but if I would have returned back in time, I would have done exactly the same thing. I smiled widely and sat down next to her on the bed. It was close to 10 pm. Well, it's probably time to get up. I gave Lena <clears throat> a gentle nudge on the shoulder. She opened her eyes. Good morning. Well, uh, evening, in fact. Hi. She smiled tenderly. Time to get up, uh, sleepyhead. Are you in a hurry? Well, no. But we are completely alone together in this camp. So what? She took a good look at me. Well, nothing. When will Ogun meet you in return? Is it that important to you? She got a heavy look on her face. Well, without food we are going to die here. I laughed. You're free to leave them. Mm hmm? Can fuzz linen? On the batch? Look with sensor? Oh, I actually didn't see her. <laughs> yeah. She looked away towards the wall. But how can I leave? On the bus, of course. Then no bus is here. Then why do you think there's a bus stop for a bus road 410 here? Frankly, I don't know. I told Uli Pitina that I had some matters to urgently resolve here with you, and we'd come later. What? I felt like I'd been struck by a lightning. I didn't know what I should be more surprised about, the fact that there are buses passing here, or by the fact that the camp leader agreed to leave two pioneers behind in an empty camp just like that. What I said? You mean that we can leave? Go on, no one holding you. She said all that while sitting utterly still, in fact so still that her words gave me grave cold chills. Okay. I'm sorry that I reacted that way, I just... Everything that's happened today has been a total surprise for me. You didn't look too surprised a few hours ago. I probably said something wrong. Completely wrong. Well, uh, don't get offended. We won't be standing here till the end of times, right? If there's a way to leave, Brandon didn't say anything. I look at her back and try to understand what she's thinking. Fine. She exclaimed cheerfully after pause, then jumped off the bed and started to dress quickly. Come on, pack your stuff. Meet me at the square in 10 minutes. Lena leaned over and gave me passionate kiss. Alright. I stepped out of her heaven and ran to the camp leader's cabin. Frankly speaking, I had almost nothing to pack. I tossed my winter clothing into a bag shot my phone into my pocket and headed to the square. Fifteen minutes have passed already, but Lena still wasn't here. I justified it with the fact that she has lots of stuff to pack and, accordingly, she needs much more time to get ready. However, she didn't come even in half an hour and I started to suspect something. My legs assured me to hear cabin before I release it. I flung the door open and saw Lena lying on the bed. What? Everything around here was soaked with blood. The bed sheets, the blankets, the floor was wet with blood and I can see Hutch slit on Lena's pura. What? She actually killed herself? Well, I actually thought that she will try to kill us, but herself. It's kinda strange. I ran to her and started shaking her by her shoulders. Lena, Lena, why? She was still conscious. Hi, Simon. A weak smile froze on her lips. Can't go on. Hey, don't you bust out. I think of something right now. Listen, everything going to be fine. You're not going to die. Of course, I didn't believe it myself. Lena had slid her reins from her elbow all the way down to her wrist. 
for the deep cuts and given all the time I've spent waiting for her, the square should bleed a lot. Probably even an ambulance wouldn't do anything by now. And here, in the empty camp, a brain force vault, and I had zero chance of survival. How stupid can you be? A balanced and healthy type. Tears were running down my cheeks, disappearing in her hair. Never cried so hard in my entire life. Fool, why did you have to cut down the road? Everyone else does it across the street, and you cut down the road. Sorry. It happened as it did. She muttered faintly. But why? Why? I'm tired. So tired. Hina went silent. I looked straight in her eyes. She was still conscious, but the last flicker of life was quickly dying in her. I'm so tired of it all. Wearing a mask. Suffering. I just wanted to be with you, but you've left me too. I never went anyway. Here I am. Why? What have you done? I'm sorry. I was choked with tears, unable to say anything. I'm sorry. I'll be seeing you later. I'm burst you even tighter. Lena's breath was getting weaker, and soon enough, it stopped forever. Horror struck. I jumped away from the bed. As when dark, my heart was beating widely and I spotted the bloodstained knife lying on the floor. A moment later, I was holding it in my hands. The blade halted a hair's breath away from my wrist. But why? How would that help? Since they completely freaked out, I just stared at Lena. No, you aren't it. Exploded to be hysterical laughter. Come on, sleepyhead, it's time to wake up. Said softly and shook her by the shoulder. But Lena didn't wake up. What am I? I. What have I done? I jumped out of the cabin in horror and rain like mad. I don't know how much time passed, but finally I wore myself out and collapsed on the ground. Hostile silence was all around me, and only the stars looked down on me in quiet review. They were the same stars that Lena admired yesterday. Yet another crying spell tore me apart. Why? Why did she do that? Because I left you? Where had I gone? I never left you and wasn't going to. And in this moment, due to a release that she was truly important to me. A release that, despite all her queries, everything that happened today, everything that happened during the short period of our acquaintance, she suddenly became the most precious thing in my life. And I, I instantly forgot about you, about your feelings, as soon as I heard about that damned bus. Indeed, I can't justify your act, but how could I have stopped thinking of you at all? I laid there for a long time, watching the stars. The trees were peacefully swaying in the gentle night, breeze above my head. At least didn't give a damn about what was happening to me. The landscape seems familiar. So, bracing my tears, I headed back towards the camp. Everything here seems to be the same as yesterday, as a few days ago. The square, Gendas Memorial, the cabin saw the pioneers, then his cabin was all torn up inside. It felt like the pain would tear my body into millions of little pieces any moment now. I fell to my knees and began punching the ground until my fists were completely stained with blood. If only I had I'd release just a little bit earlier, just a moment earlier, I'm not asking for more. She was so, so, even the slightest of hints it was enough for her. And at this moment, I did realize that Lena had died. And a part of me had died with you. Or is a part of me that I would call the best? I came to my senses after a while, standing in her cabin. The blood had dried up already. The moonlight was no longer reflected in it. I went to her bed, sat down next to Nana's body. I was terribly afraid to be here, but I felt that I had to tell her something. I'm sorry, I started. 
it's for too late, of course. But you can hear me. Out there somewhere. Just remember, please. I will love you forever. For the rest of my life. And that was the plain truth. I'm sorry that I ignored your feelings. I'm sorry that I always thought uh, only about myself. I'm sorry for everything. It was me who should have died, not you. Turn your body with a blanket and slowly left the cabin. I regained consciousness at the bus stop. So, right away, scumbag. I muttered darkly to myself. I couldn't stand to stay a single minute long in this cab. Then I will never come back. I can't justify what I lived on. I'll just wait for the bus that will take me away from here. I didn't give the slightest down about what's going to happen to me tomorrow or in an hour. I don't care about answers. I don't care about how I got here. Soon enough, I saw a glimmer of dim light in the distance. Somehow, I wasn't surprised at all. In a minute, I was sitting in an empty number 410 bus and was looking at the dark of the night through a weather beaten window. My mind was blown. Everything that makes us human feelings, emotions, aspirations, suffering I left it all back there in this barely old camp. Now all I have is this night and the empty bus. There's no more future, no more present. If I die tomorrow, that would only mean that yet another human body has ceased to exist. The real me died there a few hours ago. I don't know how much time passed, but that fatigue overtook me. I wasn't going to fight it, as it made absolutely no difference whether I am sleeping or awake. I could barely hold my eyes open and soon enough I passed out. No, this ain't in very strange. All the others were not so depressed. Very strange, indeed. Uh, there are moments when reality becomes unimportant, insignificant, unworthy of attention. There are moments when your spiritual torment overshadows everything else. And even if the world ended, you would not notice. If a knife were to pierce you, you would not notice. Even bowling for eternity in the cauldrons of hell would seem like just a minor inconvenience. After all, there are problems more important than that. When I opened my eyes, I realized that something is wrong. It took a while for clarity of soul to return. Finally, I realized that I am not in a bus, but in my own apartment. Well, that was to be expected. If, as if I'd spent a whole week preparing for an exam and at the last minute had spectacularly failed. And the result of this failure was my return to the real world. However, no, it didn't seem any more real to me than this piano account. No wonder, reality is what you can hear, feel, touch and taste. And all that was really there. As good world was real to the smallest detail. Sometimes it seems more like it was my past life that was a fiction. And now I have to remember how to exist here. So why? I felt like a man who'd been thrown out of the car at full speed without even noticing it. And was left lying on the roadside with broken arms and legs while the car disappeared into the night, taking with it the last traces of hope. Lena, your image surfaced in my ferret brain so clearly that I wanted to cry unbearably. No, I wanted to shout, tearing out clumps of hair, smashing my fist on the wall while making inhuman screams. However, my soul was empty. I tried in vain to find at least the echoes of pain, guilt or pity for her, but nothing came. I was just lying here, staring at the ceiling. 
I was not at all interested in how and why I came back. After all, who cares about the process of selling your soul to the devil? All the legal formalities of the contract, signatures, stamps and seals? What is more important is the result. And this is the result I got. No, it's not that I was sent back to reality. If I had gotten to the destination of that bus, it would hardly have changed anything for me. In this case, the result is what happened to Lena. And the reason is my actions. I was absolutely sure about that. After all, she could not just do that for no reason. No, Lena is not like that. So, it's all my fault. Hmm? Yeah, totally bad if. And it's actually not the old bad annex. There will be one more, and I hope I will get it today. Oh gosh, there's so many enemies in, in this game. It's hard to know and to live, knowing that you were the reason for someone else's death. As I personally held the knife, calmly and carefully slid open her wrist and watched her die. And then just run away. Of course I couldn't do anything in that situation, but I still felt that I'd be hurt like a coward. No, even worse. Also, does it really matter what the best definition of my action is? I caused myself for remaining so calm while thinking about this situation. After all, I should be more than I'm blaming myself. But now, nothing is up to me. If I was not able to back them, I started shivering, my body was trembling and it was getting hard to breathe. Self-preservation instincts overtook guilt for a while and I staggered to the kitchen to drink a sedative. They can always be found in the cupboard of every antisocial person like me. What? Sedative things? Mm. Once I've taken half the tablets that were in the bucket, I return to the room and turn on the computer. Mining in silence was unbearable. I played the first random song and soon released it was probably the most depressing piece of music I had on my hard drive. However, I didn't want to turn it off. The background noise helped down my thoughts. I had to decide what to do with my life next. I was sure about one thing. Everything that happened in the camp, my parents in it, my unexpected return, I didn't care about any of it. And not just that, I didn't care about the content or the reason for those events either. The only thing that mattered was Lena. I only stumbled over the words, was. Indeed, she's gone. Of course it's possible that it was just a dream and she never existed in the first place. But then again, our real world could just be someone's raving delusion as well. Why not? People suffer from losing their loved ones here. Why should I think I have Lena's death there as just a result of my sick imagination? I saw it all with my own eyes. I felt the shock, fear and fright. Damn it! For me it's not that it was reality, it, is, it still is reality is and will be, and I am sure I am not daydreaming, so that it would be better if I dreamed that. Dreadful whole guitars boom from the speakers, it sounded like a requiem, a requiem for me, and now I have to live with this sense of guilt? No, I won't take it! My mind wasn't exactly a paragon of stability, but not even a man with a stable mind could withstand shocks like this. And I already feel that I'm going mad. I try to suppress all these thoughts. No, not to forget, just to give myself some rest. Just for a minute. But it didn't work. I break my body again and again. I was already starting to feel it physically. However, physical pain is always weaker than mental. I fell to the floor, clasped my knees and began rocking back and forth in a fatal position. Blood pounded in my hand so heavily that I felt like my skull could shatter any moment now. I hit a table leg and a little candle rolled out from under a pile of papers. A little one 
Plexus and Predator Slonk was bent at an almost 90 degrees angle, but still retained its shape. The weak protrudes from one end. What the heck is going on? I searched for a lighter and lit up the candle. That means the memory of Lena. Maybe in another world she's feeling better than. I sat on the floor and watched as wax slowly dripped on my fingers. I felt no pain at all, probably my nervous system was so exhausted that it was unable to transmit the pain impulses to my brain. The fire calmed me a little, I just watched the flame and didn't think about anything. Finally at least some peace of mind. The candle was halfway down. Suddenly I imagined that my life is this very candle. Not just mine, any person's life. All that we have been given from above is its full length. But anything can happen, the wind may blow, the holding hand may tremble, or the wick may burn out. And a life will end before it should have. But after all, each candle can be different. Such as this one, nice sense, one twice I think 20, a huge one I think as the handle of the show was 185. I wonder, did Lena's, uh, Lena's candle burn out ahead of its time? Was it just smaller than the other ones? So I doubt there can be one smaller than mine. Rotating the candle in my hands. How interesting is that? I can blow out the flame any moment. And that's it. But in the meantime, life is not wax. You can't combine two small candles to make one of medium size. I would love to give the remains of my to Lena's. To anyone who needs it more than I do. Why would I need it? I do not feel pain from the heated wax. Its flame does not give me any warmth. Hardly illuminates the room. Hmm? Suddenly there was on the cut door. Simon looks through the peephole behind it to where all get beaten now in the place. <laughs> well, to put it bluntly, a waste of ropes, wax and oxygen. That's actually what I saw. They actually must think that he related to this death. I blew out the candle. This action evoked absolutely no emotions in me. I slowly stood up and headed to the bathroom. Mm, he died as well. Cut down the road, not across the street. Everyone else cuts across, but you're going right down there. The image of Lena appeared before my eyes. She was smiling. We'll definitely meet again. I'm so sorry. Warm water, shadows and dying dreams have finally brought me some peace. So, so far, the best ending was... Mm, Alisa's ending? It really might be that I never actually went to the camp. Or that I never actually came back. But does it really matter now? I almost physically felt Lena's embers. Everything will be alright. We'll catch the bus together and ride it to the place. Where nobody will find us. Yeah, we'll be happy together. My stench left me, and I started to sink into the water. It was already spilled over the edge of the top. We'll surely meet. Forgive me. <laughs> okay, that was it. Mm, we need my one more ending set for sure. Maybe it will be two hours long or something. <laughs> and what is this smile on his face? Okay, let's see what is left.
Не. Only one left before we actually get the good enemy. Alright, be right back, and we'll start one more time. <laughs> just check what is left. A lot of endings, just a lot of them. There's so many questions, Mark. Be right back. I'll make some more to you. Uh, <laughs> he just falls asleep and I'll catch you. Who knows, anyway, he didn't die. He didn't die, that's for sure. As Zach, everything comes in cycle, as we figured out on previous stream. Alright, I'm back as always. <laughs> so, <clears throat> it will be the first Uliana and then... <sighs> so, <clears throat> let me check. This is the first and the... 
six one? And seven one as well? What? All right, all right. So it's a first day. All right. By the way, so far, as I understand this, the first question that you have already, it leads us to the true ending, or will not. Anyway, right now it's not active, so it doesn't matter what you will select. Mm, so it doesn't matter what we'll select until this one, okay. So, here... Hmm... We shouldn't attempt to take it. Okay. That doesn't matter, so we can grab the skis. Keep silent. Okay, here, first of all we must go to the canteen. Well, it's on the Muppets Kitchen Dining Hall. Why it's canteen and game, I don't know. And we already read all this. What the heck is this sound? Okay, next. Hmm, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. And next, during the car play, we should lose to Diana. And after this, go to the scene. Wait a second, so first of all I must win. I didn't win at all in this game. Okay, we're going, doesn't matter. So I must save, because if I lose it will be a disaster. Golo. Do not bet. Let me save. Just in case. <sighs> Skip the tutorial. Let's save one more time. Because you must win the first game, it will be hard. Okay, we'll be playing the tournaments. Oh, what is this card? That's right. Hmm. Nasty, nasty. I, I, actually, I forgot what were the rules. Uh, we must collect something like pearls, something. So she's trying to get our tents. Might switch it with this. All right. This is number four. We must find at least queens. Okay, let's second. Let's take this one. So number four is this one. Ace? Don't even know what to do. Hmm? Now you're gambling. She got seven, so it's four and seven. Four and seven. This one? Four and seven. Nine? Hmm. 
Nine might be a king. Six, four, seven. Okay. Seven, six. King. I won! I won! Nice! Seriously, it's hard to play a game that was made up on the spot and not by yourself either. But I won! Also, the moment of glory was tainted by the fact that it was Lena who was the loser. She's not very confident in general, but now she's lost. I'm too embarrassed to even look at you now. Normally, I should have lost to boost your self esteem. By the way, let's save here because we must lose. Next game. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Meanwhile, Electronic probably announced that the first round is over. Okay, we are playing against Indiana. Shurik lost. Uh, Miku lost. What? Slavi lost? Well, definitely uh, Jenny will lost here. We we'll lose. We we'll lose. A list, of us, uh, a list of those who made it into the second round appeared on the scene after a little while. Semi-final pairs consist of Alisa vs. Jenny and Uliana vs. me. Yeah. And don't say escape me. Uliana immediately took a seat in front of me. Ha! Huh. She glared at me, grinning. How did you manage to outplay Lena? Cheated? Perhaps? I am not you. I just know how to play cards. At least that's what I want you to believe. And how could you play Shurik? Hmm. Uliana waved her hand, showed how easy it was. I told him to join his club. She grinned yet again. Uh, would you hold back to? Another chance? Then I'll choose which card I give it to you myself. Did you hear the rules? Hmm, screw them. It looked like she really didn't care. Okay, but I choose the cards to give you two. Deal. Inspired by my victory in the first round, I ventured up on this dangerous move. I could have argued, appealed to Electronic, and eventually I had my own way, but somehow felt truly confident in the outcome of this round. Yes, you're breaking the rules. But I was in the same boat as Uliana, wait a second, breaking the rules here. You're already changing the rules? Don't like this. I look up at Electronic. It's time to begin the semi-finals? He commanded. I carefully check my cards, ensuring that Uliana couldn't see them. Hmm. Wait a second, you are. <laughs> what the heck is on the right? Uh, so we must lo to lose. In this case, we don't have a have any pairs. So I'm get rid of five. All right. Uh, I definitely don't need something like king. What do we have? Five, six. Okay, let's give you. I don't know what this is. Oh, we have double. Why have once? Oh, come on! Ugh, I'm unlucky. We must lose this one. This isn't fair. Of course, it isn't fair. Let's load. Okay, one more time. Getting rid of key. Let's give you another key. Let's give you a says. Now it's fair. <laughs> what the heck is this on the right? It's Uliana? Ah, okay, we failed. At least I won a single round. 
So we must go to the sun, right? Let me check. Mm, yeah, we're going here. The event of this past day kept flashing brightly in my head. That stupid useless checklist, that foolish torment. Tonight I had no intention of doing anything or to talk to anybody. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm good. The instigation of my complicated situation was the last thing on earth I would do this evening. Headed to the north. At least where I thought it was. It was my habit from my youth to go to the north. Uh, is it reference to something? I like this part of my hometown more than the southern districts. Traveling to the Black Sea resource was never my scene either. Mountless forests and fields were much closer to me than beaches and bark hands. Several minutes later, an open-air stage consisting of several wooden benches and a platform appeared before my eyes. I climbed into the stage. So much varied musical equipment, loudspeakers, a microphone stand and even a piano. I imagined a crowd of people in front of me, everyone screaming, shouting my name, myself blinded by the spotlights. I imagined a guitar in my hands and attempted to play a long and striking solo. I suppose it looked pretty funny from a stranger's point of view. A word guy swinging his arms on stage, jumping around like an ape and making faces. I hope no one can see me there. Hey! Picked up from somewhere above. Oh, what the heck is this? I looked up and saw Vienna hanging over the beam under the stage ceiling. And what are you doing here? I'm just... Denial is obviously fatal. You saw it, didn't you? I sit on the station and turn it away. Oh, I see a wasted guitar talent in you. I said nothing. Hey, come on! Don't throw! It was funny enough. She giggled. Funny enough, huh? I have to. Me, yep. She's from Australia. Leon answered calmly. You're right. Come on, come up here, dude. Uh, where to? To me. But I'm gonna get up there. Don't even try to convince me. Not that I have a fear of heights, it's just that climbing up there is pointless, isn't it? No, just get over here. I felt in my bones that something was going wrong, but still slowly I headed her way. I find myself standing under Liana. She cried out. Catch me! What the heck? What the heck is going on? And jump! Thousands of thoughts flashed through my mind in an instant. How would I catch her? Is it worth trying? What if she dies? What if she breaks my... my thumbs? Me something, of course. Why the hell does this happen to me? It's your own fault. No more fooling out. Well, that a number of thoughts come and go within a week of an eye. When sometimes many years are not enough to come up with a single idea. At last, logic and self preservation instincts won the battle and I stepped back. Uliana landed gently, Tamlet instantly jumped to her feet and looked at me with offense. Holy moly, why didn't you catch me? You didn't get hurt? I answered, shifting my glance. What if I did? But you didn't? What's up with you? Watch too many boom B movies recently? By the way, this time they actually said it right. So, don't you care about me? She grinned. Well, in this situation, certainly I do care. How flattered. Hey, don't get any ideas. Okay, okay. You're forgiven for the cards. And you're not. I had no time to finish the sentence, Leanna jumped over the stage and vanished in the dark of the night. Yep, one more childish trick from the silly girl. She was worrying about you at the moment, as I would for anyone else in her place. After once again cursing Leanna in my mind, I headed towards my cabin. Okay, this one is keeping. Day number three. 
I hope she will not die here in this ending. Um, I will say that I promise Elena, but I don't really care. Here we must select this one. I know that Olga really asked me to help him tonight. Here, yeah, who cares, of course? Here we must help sport club that I actually did something. Here, obviously, we will stay and help all the enemies clean up. Okay, it's dense. Let's see. Everything is alright. At least now. Let's see. Slavia left. So we constantly dancing with Slavia? Why? That's why I don't like you. She's dominant. And obviously Alisa is much better than anyone else here. I well, should not refuse her after everything she did for me. Oh, sh he refused her. Anyway, she is tried to dominate. But I wasn't made for such activities. The pioneers kept on the... What the... S what the heck is this? Who is on the right, first of all? But very nice picture. At least they like the ball. Olga Dmitrina danced too. I consider that... Not really appropriate. The leader has to keep order around. Especially since she's not 17. Olga Mitrina came over to me as if she felt that someone doubt her professionalism. Why are you not dancing? I don't really want to. Your choice? She smiled cunningly. And I have a perfect task for you. A task? Witches! Any other activity seems better than dancing. You clean the content well today, but I think you haven't fully atoned yet. Eh? Uh -huh. Liana! What? Come here. Come over here. Liana came over to us reluctantly. I see you've had enough dancing for a long time to come. No, I haven't. She was sweating like a pig, so it seems that the leader was right. I have a test for you and Simeon. But we'll get me there now. Pulyana Bagat. It's dance times now, it's and it's late. It won't take much time. Slavi was sorting the books in the library, but hasn't finished. You have only a couple of shelves though. What? No buts. For goodness sake. I don't like public work, but dancing. I'm ready. Good job, Simon. That's my boy. A real piano. You should follow his example, Liana. Liana didn't appreciate such an example, so. So do it. The whole camp is relying on you. I'll remember this. She hissed. The camp in the evening was beautiful. Silence and peace calmed me. Only the distant music from the square reminded that I am not alone here. And Liana? Who just came back. You could do the cleaning your dress, so I grinned. This is all your fault. She breasted, breasted heavily. Her face was as red as a tomato, so I wouldn't have been surprised if steam started coming out of her ears. You! It is all you! Your fault. Why me? If only you'd just been quiet, what would have changed? She'd make us do it anyway. You. She wasn't able to speak normally and just hissed. So, what if I kept silent? Uh, do you think she would let you keep on having fun? Liana look at me. She seems to calm down a bit. Really? You don't care at all. You can't even dance. So, what if I can't? If you had danced with me, it would have been fun. She turned to her usual childlike mode. I might have. But you see how the things turned out. 
he won't have a chance to see who's better than so. I approached the library. It was already dark outside. I was slightly surprised by Olga meeting a request. Or more like an order to sort the books at night. This is so bizarre. There was no light inside, only lanyards on the left. And the switch didn't work, unpleasantly clicking with every push. It might have actually worked properly, but the lights weren't turning on. Wait, I'll get the candles. Candles, looks like a sexually lamp which is working here, but okay. I was just about to ask how she knows where the candles and matches are when two small lights appeared on the table next to me. Ah, what? What? That's better. Liana said satisfied with herself. What? Two small lights appeared on the table. Okay, so it's, it's actually candles. What's next? Uh, what's what next? She looked at me incorrectly. Uh, what will we do next? Hmm. How should I know? She chuckled. Uh, great. I walk around the bookcases. We got me to said something about a couple of shelves. I touched the books and made sure that there was no dust on them. It looked like someone did a really good job before us. Having examined the whole library, I didn't find anything to clean. The leader must have made a mistake. Suddenly I heard footsteps from behind. The old, cracked floor was squeaking, so Liana wasn't able to sneak up on me unnoticed. Bo! I turned around. Oh my god, I'm so scared, please! Whatever. She turned away res resentfully. Why did I skip this? Looks really clean in here, so... The downy eliminated rows of books look at me reproachfully. And all authors from long forgotten eras. eras. I wonder if anyone still remembers them. Jenny must remember. I'm sure that she remembers everything. Okay, sit down. Juliana moved her chair over to me. I sat on it. So, uh, what's next? Let's tell scary stories to each other. By this, can you want to say that your ending will be some kind of Horror? We have two chairs and two candles, so there should be two stories, one mine and one yours. Okay. I agreed without thinking. I hadn't the slightest intention of going back to the dance and going to going by my experience there was nothing to do in the camp at night. Especially as I knew a couple of nice stories which would be able to really scare Oriana. And that was awesome. <clears throat> you first. Okay. <laughs> what the heck is this? She made herself comfortable, embraced the chair's back with her arms, and moved the candle as close to her face as possible. Once upon a time, in a village far away, lived a boy. Just a normal boy. He went to school, played with other children, so there was nothing special about him. One day, he made a bet with his friend that he wasn't scared to go to the abandoned house. Juliana left a long pause. So, what was in that girl's? Don't interrupt me! Inventing it on the fly? She pulled her lips and continued. They say a witch have lived in that house, and people still see her goes there in the night. Nobody knew for sure, but everybody was scared. The boy had said that it was all nonsense, and he was already to spend a whole night in there. So, he did. But he didn't turn in the morning. He was found hanged. Liana stopped talking again. Really? Did he hang himself, or was he... Shoreless? I said skeptically. She frowned again. Is it the end? Of course not! They buried the boy the way it was supposed to be, the coffin and stuff. His relatives and friends grieved, uh, but they couldn't bring him back. 
After a few days, people started to disappear in the village. Nobody knew how or why. They just vanished into thin air. The villagers wanted to call the police, but a friend of the boy who came himself in the rich house told them that he'd seen the boy. Nobody believed him at first, but people kept on disappearing. Then the villagers decided to dig up the coffin. There were long nail scratches on the inside of the lid, but there was no body. Where did he go? Juliana moved the candle away from her and made a scary face, or at least what she thought was scary. In the end, all of the villagers disappeared, and occasional passers by near the witch house tell that they saw two ghosts. Juliana blew out her candle and stopped talking. It looked like the story was finished. Wonderful! I applaud. Not quite a uh, Pulitzer Prize worthy, but I am scared for writing it. Holmes just chewing all over. Whatever. Tell me your story then. I'm sure I won't even finish. I collected my thoughts and decided to tell a story. I had read on the blog of an acquaintance of mine a few months ago. Creepypasta here? I wrote a lot of creepypasta in the past. A lot. It's still available on the internet. In Viking. Creepypasta Viking. He was quite a good storyteller. At least I like his style. So success was granted. I certainly didn't remember the story word for word, so I told it with my own words. There is a five-way space station, the last country of humanity, located on the border, with a hostile civilization, the third months of the ceasefire. <laughs> what sci-fi? Can be really called a ceasefire, more like a not a war. A small group of survivors is exhausted by a long siege. On one hand, the country treats leaving the outpost, on the other hand, they understand they won't last even a minute if the enemy attacks. Despair is the best word to describe their situation. The food is running out, this armor only for a few shots, which will only seem like greeting fireworks. There's only plenty of air and water, owing to the pejoration systems. People didn't talk to each other for weeks at a time. They may just not see the point of wasting their time on communication while death is at the door or behind majestic station armor, to be precise. It is really better just to wait for rescue or enemy's attack. Both outcomes will lead to the end of this torture. This situation looks like a chess game against an invisible opponent. It's the hardest part, end game. Any wrong move will lead to defeat, yours or your enemies. But does the enemy know about it? They may be afraid of making a wrong move too. Meanwhile, the humans may move their king, but only one square forward and then one square back again. Any other move will automatically lead to defeat. A step forward is an implied threat to attack, and a step backward is a deliberate necessity of defense. The game would be much easier if the opponent was sitting in front of you. Even an experienced chess player can't hide nervous eye movements. The occasional drop of sweat or shaky hands. On the one hand, everything is hotter. Everyone realizes that the situation is hopeless because no one would decide to make a move to escape the imminent defeat. On the other hand, when seeing the opponent in front of you, understanding that he is totally like you and can make a mistake, you can more easily stake everything. The opponent may feel the same difficulties. The circumstances of the few men and women on the edge of the universe. There were no orders from headquarters for several days. So the last orders had contained nothing useful, only the usual demand to keep on defending. One square forward, one square backward, the swinging of an internal pendulum. At the beginning of the fourth month, the commander decides to retreat. 
he reasons that the lives of his soldiers are more important than the mythical ideas of humanity. No one will judge him for this. Moreover, they can't change anything. Appropriations don't take much time. The greatest asset you can save from a sinking ship is your life. The whole station uh, crew board the rescue vessel. The launch sequence starts. 3, 2, 1, and nothing. The bay doors don't open. They send mechanics uh, to check for main function, but they don't find anything. The doors should open, but they don't open the second time, or the third time. Commander orders his crew to leave the station and rescue pods, but they can't latch either. They explain its technical malfunction. The crew tries to communicate with headquarters in vain. After a few days, the executive officer notices that there's nothing on the radars. Nothing at all. No planets, no asteroids, no enemy ships. Just an endless darkness. They run out of food in a month. Everybody thinks that that is the end, but no one dies, not after a day, a week, not even a month, as if there are no need for food to sustain human life. At this moment, the majority of the crew goes insane. Some of them just stay in their rooms and pray, some wander around the station, some try to commit suicide, by the way, very nice story. But neither point like shots with a plasma gun, nor hit a tank diamond, not even simply slitting their wings with any results. Days pass by, months or maybe even years. Nobody keeps a track of time. Insane people recover their minds again and normal people go insane. He repeats many times. In the end, the crew accepts its condition. They start to make up occupations, theatrical struggle, sports tournaments, reading of self-writing books. A lot of family couples appear and many more break up. It's an infinity flow of time, a closed loop of human life, and only the darkness on the radar reminds them of the emptiness outside, but there's an emptiness inside the station too. In the end, people stop living, just lie in their rooms and sleep, not wait here for hours and seven days at first, but as a test at the time goes by there learn to fall into a trance. Every person has his own dreams. One returns to his childhood, one gets his lost love back, one defends the ideas of humanity with a blaster in his hands. Some others just wander in space. Ideas. Shabby from skirmishes with the enemy, a rescue vessel docks with the station. The boarding squid gets inside. Hmm. The whole station looks like a piece of scrap metal which was floating in space for thousands of years. The reactor had shut down a long time ago. There were marks on the laser shots on the walls. The equipment wall was all smashed. Wait a second. They found the great skeletons of people who died horribly defending the frontier of humanity in almost every room. And only one cryptic message sent to the headquarters implied that something was wrong. Save us. We just want to die. What the heck was this? I finished the story and looked at Liliana. Her face was concealed by the darkness. So that's the story. I blew out the light. What the heck is this? Liliana shrieked, rose up, and threw herself towards me. We fell on the floor. Oh, what's up with you? Nothing. Your voice sounded very scared. Looks like my story hit the jackpot. I mentally congratulated myself. Liana wasn't having fun though. She embarrassed me. She returned sobbed. What's wrong with you, Miss Citizen? I patted her head. Just a story. It's not real. You and your stupid stories! Yana colored up to me more. Uh, wait, was it scared? Yeah. Frankly, I didn't expect such an honest answer from her. Everything's alright. Time heals all once. She'll calm down. Uh, listen, Simeon. What? No mind, it's nothing. She burned her face in my chest. 
minutes past. Okay, I understand. Maybe we should go. I listened. Uliana snored quietly. Hey, wake up! Can you even fall asleep from here? Wake up, I said. No reaction. I tried to stand up. Liana certainly didn't weigh more than 40 kilograms, but imagine yourself lying under such a weight. It's really not easy to stand up. You would think that Uliana was dead if not for her brazen. I certainly could make more effort. But then I'd wake her up and it all will start again. Such an unmanageable situation. This the options to wait until she wakes up by herself, so she certainly won't sleep all the way until morning after such a story. I look through the window at a starry sky. I wonder if there really is a distant outpost with a ghost crew. My eyes slowly closed and in a moment I fell asleep. Seriously, like this? Okay. Day number four. Day number four. Not in our bed. Felt once in my dream. It happens sometimes. Your brain is not completely awake yet, but you still feel the sun shining in your eyes. And when you wake up, you blink for some time to get used to the light. It was a wonderful morning. <clears throat> One second. Sunshine in your eyes. Never happened to me because I actually have a uh, closed windows. It's dark and sort of. It was a wonderful morning. The birds were singing. The air was flesh, fresh, fresh, <laughs> and fragrant. And the whole and the world was bathed in daylight. I stayed in bed for some time longer, but something was not quite right. All yesterday's evenings and events flashed through my mind. Scary and not so scary stories. Uliana, who was cuddling up to me tightly and snoring, not quite like a little goat. But I didn't worry at all. After all, it's still early. Surely no later than 7 or 8 o'clock. Who'd want to go to the library that early? I sat back and looked out the window. In a couple of minutes, the sun will hit through right in Uliana's eyes. That's when you're gonna wake up! It's interesting, how did she manage to hug me so tightly? Indeed, I couldn't free myself at all. Wait a second, somebody will go inside and find some? Certainly, I was ready to spend one or two more hours lying this way, but suddenly I heard footsteps. Sounds like trouble! Wake up! Do you hear me? Wake up! I started carefully, but instantly shaking Uliana by her shoulders, tried to loosen her grip, but it was all in vain. Meanwhile, the footsteps were getting closer. Have to save us at any cost. Standing up seems unworkable. That's what I learned already, so I decided to crawl. My mouth moves strongly resembled a service training. I don't know what is it, but he never attained. <laughs> she never attained. A soldier dragon, his injured soldier, uh, injured officer, while under an artillery attack. The officer is unconscious, the shoulder is exhausted, and layers of vermin's wires surround him. <laughs> Abraham managed to crouch behind a book stand and hide Uliana when the library door opens. Jenny was standing on the doorstep. She seems a bit overcommitted to her work since she's coming in at the crack of dawn. Wait, electronic here? Well, he knew about this, but. I had a familiar voice. Hmm, a visitor. So she indeed does have a reason to come here. Why couldn't she come yesterday? Or today, but later? Science waits for nobody. Science. It was electronic. Hold on for a second, I'll find it. She headed towards us. I barely managed to turn Liana around so that she was on my back and crawled on all fours to a nearby bookshelf where I collapsed and tried to catch my breath. What was it? Cybernetic mathematics? Or mathematical cybernetics? It seems she didn't notice us. 
I'd like something about the electronic bombardment of photo wall. Takes what the heck is this? Are you crazy? Why would we have something military? So it's not military at all. But well, sometimes they both were silent. Virginia, what? Let's go down to the river tonight. What for? Uh, well, just have a lot of things to do. Come on, get moving. Your robot is waiting for you. Okay. The drone slamming was like an epitaph for electronic slav struggles. Seems like he's not a cold blooded robot after all. I check it quietly. Anyway, Alter seems a bit inappropriate. We have to escape the library somehow. Waiting until Jenny goes for breakfast seems to be the easiest solution at the moment. She's a communist labor worker after all, not one of Electronics' mythical robots. She has to at least eat sometimes. Meanwhile, Ulyana wasn't going to wake up. At least she's not snoring anymore. The library was silent. I didn't see Jenny, but was more or less satisfied with the situation. What the heck was this? All of a sudden, a comprehensible noise came from her desk. Clicks, cracks, and music started. The Soviet anthem? Just great. It would have been alright if not for Eugenia, who started to sing along. United forever in French. <laughs> what the hell? I will only envy her patriotic feelings. <sighs> Unfortunately, she had some vocal issues. The Soviet pop scene definitely didn't miss out on a star called Shania. And then ended, and an unfamiliar voice started to talk about the overachievements of a five year plan of crop harvesting. It was the radio, obviously. I started listening. Attentively, maybe they would say something interesting. Wait a second, it's the first time when actually they getting some information from outside. Yes, but after the list of agriculture achievements, the boy started to disappear and was gone in a few minutes. Signal disturbance, probably. Hmm. He stopped and headed towards us. Sedation hidden rock bottom. I managed to unclench Ulyana's grip with a titanic struggle. I was free to go, but was so crumpled from all this crouching that I didn't have the strength to get up. It's time to prepare for the worst and start thinking of excuses. Suddenly, the step stopped. Seems like Jenny was standing on the other side of the bookshelf. I heard the sound of books rustling. Only she's looking for something. She took a book and returned to her desk. The door slammed open. Simeon? Have you seen him? Olga Medina was definitely out of breath. Uliana? No. Jenny answered with surprise. The door was slammed, as slow there at the previous time. Seems like everyone is looking for us, and Jenny will start to look around the library. But, fortunately, at that very moment, the bell sounded in the distance calling pioneers for breakfast. Jenny, being a punctual person, decided not to linger and left the library in a few minutes. There was only me and Anvyana in the library. Then it was time to decide what to do with her. No longer afraid of being caught, I bent down and shouted into her ear. A walkie walkie? Exxon Bucker? What the heck is this? She instantly jumped and started to look out. Noticing me, Uliana's eyes widened. What are you doing here? Playing at spice? Huh? Never mind, uh, did you sleep well? Yes. Seems she's not yet completely con <laughs> conscious. It's very late tonight. <laughs> Breakfast? Yes. It's almost 3 am, per se. We left the library. At last. Not was certain that I won't have to explain anyone the what. How and why of Uliana and myself being in there all night long? <clears throat> Sorry for falling asleep like that. It's alright. I guess my words sounded too... Ins 
sincere because she looked at me with disbelief. Wait a minute. What were you doing there all this time? You wouldn't believe me. Wait a moment. That means... Ulyana giggled, stepped away from me and shouted lightly. I'm the first for breakfast. Not a big surprise after such a deep sleep. I said, but Ulyana already couldn't hear me, being firehead. It was unusually crowded near the canteen, because there was no other place in the camp that beginners laughed as much at the canteen, but why were they all crowded on the porch? I came closer and tried to find out what's happening. It looked like the, all the camp had gathered at the porch, there were all the familiar girls, Olga Dmitriana and Electronic. Where nice have you been? I waited for you all night long and have been searching since early morning. Liana told me that you left the library together yesterday. I looked at Liana. She was grinning acrimoniously. Well, we'll deal with this later. Have you seen Shurik today? Shurik again. Okay, I'm skipping this part. But I was stopped by Olga Dmitrievna, what? And you, Simeon, please stay here. Yeah? Would you care to explain where you've been all night? Well, this is the time I hadn't thought about. True, this couldn't have gone by unnoticed. I would have thought of some clear explanation at least. But I hadn't. Well, I? Me and Liana were placing the books on the shelves, but then she, she locked me up there and ran away. I was stuck in there until morning. I was in the library today, and I didn't see you there. I'm kind of aware of all that. Well, I left quietly. And why is Juliana telling me something completely different? Hmm, what might that be? You know what his stories are like. Yeah, you might be right. The camp leader paused for a moment. Just don't think this means I believe you. I didn't think that. Okay, we'll deal with it later. I won't forget. It's more important to find Shirk now. Yeah. Dismissed. Okay, we're skipping this. And now, let me check what is next. Doesn't matter what we select. Doesn't matter. Mm hmm. Okay. It's all bot house. All right, I don't know forest. Um, doesn't really matter, right? Okay, got food poison from the canteen, right? I think yes. Mm, let's ask him. Hmm. We can eat this. And of course we'll go with Soliana. That's right. Hmm. Kinda strange that the next will be a... Not to give you... Uh, this wire, I mean next day, I had never give, gave it to her, but it's actually what I should do. Okay, let's continue. Count me in. I look at Oliana, astonished. Your list for adventure seems to have no limits. Look, night, ghosts and all camp, it's great. On the one hand, such company always promises trouble, but on the other hand, it feels safe we are going to get there. Perfect. Having said our goodbyes to the other girls and all good meeting, we were left alone. Do you consider this is just an entertaining walk? Well, yes. What's the matter? Juliana Guild. No mind. Really? I said. 
Oh, hold on. I'm gonna fetch a flashlight. Okay. I was just about to suggest that myself. Seemed I would not only have to visit an abandoned camp at night, but also look after a fidgety child. Well, since it's Uliana, should be twice as cautious. Electronic has told us the old building was built right after the war. It looked like a kindergarten, or like a barracks expected and definitely could hold less manuals than today's camp. It had been abandoned for about 20 years. Uliana skipped forward, as if everything was just a game to her. It was... I was ill at ease. Actually, that was normal for a person in my situation, in the night forest, with scary animals and birds eager to swoop down on you, the full moon, and this whole other world I had come into not too long ago. I'd be better off all alone, without needing to look after Uliana, who was running in front of me. How hasn't she tripped over something yet? Listen, be careful. Oh what? She turned around so quickly that I shivered. And I think you may hurt yourself? Are you worried about me? Of course I am, I mean, it's normal in such a situation. Liana about it. Listen, I decided to continue our conversation. It's more relaxing and less scary this way. But what is it about that old camp? You were saying, back there, at the square? Yeah, it's really a scary place. They say that all the pioneers died there and became ghosts which guard their last heavenly refuge. Uh, what did they die from? It was kind of hard to believe your scary tales. How should I know? I wasn't even born back then. But you say it so confidently? I got information from a reliable source. And where would that be from? From Alisa? Not gonna tell you. So, what happened next? They died and became ghosts? Is that so? Uh, what do you mean, that's all? And now the souls of the dead pioneers roll around the camp and take everyone who dares to enter the world of the dead. Well, okay, move along. Time passed. We went deeper into the depths, uh, depths of the woods, where the trees enclosed everything. Suddenly, that the forest had gone completely silent. As if the night birds had given in waiting for something, and the sex had dug into the ground. Even the wind had died away. I imagine that the streams of moonlight breaking through the thick foliage were ringing like plucked strings. At last, trees parted, and we walked out to a large glade. In the middle of, the, of it was an old building resembling a kindergarten. It was shrouded in a thick fog, it looked like a bit coming in, out into the cemetery, and the old calm building at its center was a crypt. Hmm. According to Liana, there were pioneer souls roaming here. Truly, it was like a mass grave. I shivered and clinched the flashlight tighter. A dreadful place. To tell you the truth. Oh, come on! She pointed me on the back cheerfully, which only made me more scared. I was about to move forward when the moon showed among clouds, illuminated the glades, the old camp building, and us. Under that light, everything seems not so old. The crumbling brickwork, the rusty slides, a merry go round, the few panes so glass that miraculously remained in some of the windows, they all became more vivid. I started to imagine that unknown monsters came out to the glade from the forest, a place of eternal darkness where even the moon can't rain. I hope that they furnish the light like vampires, though maybe they could turn the giant wolves that move full moon like werewolves. Where have you stopped? I'm thinking. About what? Uh, why would Shurik want to come to such a place? How should I know? We'll ask him when we find him. Yeah, obviously. <clears throat> I mumbled and followed Liana. She walked more carefully now, looking under her feet, stopping occasionally and even looking back several times. This natural, 
In some places, the grass reached your chest height and nobody knew what could have been on the ground. Scrap metal, stones, shattered glass. You finally reached the door, but Yana stopped and said, Well, have you? As if you'd won a race, this isn't a game. Yeah. What? Boring. I met a displeased face and snapped confidently into the darkness. It was dangerous to let Ulyana go first. Dangerous for her, dangerous for me, and maybe even for all the humanity. Inside of the old calm building made an even more depressing impression. I even felt sad for it for a moment. Or only for the people who lived here back then had surely been full of the joy of children in the past, parents ran around playing games and forgotten, a strict leader like Olga Mitrina maintained order, she… Uh, one session ended, a new one started. And now it's just standing here, crumbling, rotting, forgotten. Look! Liana gave me an old ruined doll, falling apart from that dump, one more piece of the past. So what? Nothing. She moved out of the light, but I noticed sorrow on her face. I said as a as a cemetery. Scary. I haven't seen anything scary yet. It was indeed more relaxing in here than outside. It really was like a cemetery as you look for a specific grave while walking amongst countless stonestones, feeling discomfort inside, but then you find it and your soul comes, as you lie, next to it. I shuddered and let the flashlight play around the room. There was no sign of shirt. However, what did I expect to find here? His corpse? Looks like he isn't here. What about the second floor? Uh, Shurik! I called loudly, but only my echo answered me. Shurik, come out! See? You should check anyway. Okay, okay. There were no signs of life on the second floor either. I sat on the stairs and hung my head, feeling doomed. Where to next? You can't walk around the whole forest and I'm already sleepy. Why do you whine so much? Liana was irritated. We need a minute, just like a kid. Oh, am I wrong? Right or wrong? What's the difference? If you are looking for Shurik, you must find him. Uh, but how? I bet it. I don't know, somehow. Liana looked like a strict teacher and myself like a careless schoolboy. But shouldn't it be other way around? Look! I turned the light in the direction she pointed and noticed a trapdoor in the corner surrounded by garbage. It looked like it had been opened not too long ago. He must be down here, for sure. Diana rushed to the hatch and made a great effort to open it. Why would he go down there? Just probably, I don't know, some villagers? Is there a village nearby? I don't know. Diana replied, bracing heavily. She hadn't managed to open the other door. I started thinking. There was surely a possibility that Churik might be there. I didn't know much about this world after all. Actually, I knew nothing. Why should the local residents act according to my logic? Could it be that he tried to escape down there, run away from wolves? Are there any wolves? So, maybe owls? Okay, uh, let's check it out. I strained my muscles and managed to open the up door. It crashed loudly on the cracked wooden floor and at the same time, Uliana leaned over the hatchway, lighting up the basement with a flashlight. It's some sort of a tunnel? A tunnel? I pulled her back by the scruff of the neck to look in there myself. Hey! You said I killed the cat. There was indeed a long tunnel running into the darkness. It looked like a dungeon from a computer game. There wasn't any danger at first sight, no waste deep water, no rats, no zombies. Okay, let's climb down there to look, but be careful. Roger that. Liana mute. 
Hmm. It was really dark down there. The flashlight did little to help. It dimly illuminated concrete walls, lamps hanging from the ceiling, entangled in wires and garbage and bunk like covering the floor. We slowly moved forward. I held Liana's hands, fearing she would run ahead of me. Probably was a bit worried about myself too, not wanting to be alone in this thick darkness. Maybe you should go back? She couldn't have gone so far. But if he had a flashlight? Well, even with a flashlight, what would he be doing here? I don't know. Aren't you interested in what lies ahead? Not a bit. I'm more interested in... I didn't finish the sentence. A massive metal door suddenly appeared before us, as if from that thin air. I instantly noticed a biohazard sign. A bomb shelter? At least. Probably. Have you had anything about it? I don't know. Does it matter? Uh, does it? What if this is radiation? What radiation? Where from? Yeah, you're right. I took hold of the door's wheel and tried to move it. It yielded, to my surprise, and groans like a dying dinosaur. The door opened at last and Uliana ran in there as soon as it did. did. He! Behind the door was probably the main shelter room. There were several beds next to me. Some devices near the farthest wall lockers were stand lamps on the ceiling brightly illuminated the room. Where does the electricity come from? Are the backup generators still working? I turned off the flashlight to save the battery. Leanne started to rummage in the lockers at once, taking out gas masks, packages and various tools. Don't you have anything better to do? No. She looked at me with displeasure. I sat on the neatly made beds and looked around one more time. Across the room from, from me was a door, the same as the one we entered. Could Shurik have gone through there? If he was here at all, and why? Why the land face? Uh, just died? I honestly confessed. Then rest farewell. Uliana jumped at me and pushed me in the chest. I rolled back in surprise and hit my head against the wall. What are you doing? I grabbed her arms and pulled her towards me. What the heck is going on? She lost her balance and fell next to me. Ouch! You started this. Yana stuck out her tongue and sat up. Well, what's next? Then the answer door. I'm sure Shurik predicted a nuclear war and decided to hide beforehand, did he? Maybe he did? Or maybe the shoulder is too close to the surface. It could protect against the radiation, but if the bombs fell close enough. You're so serious about this, Mothers. She smiled. I really didn't know when to be serious with her and when to joke. Seems like the age difference between us really matters here. How big is it? Ten years? More? I sighed and stood up from the bed. Okay, let's try it. But that door was less compliant than the first one. The bolts creaked, but the wheel didn't budge a centimeter. Seems jumped. Let me. Lena rushed at the door with a crowbar. She got who knows where and applied herself to it with all her in impressive weight. That gave us a chance, helped her, and soon the door fell to the floor with a bang. The hangers turned out to be completely rusted. Seems that not everything was made to last back then. Behind the door there was a tunnel, all the same as the one we had come here through. Don't do anything stupid. I took Eliana by the hand and stepped out of the room. Hmm. Something telling me that I need more than one more stream for this. There was another endless tunnel. The ceiling seems to become lower, even so I logically realized that it didn't change. Ren didn't seem to be bothered at all, so she was humming as she walked. It annoyed me more and more. Looks like we're having fun. 
Of course I am, aren't you? No, I don't see any reason to have fun. We should find Shuri quickly and get out of here. She may not be here at all. Then, why the hell? Look, Juliana snatched the flashlight from my hand. There was a huge hole in the ground a couple of meters in front of us. He may be down there. She walked to the edge and leaned. Some rails. Looks like there was a mine under the tunnel. The depth of the hole was low enough to let us climb out of it, so I knew what Rihanna would say next. Come on! I wanted to object, but she had jumped down, leaving me in complete darkness. Hey! I had to follow her. I don't know what they did for her, but the mine had been abandoned for a long time. Plants had become dumb, the rails were rusted, as broke through the walls in some places. The whole tunnel leading into the unknown was suspicious. It looked like it was about to collapse and bury us. Come on! Juliana desperately pulled on my arm. Wait, why? But what should it be down here? What if. She made a serious face. What if he is sitting here somewhere, injured and waiting for help, and we just turn around and go, leaving him to die? I estimated the height of the ceiling. One more time, and walk slowly after the rest of Suliana. Hmm? Speed is that there's no real monsters here? As in scary stories, they come fire. Black but shit? Green fingers? What? You can actually create <coughs> such visual novel yourself. Why not? Green fingers? Never heard about this. Black bad shit. They will be? Soon we reached a fork. Let's go to the right. Wait. I grabbed her arm. Oh, what's the matter? What if it's a dead end? Or worse than a dead end? A whole labyrinth? Well... She thought. Then let's mark the starting point. Rihanna picked up a large stone from the ground and scratched a cross on one of the beams that suppose the ceiling. Uh, do you think that will help? It will. Probably I will leave to choose where to go. I just can't leave it to a little girl. Okay, same as usual. Right, left. By the way, why he actually changed from right, left to left, right? I mean, Shurik. Balance I don't know. <clears throat> At last the ray of the flashlight revealed an old wooden door in the, da in the darkness. Have you? Uh, where? Somewhere. I don't know. But she was right about something. At least we'd gotten out of the labyrinth. After all these turns and forths, I wasn't sure that we'd ever make it back, but on the other hand, why wouldn't this mine have any exits? Uliana opened the door and started into the darkness. So, you won't go first as usual? Well... Okay. I stepped over the threshold. Same as usual. Nothing new. A small room was beyond the door, maybe storage room for the bomb shelter. There were bottles and cigarette stuffs. Wait a second, it was butts, now it stops, okay. Which means that somebody had been here before us. It wasn't an encouraging fact by itself, but now I was certain that there was another exit from the mine, since they couldn't have come the same way as we did. The ray of light moved around the room, examining every corner. Suddenly, it lit up a human figure. It was Shurik, huddling up against one of the walls. Hey, there you are! We have been looking for you for all night and you... Seems he hadn't even noticed us, just sitting and mumbling something. Shurik! Who said? What do you mean, who? Your risk on him. Get up and let's go. I won't go anywhere with you. He mumbled. You lead me around these tunnels again. I know. I won't go anywhere. I'll stay right here. You won't get me. Stop his nonsense. It's like he's gone insane. 
No, no, you won't trick me this time. Stop it already. He struck it every single time. I took a few steps towards Shrek, but he jumped up at once and waved a metal rod. Don't come near me. Leave me alone. Calm down. It's me, Simeon. Don't you recognize me? Simeon? No, you're not Simeon. I noticed that Uliana, who was standing next to me, had disappeared somewhere. You're not Simeon. And I'm going to... As a trembling light, Shurik's hand appeared for a moment, while then the metal rod, I caught my head instantaneously. Nothing. When I opened my eyes, he had already disappeared. Uliana stood next to me and giggled, holding the metal rod. Just like a scout? Uh, yeah. A scout. From somewhere far up, the devilish louter of Shurik was heard. He ran away. Screw him, I don't care if he, if he dies here. I spat on the floor and leaned against the wall. If it hadn't been for Ulyana, I wasn't prepared for that. Shurik might not have killed me, but he could have seriously injured me. To be left lying here injured would be equivalent to death. You don't even know when help will arrive. And would they able to find me in this labyrinth? Why the hell did I agree to come here? Indulging that girl. You look like you're going to kill somebody. If a good candidate presents himself, Liliana shuddered. No, not you. It might be nice to spank you, but there's no reason to kill you. Just work. Yet. Now you. Okay, it's definitely time to get out of here. They can send their special forces, rescue teams, Ghostbusters, whatever tomorrow. I don't care. Will we go back? Look around the room once again and notice the door to my left. Wow. The door was just like the bomb shelter. A massive metal one. What, again? Are you kidding me? Pulled the wheel a couple of times, but just click it down. If I only had that crowbar. It doesn't work? Yana asked in a depressed voice. No. Actually, I didn't have any strange left. In another situation, I would train myself, ask Liana to help, look for something to use as a lever, but now I just wanted to get out of this mine. I wanted to hope that there was a path of a least resistance for us to take. What is it? Something else scares you? What is it? And that meant hoping that I remembered the way through the labyrinths. Let's go back. Okay, we are going back in this story? What the heck? She smiled and took my hand. We walk even slower on the way back through the labyrinths. Stones scattered under our feet. Water dripped from the ceiling into our heads, feeling like drops of molten tin. Liana quieted down and follow me in silence. Did something happen? What do you mean? It's strange uh, for you to be quiet for more than a minute. No, everything is alright. But something was wrong for sure. One clock after another. A minute ago I was certain that the next corner I would see the cross. Uliana had scratched before. I was wrong. I face in my ability to guide us was melting away with each second. Well, whatever. I decided to distract myself with this conversation. It's alright, it's just... what? It all went so wrong with Shurik and now we're stuck here. You saved my life, you should be proud of yourself. I tried to encourage her, but Uliana didn't seem to get it. But if I hadn't taken his metal rods away, he might have stayed. Whether he stayed or not... <clears throat> What's the difference now? We still have to get out from here, wouldn't we? Yes, but... Everything's alright, the psycho will find a way out for sure. I really was sure about it. Finally we came to a long tunnel, on the wall of which was a cross. Liana cheered up a bit and we almost ran the rest of the way to the surface. You see? The full moon shined above us again, and the building of the old camp didn't look nearly so ominous as before. 
especially in comparison to the bomb shelter and the catacombs. Well, that was cool, uh, wasn't it? it? Looks like Uliana. What a strange sound here. Like Uliana got in her usual cheerfulness back. I'm not too sure about cool, but I'm glad we go out, got out. So, shall we go and look for Shrek? What? I was speechless for a moment, unable even to finish the sentence. Are you crazy? I already found him tomorrow, or could meet him now, and the police can go down he there and catch that caveman to run tests on him. Well, no wells, back to the camps. To sleep. I woke rapidly from that dreadful place, ignoring the furious Uliana. Within 10 minutes, we were already back at the square. Okay, that's all for the day. Dismissed, Soldo. Juliana saluted and was about to leave when she suddenly yelled and started to excitedly wave her hands. Look, look! I turned to the benches and saw Shurik lying on one of them. Oh my! It was really hard to wake him up, as if the caveman had decided to sleep for a year beforehand. What? Where am I? He mumbled in his sleep. Do you want to explain yourself now? Explain what? I've been looking for you all night, and you jumped at Simeon with a metal rod and then ran away. And I jumped around the bench, ready to explode. What, what happened? And why am I here? Shrek seemed calm to his senses. Oh, to be so kind as to explain that. How do you get out of the mine? Why do you go there in the first place? Everything, step by step. What mine? There was such sincere surprise in his eyes that I started to doubt. He really might not remember anything. Where have you been for the last 12 hours? I don't know. Shirk sat in his face from with the effort of thinking. I went to the old camp in the morning. People say there was some old equipment there for parts for the robot and he started stared at us in confusion. And? And that's all? So, you don't remember? I don't. Okay. More than eight hours. That's why actually my lips are now. But we must finish this. I sat next to him and leaned back on the bench. The stars shone brightly in the sky. They remember everything. Even what Shurik was doing in the bomb shelter. Post-traumatic shock? Poster what? Such symptoms are experienced by people after heavy stress, after disaster, for example. Shurik remarked with a smart look on his face. Hmm. You should sleep now. So this time he actually believed us? Strange. Yes, but we'll speak tomorrow. Shurik looked at me for some time, but then he got up and slowly walked to his cabin without saying a word. So, what is it with him? He probably forgot everything that happened in the mine. He's lying. Look, why would he have to lie? So he wouldn't have to answer for when he tried to attack you with a metal rod? She said uncertainly. Mm, doesn't look like it. And does it matter now? It does. You must find out. The criminal must be punished. If the rule was applied to you, you would have been placed under house arrest for a long time. Or worse. What does it have to do with this? I don't leap at people with a rod. It was an intention. He's lying. He may be lying. I was really exhausted after the day, especially as this night, and I really didn't care whether it was Shurik speaking the truth or just pretending to. It really looks like he doesn't remember anything. I'm going to sleep. Then, Liliana jumped up and stood on her tiptoes. Good night. You too. I don't know. It seemed like there was something special in the expression of her face at that moment. I didn't care. The camp leader had been waiting for me at home. Thought you wouldn't come back. I would have expected any reaction for Orca Midrina except that one. Since you went with Liliana. And you're supposed to worry about us? Why should I? You okay? Okay then. 
I had Nessa Strange no will to argue with the leader or to find out the reasons for her behavior. I took my clothes off and crawled under the blanket. It's all too much for a single person. Looking for Shurik in the damn dungeons was a job for search and rescue professionals. Doing it with Suliana for satisfied madmen, but it was in a way fun. I fell asleep with a smile on my face. Finally. This is at least two more days, even more. Oh gosh, three days. Ah. Okay, this one is. Oh gosh, again this stupid sound. When you fast forward, it's actually very loud. Okay. So we are going here in the clubhouse. Let me save. Here. So I do not understand why we should not. What if I accept actually? Okay, we must refuse. Okay, next time, when it will be not for her and then I will... will accept, but this time maybe refuse. Maybe it's wrong, by the way. Anyway, I refuse. There doesn't matter, so we can select... Lena, for example. Uh, uh, we are going... Oh, doesn't matter. We must attend every single one. And uh, this book... Stengar. Okay, we are doing nothing here. And we are going to Oliana. And next, only the last two, actually, selections will mean something. Okay. Hey, why do you have message in Discord? Uh, from who? I seem somebody use all. That's for sure. Of course, somebody use, and in this channel, hey, kidding me? All right, let's continue. It will be a very long time. That's for sure. So, we are going to Iliana. Hmm? At that moment, the spirit of Scandinavia is we can possess Shurik. I didn't think about Iliana that even at all. That thing with the cake. Like it didn't even happen. So I remembered, well, her restful, disappointed face. Maybe in some other situation, I would never have decided to go for her, to her, but now, a fine reason to leave this place and end this stupid hike has appeared. Recalling that Olga Dmitryna told me to be prepared for new tasks, I decided not to ask for her permission, and after choosing a proper moment, I disappeared in the woods. Night fell on the camp. I mentally thanked the camp leader for not researching the land too well, since this meant civilization was only a few hundred meters away. Another long, long walk through the night forest was not in my plans. Soon I came to the square and hesitated. Would it look silly? What would I tell Ulyana? Well, or why would I go to see her in the first place? My head was so heavy and full that there was no room in it for the development of any ideas. If I would compare my brain 
and it's primed to board her way full of spinning swords, overtaking each other and causing giant haughty crushes with its convenient shitty swords. It's like one more time, it's like so time in a row. So now it's nothing but a forgotten tiny pass of a distant, desolated forest. Well, the ending is different, which is only used in times of absolute necessity. <clears throat> So it's better not to think about anything and just act. But where should I go? Maybe to your cabin? And what if she's not there? All of a sudden, something knocked me down and fell to the asphalt. It's a good thing that I had time to stretch my arms, otherwise I would have broken my nose. Gotcha! I quickly got up from the ground and saw Yana standing before me. Uh, what are you doing? I couldn't stop myself from shouting, despite my best efforts. You shouldn't be stargazing, she answered viciously. What if I had smashed my mouth or nose, or had broken my arms? I said more calmly. Well, neither of those happened. Look, why do you always mock me? I already regret my decision to try and ease your loneliness. Was today's punishment not enough for you? Can you even draw simple conclusions? It's entirely your fault. The smile instantly disappeared from Liana's face. Uh, what exactly is my fault? Everything. You mean I'm to blame all the time? Yes. She closed her hands in front of her chest and turned away. Great. I suddenly wanted to get away from his, this place and as fast as possible. But it was because of you I came here. What? I guess you're quite bored, given that everybody is hiking and you alone here. I don't care, she yelled cheerfully. Well, if things are that way, what do you want to do? Uh, what do you mean? Well, if you came here because of me. Such a thought hadn't occurred to me. Also, I don't really know what I came here for. After such a greeting, I no longer want to do anything. Then it's up to me to choose. Said Uliana cheerfully and started to sink. I started at her for some time, but then couldn't stand it. Listen, if you're again planning to. I know! Let's scare the asses! You'll dress up as ghosts, for example? It's going to be so fun! I didn't find this funny in any way. Enough of that already. I began tiredly, but broke off. Maybe that's not such a bad idea. Hmm. After all, by the time she sings it all and gathers all she needs, Olga Dmitrina and Pepianas will already be back. If I came here because of Oliana, then I need to play alone. Perhaps you're right. What? She was looking at me with her eyes wide open. Are you going to agree? Just like that? Well, what's so wrong about that? And furthermore, if you insist? She studied me attentively for several seconds and then run it off. Excellent! Then we need some bad shoots? We want to look like real ghosts, don't we? Probably. You go get them! Diana announced imperiously. What do you think uh, am I going to get them? Take them from your cabin, obviously. It wasn't that obvious to me. So, you don't want to? She instantly made a gloomy face. Okay, okay. I recall the fact that there were spare sets of wet linen in Olga Medina's wardrobe, so maybe there was nothing to worry about. We approached the completer's cabin and I said to Eliana, Wait for me, Ham. Sir, yes, sir. She ran it off and saluted me. Hmm? Where to find two bronze? This one. Yeah. Actually, I had never liked your mm, hair. But okay. Seems like Juliana was entirely immersed in the game. He really formed two clean white batches. It's a shame that they are going to get smuggled. Yeah, take it. I handed one of the batches to her. It's too large for me. Juliana said after twirling it in her hands. No wonder considering her height. Give it to me. I followed the bedsheet 
in half and gave it back to her. It's much better now. Follow me. She put the white clothes over her head and ran into the forest. Wait! I threw myself to her. Hmm. No game. Just a few minutes later, we were near the Penner's campfire hiding behind the trees. It was clear that the trick, harmless at first, was taking an unpleasant twist. Brady. For some reason, I was sure from the start that the hike would end before Uliana took any actions, and now we were standing 10 meters away from the pianos dressed in bedsheets. We didn't look frightened at all, rather, we looked comical. Get ready on my command. Wait, wait. Actually, I was joking when I agreed to all this. Sing again. Won't do any good. You'll get yourself put under house arrest until the end of the shift. And so will I. No retreat, no surrender. Are you ready? On the count of three. I started scrolling through all the possible outcomes in my head personally. There weren't many of them. First one, me and Liana run out from behind the trees and start the piano laughing resulting in me getting a considerable scolding from the camp leader and possibly something even worse. Eliana is sentenced to the highest measure of punishment visible under the laws of the pioneer camp. Second one, I stay here and observe with the other how Eliana runs around the glade in a bedsheet. She is sentenced to the highest measure, like in the first option, and I stay in the lane relative safely. Third one, I do everything possible to prevent her from committing this out of moral vandalism, and no one suffers but her self-esteem. <laughs> it all could have gone so well, but either those thoughts took more than 3 seconds and Uliana shortened the count, so I hadn't managed to pull myself together in time when she sprang out in the grate, screaming and heavenly. As expected, all the pennies laughed loudly someone even fell from the lock, he was sitting and on and started rolling on the ground. I tried to save the day and yell as loud as possible so Uliana would hear me, but not the others. Fool, stop it! Come here! I don't know whether it was my persuasions that worked or Uliana understood that her performance had failed, but she ran in my direction quickly and, without pausing, hid herself in the forest. I didn't hesitate to follow her. Such a final finale left a tiny chance that she won't be punished again. It's good that I didn't join her on that tragic comical act. Now I need to find Uliana. It turned out to be not that hard, and she hadn't managed to get far. Uliana was sitting on a tree stump, crying. I stood still, hesitated. Of course, such an outcome was to be expected. But now I had obvious, absolutely no idea of what to do or how to comfort her. And besides, it gone back to the camp intentionally, and I had agreed to participate in that show. But it just got worse. As well as that, I was tired, tired unto death. At that moment, I wished it would all just come to exist. I just wanted to close my eyes and appear elsewhere. Preferably in a quiet and peaceful place. But the sight of the sobbing Uliana obliged me to take action. Walked up to her and sat down on the ground. Well, what were you expecting anyway? I began philosophically. It was sure to end up this way. She to blame for everything, you! Uliana shuddered in tears. So, what would I have changed if I had sprung out with you back there? We both would have been laughed at, that's all. You always like act this way, always! Your sobbing was becoming louder and louder, and then she suddenly rushed at me and started pounding on my chest with her fists. The hits were not hurt, 
was more likely an attempt to take out the spurs that had gripped Uliana than a real wish to beat me up. Calm down already, I said firmly. She stopped crying for a second and hugged me. Maybe nothing would have changed, but it would have been more comfortable for me if we went together. I didn't know what to say, so I just followed her on the head. Can I stay like this for a bit longer? Yes. At that time she didn't seem like a dangerous explosive nuclear reactor. It's a former little girl, but just like a little sister of mine who'd messed things up. I wasn't mad at her at all. On the contrary, it seemed I too was beginning to care about the failure of the ghost play acting. It's alright. It's alright. We'll scare them properly next time. Yeah. I don't know for how much longer we sat in silence. Ulyana stopped crying and I didn't want to disturb her as she had just calmed down. How is he sitting like this? Okay, I understand, I think. But I also had absolutely no desire to stay in the forest overnight. Hey, let's go back to the camp. I shook her shoulders gently, but there was no answer. Liana had fallen asleep. Hey! I shook her harder. No effect. At this moment, I wanted to cry. Why does this always happen to me? Why do I get caught up in these foolish situations always and everywhere? Blackbird shit? <laughs> so this was Blackbird shit. What about Green? Uh, what was this? Pound? Even having suddenly appeared in World Pioneer Camp in the middle of nowhere, and don't get to become a subject in an experiment, a victim of a sick cosmic mind, or participants in an intergalactic war on the side of a group suicide prone pacifists, like a regular hero of science fiction. No, instead, I have to spend the night in a forest with a little girl in my arms, who is muffled in a bedsheet. Next time, I'd rather have the monstrous experiments. I stood up and put the sleeping Uliana on my back. Maybe there was a way to wake you up, but firstly, I didn't want to, and secondly, one more burden, or one less. At that point, it made no difference. It's good that she's not heavy. At the square, I stopped, but Uliana on the bench, uh, put Uliana on the bench, and threw myself down beside her, totally exhausted. The only little girl is hard to carry for too long. The stars in the sky were shining brightly. Perhaps they gave their light not only to me and this camp, but also shine on the city where I was born and where my old home is. It was as if a pain settled in my chest. I envisioned my old flat curly and the testable burning started to make its way from my stomach to my throat. No, it was not wistfulness, more like a sad remnants. Because despite all what's happened, I felt more alive in less than five days here than I had for the last several years there. And now, I really wasn't sure if I wanted to get back. Only one question still ate at me, how and why I ended up there. It flared up yet again in my mind. I haven't spent much time seeking answers or even just thinking about my situation lately. My thoughts were occupied with everyday, routine affairs. And now, in order to break away and be able to wish to stay here for good, I need to understand the nature of this place. It's just that even a man girl in a golden cage has a right to know how and by whose will he got in there. And after that, to make the choice whether to stay or not? I don't know how much longer I would have been devoted to existence, existential thoughts, but Ulyana's loud snoring brought me back to reality. So small, but she snores so loudly. I sighed, but Ulyana on my back put Ulyana on my back again and headed to her cabin. I had no desire to explain everything to Alisa, so I just put the sleeping Liana on the porch, knocking at the door, and left quickly. I approached all good meeting in the cabin with mixed feelings. On the one hand, I had done what I intended to do, 
hit confronted and entertainment to Liana. On the other hand, two crumpets wedges in my hands look more like rugs left over from some worn out straight jacket. Open the door softly and went in. Simeon! On good meeting, I was sitting at the desk, and it seems she had been waiting for me. Do you want to explain something to me? Well, just don't scold her again. It's my fault. Just like that, I became a hero, to my own surprise. My tongue acted faster than my thoughts. Perhaps some of my best traits, which even I wasn't aware of, have shown themselves. Humanity is opposed to common sense. Really? I mean, started this. I choose to stick to my decision. Well, it was me who got the bad shits, and I was standing behind a tree back then. Behind what tree? The camp leader looked at me in astonishment. So, what did you need bad shits for? I released. My mistake. So, you're not talking about the fourth scene? Simeon. I don't understand you. I wanted to know where you disappeared to so mysterious during the hike, but now I would be interested in listening to your bad shit story. But it was impossible that she and all the others hadn't seen Uliana's performance. The penniless laughing out loud couldn't have been only my imagination. Ranger, Vitorna, I'm serious. Didn't you see someone in a bad shin spin out at you recently? So it was you. She gave me a close look. Uh, no, it wasn't me. Couldn't she tell just from my height? But you're holding the bad uh, Yes. Couldn't understand if she was playing me for a fool, or she really didn't know what this was all about. This organ meeting, I believe it's not. Maybe some made up, but some, you know, final game. But in in the release version, no, it's definitely not. But there was some scene of your naked, I believe, in alpha version. Not here. Let me you know. Let's act like this conversation never happened. I'm too tired for the day. All right, go to bed. To my surprise, she readily agreed. Of course, I was astonished by such a reaction, but I decided to use the moment I wrapped the blanket around myself and turned to face the wall. But I couldn't sleep. There were no thoughts, my head was aching, but I still couldn't manage to fall asleep. <clears throat> I rolled to the other side, and images, images of the day started to flash before my eyes. I shut my eyes tight to drive them away, but it didn't work. Oh gosh, what's going on? Suddenly I had knock in the window. Olga Mityana seems to be asleep. I dressed myself and walked outside. Don't tell me that this is the longest ending in this game. Because it's the first day they didn't finish and we have two more. Lena was standing before me with a tricky smile. How did you manage to carry me to the cabin? Oh, wasn't it hard? Not really. What have you come for? I couldn't sleep, but at that moment, bed seems to be the only place where I could reside with no suffering, which is why Uliana's sudden visit didn't please me at all. How was she? Did you get scold? No, I wouldn't, somehow. That's great then. I always get lucky. That's for sure. My eyes began closing despite my will. It seems that slumber has finally come up on me. Look, I'm very tired. This won't take long. Close your eyes. It was the uh, easiest thing to do, and I didn't even want to know what she needed it for, maybe that way she would leave me alone sooner. The nurse? Well, there must be something about the nurse. In true ending, of course. But I don't know what is it. I close my eyes. Oh, what's the heck again? And in that moment, I felt a brief kiss. My eyes opened by themselves, but Uliana was already running away, waving her hand to me. I stood still, 
benumbed and I couldn't even manage to shout anything after her. I don't know for how long I stood like that, but eventually the night chill cleared my stupor. I shivered and went back to bed. This time I didn't want to sleep, I wanted to think it all through, but my eyes, which had begun to close as I was standing before Uliana, seemed to issue a command to the rest of the body, and I fell asleep before I released what happened. Come on, let it be next day. I want to sleep myself. Yeah, day number six. Two more days. An epilogue, of course. I can't say that my morning was good. Instead, I woke up absolutely broken. The room was filled with the bright sunlight. Outside the window, birds were light hardly chirping. Ooh. I rapidly dragged myself into a sitting position and stretched. I slowly started to recall the events of the previous day. A trip, a smile ghost game, Uniana falling asleep and... And what? A kiss? Of course. A kiss. I blushed immediately. It was so surprising that I had been knocked out of reality for a while. The main problem is how should I treat you now? At first glance nothing special had happened, but... Besides she has... Uh, she's the last girl on the whole camp, from which one would expect such actions. She seems to me at best to be a little sister, nothing more. But for her, apparently, I was more than a big brother. Though so perhaps I just mentioned all that and there was no hidden meanings, deep motives or allusions to far-reaching conclusions in this his. Just an expression of gratitude? Liana is definitely capable of extraordinary deeds and could easily turn sm simple things into complicated ones. Finally decided to put off the matter till the time I could meet her face to face. The clock showed 11. Meaning Olga Mitterna didn't wake me up for breakfast. However, I shouldn't worry, there wasn't much time left till lunch. I took my bag of washing accessories and went to do my water procedures. I didn't meet anybody, well, a second, I didn't meet anybody on the way. Probably all the pioneers are busy with their own things. The place near the basins was deserted too. Just five minutes later, I again stood in front of the camp leader's cabin, thinking of what to do next. Nothing worthwhile having come to my head. I sat in the deck chair and possibly could have stayed there until lunch, but I was drawn from the, my trance by familiar voice. Hi. I looked up and saw Slavia, who was smiling at me sweetly. Hi. You overslept again? Seems like it. That's no good. Perhaps, and where are you going? Actually, I was not really interested in Slavia's agenda for the day, but I wanted to keep this conversation going. Well, we got some things to do. I see. Silence followed. She was about to leave when suddenly I see it. Mind sitting on with me for a while? Sure, why not? Slavia sat nearby. Something worrying you, isn't it? No, why do you think so? I can read it in your face. She laughed softly. Not really. So probably Slimy was right. Something really was worrying me. Obviously, I worried about last night's events. Listen, uh, do you have any little brothers or sisters? I do. And how do you get along? Pretty well. She smiled widely. And you? No, I don't. Say it after a short pause. So why are you asking? I don't know, I just... Do you always understand them? I try to. Sometimes I just cannot make out what children want. Suddenly I stop for a moment. Slavia doesn't know that I'm actually much older than I look. 
to her I'm still a child myself. Those who are younger. Why? Well, I cannot always understand the motivation of their actions, they often behave illogically. And you as old as them some time ago? She looked at me with surprise. Of course I was. At that moment it seems to me that it had been a very long time ago. And when I look at Oliana at that time turned into a gulf of years. Well, think of yourself at that time. I was different. At least it seems like that to me. If so, good for you. Slyah laughed again. And you? Did you, also, did you also do stupid things? It depends on what age we are talking about. Well, let's say... The age of 14, for instance. Well, different things may happen. She said thoughtfully. Okay, that's nice, but it still doesn't make anything clear. Maybe that's the way it should be. Maybe. Slimy stood up, wished me a good bye and left. I closed my eyes and fell asleep. The sound of the bell calling the parents for lunch woke me up. Also, the sound was quiet. I was coming from far away. My body worked like a clockwork automation. And in due time, I was standing near the door of the canteen. And that's where I met Uliana. Hi there. Huh? Uh, yeah. Already ate. She laughed brightly and ran away. I didn't stop her. After all, I had nothing to say to her. I took a meal and was already heading to my favorite place in the corner when suddenly someone grabbed me by the hand. Sit down right here. Alisa's voice sounded menacing, but at the same time, somehow bleeding. Uh, what happened? I have something to discuss with you, she said with slightly softer tone. Okay, I sat down next to her. So, what's the subject? You were there yesterday, when she played the dumb prank with a bad shit. It was pointless to lie to Alisa. Yeah, I was there. That's... that's... She laughed out loud. Why on earth did you do that? Alisa instantly became serious and gave me a level look. Why don't you ask her? No one asking you now, so you have to talk. I don't know, I rushed. Oh, you better tell me why I didn't become leader react. How should she react? I think you know. I look you skeptically. Well, she just did not release who it was. Well, I must admit, Oregon meeting her detective abilities leave much to be desired. And then? It was you who brought her back last night? No, Shakespearean elves did that. I said mockingly. What's the problem with that? No problem at all. Alisa started at her plate and started to eat with concentration. Also, she ran off to somewhere during the night and came back in that happy mood. And? Don't you know anything about that? Uh, even if I do, why do I care? She gave me an intense case. Well, I do care. I have never thought that she could be concerned about something besides herself. Nothing like that happened if you like to know. <clears throat> no, it's not about that. Alisa replied shortly without looking at me. Oh, it was a better idea to bring up this subject. By the way, what's that like that? What do you mean? What you just said? Uh, what said I just said? I tried to joke around to confuse her. Hey, listen to me. I'm watching you. Oh, some scared. I said Ralty Luke took my tray and left the table. I definitely wasn't afraid of Alisa's words, even though they sounded like a threat. In fact, I was more interested in her concerns for Uliana. Of all the local inhabitants, she was truly the last one you would expect to worry about another person. I walked out of the canteen and into a real furnace. Sun blazed so rustily that nobody could stay under the scorching rays. 
was time to fly to some cool and shady place. And the beach seemed like the best place for this. Oddly enough, the beach was not crowded. Perhaps most of the pioneers were scared of the scorching heat, or maybe they just decided to take a nap after lunch. Then bring my swimming trunks, so I just sat under them and an umbrella and began to watch the swimmers. It was no one. I knew and it was better that way, as I had an opportunity to sit quietly and think. Five and a half days have already passed since my, arri my arrival, and what has changed? There were a couple of unexplained but completely harmless events, but who oh no, it was just a regular piano camp, and this was making me even more frightened. What's going on to happen next? Another day, another week. And what's going to happen after the session's over? I've got nowhere to return to. Maybe in this time I hadn't been born yet. Or even worse. After thinking all this over for a few minutes, I went back to yesterday's evening. Strange, but I worried about it much more than before. On the one hand, I wanted to say something to make the situation clear, but on the other hand, I wanted my enemy meeting with Juliana by all means, afraid of making fool of myself with a wrong word or gesture. I closed my eyes and dozed all off for a while. When I woke up, I saw Lena by my side. How long have you been sitting here? I asked in surprise. Not too long. Strange that she didn't wake me up. By the way, it's the first time when we see her outfit here. Did something happen? I don't know why, but my sixth sense was telling me that she's eager to say something, but doesn't dare. No, what about you? Neither. Are you sure? Of course. I smiled. Then what do you want to talk about? Why would you think I want to talk? Seems like it. No, not really. A long silence ensued. Do you have any little brothers or sisters? No, what about you? I don't. So why would you ask that? Sometimes I think that I don't understand children at all. Me too. Then a space didn't express anything. It's probably got to be like that. What do you mean? How should I treat them again, then? Dread them the way you think it is right. Well, that's the whole idea. I don't know what is right and what is wrong. The more you think about it, the more you'll regret the mistake. Well, that's true, but it doesn't help. I was somewhat surprised by such profound words from Lena. Of course, she said all that with a trace of shyness or modesty and without appropriate openness, but still. You mean that? I should follow the first idea I get off the top of my head. I laughed. As the saying goes, you first thought is the right one. Do you believe that? I don't know. He sat there for some time, then she stood up. Well, I've got to go. Thanks for the conversation. Don't mention it. Then smiled fine. I lay down and started at the burning sun. First thought is right, hmm? And what if my first thought was to kiss her back? By the way, that was the first thought that came to me at that time. I tried to very hard to remember, but nothing worked. Not even scraps of thoughts surfaced in my brain. However, in that situation, I could only follow Lena's advice, since it all happened so suddenly. Then the sun was setting slowly. So I rose and went towards the canteen, as my stomach told me that even the participants in such a fantastic story should have regular meals. Somebody called me at the square. It was electronic. He ran up to me, caught his breath and said, Simeon! Yes, it's probably me. Take it. He handed me some kind of key. And uh, what's this? It's a key to our clubhouse. And why would I want it? Forget me Trina asked me to. Considering that I will not be returning there today. So give it to Shurik. He has his own business. So take it yourself. I can't. Why not? 
Listen, just take it. Why would I need it? And what I'm going to do with it? You'll give it back to me later. Uh, listen. Well, I have to go. Show the key into my hands and run. It's kinda strange. What does it mean? No matter how you look at it, he's definitely strange. However, I didn't pay significant attention to this event and just put the key in my pocket. I go to the canteen even before dinner. Really long, oh, uh, long ending. Seriously, really long. It's 4 a.m. already. Fortunately, it was already open, but no food was being served. I took my favorite seat in the farthest corner and concentrated on playing with that toothpick. Soon I got the feeling that someone was standing next to me. I raised my eyes and spotted Olga Dmitrievna. Hmm. We just stared each other for some time. Do you need something? Finally, I broke my silence. You know, Simeon. Sure, understand everything, but. What? I asked, surprised. Do you think I didn't notice your absence last night? Absence is quite an overstatement. I'd rather say I just went out for a moment. Well, so what? What's the matter? I thought that it was nothing to do, but I was determined to check. The camp's leader expression was apparently headed towards the frown. So, have you checked? I still couldn't understand what she was up to. Yeah, I checked. And you know what? For a true pioneer, it is. It's just unacceptable. It's shameful. It's disgustful. Especially with her. What the heck is they talking about? She flushed it with exertion. I don't even want to hear your pitiful excuses. I have like no idea what she was talking about down on me. So, what happened? Who do you care to explain? And now you got the nerve to play innocent! You! Miss Ulyana! Not all become crystal clear. I've got two things to tell you. First, I started getting steamed up. Nothing of that sort happens there, and I'm the last one who was any relation to this situation. And you think that? Second, I rudely interrupted you. Who told you that? In fact, the answer is obvious. Ulyana would not do that. And if she had decided to once again play a trick on me, she would have done it much earlier. For the time spent here, I began to understand her well. And that leaves only one possible candidate. Mm. Oh, why does it matter? No, no, it does! Would you care to explain your behavior then? Uncle Dmitriana seems to be a little taken aback by my comments. Uh, there's nothing to explain? I quickly caught up and headed to the exit of the canteen. Simeon, wait! I heard the camp leader speak right all behind me. If you act dissimilarly with you, then she is not that confident. So now I have to get things straight with Dvachevska. While her plans hadn't concerned me, or only concerned me indirectly, I could bear it. Just thinking about it, I'd even started to consider you not such a bad person. I met Slavia at the square. Do you know where Alice is? Yes, I do. What's the matter? Just tell me! I was sounded obviously rough, but it seems that she didn't pay it any attention. She says a music club. Slavia was right, and I met Alice near the music club. However, she was accompanied by Miko. Mind explain yourself? You didn't waste time to pleasantries. No, what makes you think so? Alisa gave me a cute smile. Oh, Simeon, hi, how nice of you, Hato. Maybe then three of us can play something, have a new song, and you know, it's funny. I'm sure you'll like it, I promise. Or we can choose something old. Miko interrupted the conversation. Uh, could you? What? She looked at me with a smile of uncomprehended child. From that moment I understood what exactly she had in her mind. Little rabbits, teddy bears, pussy cats, and no sign of intelligence. I need to talk to Alisa. I said in a tone that brooked no disagreement. 
Okay, maybe later. It looked like she was upset. So I didn't care. So I don't stand for the union. Alicia said offended. And anyway, I have to go. She turned around and got ready to leave. What? We have a choice here. Yeah. So we must grab here roughly. I believe. Okay. I brutally grabbed Alisa's wrist. What are you doing? The girl was really frightened. I'm more than sure that Simeon actually didn't get what's actually going on here. I got it wrong. Who told the camp leaders that Oliana came to me at night? I don't know. She pleaded pitilessly. We discussed it this morning, didn't we? She said nothing but continued to look at me with fear in her eyes. And most importantly, What's the purpose of telling a thousand lies? I really don't know what you're talking about. Your eyes filled with tears. Suddenly, I felt as I had been struck by lightning. What if she isn't guilty? And why did I immediately think of her? Anyone else would easily have seen us at night. You never know, even Liana herself could tell anyone. Are you sure? I asked harshly. Yes. I thought for a second, and this time was just enough for Lisa to escape. Now the only true solution is to talk to Olga Dmitrievna again. Oh gosh. Again. I found her on the canting porch. By that time, the sun had nearly disappeared behind the horizon. He came back after all, she began. Olga Dmitrievna, could you tell me honestly, who told you about it? I've just spoken to Dvachevska, it's not her. Lena wouldn't do it herself, so who? In fact, I myself didn't release why I needed to know this. Initially, I was just mad at Alisa, but now? Well, he says she hesitated. Some strange girl. But this still doesn't. A strange girl? Well, yes. Not from our company, it seems. What? That's another one from not our company, and I believe it's related to you all. That's for sure. What did she tell you about this? How should I know? Look at me, you know. But this is. I took a deep breath and turned away. Just why does she give to obviously lie? Also, maybe she's trying to protect somebody? Let's see. Damn, I can't even imagine. Alright. I sat quietly and walked briskly away from the canteen. I had absolutely no desire to continue listening to Olga Mitrina's stupid lies. Our so-called camp leader. I walked endlessly, completely lost in thoughts. Oh, I on guard you soon? <clears throat> I had a cheerful voice from behind. It was Ilyana. Nothing special, just... Seems like there was no chance of finding out who Olga Midian's informant was. And yesterday's incident was hushed up somehow. So I decided not to think about it. What do you have planned for the evening? Uh, nothing, I guess. After all my frantic attempts to uncover the truth, I felt someone inexplicable guilt before Alice and Uliana. What exactly the guilt before Uliana was about? It's completely unclear as so. so they have a suggestion. What is it? I brought a video cassette from home. Your eyes flashed conspiratorially. And I couldn't even remember when the last time I had watched or had something recorded on cassette was. With a cool movie in it. Uh where would you get a VCR in that hell? This world came to me from the past and then decided to test whether my guess is about which time period I had been placed in where right. Cybernetic glove of course. There's nothing there. I said confidently. Actually we saw it, so it's here. What about the back room? She was right. It could be there. Well maybe. But anyway, it's too late and everything is closed. The strange feeling of guilt I felt in front of Uliana wasn't giving me a chance to refuse immediately. 
He didn't get in there, so the window. She grins mischievously. Well, you know, maybe you're right. Wish we could get a key. What? Mused Lena. But I had one. In my pocket. And I just remembered about it. Now that you mention it, yes, I've got a key. Next time I'll better think before I speak. That's good. Then I'll quickly run to get the tape and wait here and you wait here and I'll be right back. She disappeared before I could even open my mouth. It's strange that she wasn't surprised that the key to the community club mysteriously happened to be in my pocket at the right place and time. But in any case, I have to decide what to do next. The most right and logical sense would be not to go anywhere with her. But my guilt got to me. So it seems to me that there could be nothing criminal in watching a movie with her. But on the other hand, with Juliana even the most harmless things can turn into cheating circus. At the very least. I was already starting to forget about what happened this evening, but my frantic attempts to get the truth from Alisa and Olga Midiona. In just a couple of minutes, she returned. Having second thoughts, I looked at Eliana and felt a bit uncomfortable. Are we going? Listen, you know your ideas are, let's say, not entirely safe. And in the end, everything will end badly again. Are you scared? No, I'm not. I'm just a grown man and I'm not interested in such games. Grown man? She laughed. Indeed, I forgot that I look 17 in the past. What makes you think so? It's really hard to accept, but I had nothing to say to that. Thinking about it, the whole time I spent here, I never displayed any particular worst thought. No life experience, no cold, balance, assessment of the situation. Though the other question is, did they ever show those and in that life? In a and in fact, even if I think, I would recall some examples of course, but... Okay, uh, let's go. I was so offended by Uliana's words that I asked. And what is a grown man in your opinion? One who is responsible for his actions, one who does not do anything without thinking about the consequences, person who is capable of taking good care not only of himself, but also of others. That's definitely not me. And all that doesn't describe you, that's for sure. I tried to laugh it off. I'm not pretending to be like that anyway. Jeans Uliana. Yes, she was absolutely right. By the way, what will be the movie? Freddy Krueger? I do not possess any of those qualities, but I always thought that not being 17 is all that's required. Seems that in general there's no difference between me and other people, and if I wish to I could be exactly like they are. Is it all wrong? In fact, no, because in this camp I try to behave in a most logical, sensible and proper way. Like an adult. But if even Uliana says differently, there used to be good movies about plumbers. <laughs> well, it could be a second son, but I doubt that she will bring it from home. Then how can I get out of here? We went in, it took some time for Liana to find the light switch. Presto! Well done, brother. I exaggerately clapped my hands. Hey, stop making fun of me, she pouted. Okay, what's next? Here. Yeah. Liana went up to the door to the second room, hesitated for a moment, and pushed it open. There wasn't much space inside, seems more like the room was used for storage. Boxes built on top of each other had formed some sort of alps of in miniature. Various devices scattered here and there reminded me of the chaotic brainstorm raging in the head of a scientist. Bookshelves on the far wall made it clear that this was not a simple storage for unused junk. To my right there was a TV set with a video player sitting next to it. Interestingly, they were not Soviet. I bet they were Japanese. At least going by their appearance. But 
very surprising in those days, or more actually for me, these days. Imports already existed. What did I tell you? Liana smiled too importantly. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen anything like that before? I have. Perhaps I've got to VCR too. Probably it's lying somewhere in the mezzanine in my house. Seems like you're not surprised at all. Oh, why should I be surprised? A Japanese TV set, a video player. You look like you often see such things. Hmm, not too often lately. Agreed Leslie. You're so gloomy. Nevertheless, okay, take it. She handed me a cassette. I turned it over in my hands, but didn't find any sticker or labels on it. So, what's on it? I don't know. She doesn't know? Maybe you're right, anybody now. Maybe you're right. Not that Eliana, but I'm sure it's something very interesting. Soon the logo of a well known American film company appeared on the screen. Here, here, watch! Eliana, okay, so it's. If it's a well known logo, so it's something not like this. Eliana even started fidgeting impatiently. I'm watching. A few minutes later. Release it. Terminator? It will be copyrighted, that's for sure. A few minutes later, I released that the tape contains a famous film from the 80s. It was about a robot from the future, sent to kill someone in the past, so on the yes in between, a hero wouldn't be born. Interesting coincidence. You could say I was sent from the future too. So what? My mission is to kill someone from among the local residents? I could not help laughing. What's so funny? Rihanna well, looked at me reproachfully. Uh, no, nothing. Seems as if you don't like the movie. The movie is alright. I've seen it several times. How can that be? Your eyes wide it in surprise. Well, my friend gave me a cassette. Hmm. Rihanna stared intently on me. Anyway, keep watching. I put it on the screen. When the film was about halfway through, I had someone trying to open the front door. It is said that when a person has one of their senses weakened, the others are amplified. I was quite blind but could hear perfectly. Lights off, I whispered. What? Turn off the lights! I realized that this wasn't the time to argue with me and rushed to the switch. Meanwhile, I pressed the pause button. By the way, by the way, if somebody spotted the light and tried to knock on the door, if you turn off the light, you actually uh, will expose yourself that somebody is inside. So if you left it on, they will think that maybe somebody forgot or something and left, right? So don't turn off the light. When I press the pause button, I heard footsteps in the other room and saw flashlight flicking under the floor. Oh yeah, there's no no window, I see. The window is blocked here. So okay, okay then. Turn off the light. I wonder who decided to sneak into the cybernetic club at night. One second. They're not here. Olga Dmitrievna! It was the voice of Olga Dmitrievna. Soon the front door slammed shut. I sighed with relief. See that? Again, is it because of you? What? Liana stared at me in surprise. Why else would she come here at night? She's definitely searching for us. Alicia likely doesn't care about your absence, but I'm registered at the camp leader's cabin. She thought for a while. Uh, well? So what? So what? Why are you constantly looking for trouble? It's almost as if you like it. It's more fun this way. Is it fun when you constantly scold and punished? Nothing mentioned, nothing gained. She laughed merrily. Eventually, there are also rules. Well, up until now, you have awaited serious consequences. But who knows what could happen next? Could all end badly? You grumble like a granny. 
She said I find it. And who said recently that I could not be called an adult? Forget it. Let's finish the movie. I decided not to argue with her. In the end, we are already on organ maintenance list, and an hour later, an hour earlier, does it really matter? This scary scene, Ulyana jumped, screamed, and grabbed me by the hands. I was not so keen on the film, but still pretended that I was also interested. Apart from the evil robot, there was a good man sent from the future to prevent his evil deeds. Maybe I am not here with the goal of becoming a rustless killing machine, but on the contrary, to change or prevent something. Hmm. To prevent some event, for example, or to stop someone from some wrongdoing. An analogy of very interesting, but it's not based on any real facts. I don't have a shotgun in my hands. I'm not wearing a leather jacket and I haven't got a motorcycle to ride. I don't even have sunglasses. Look, look! The next chase with shooting and destruction of various types of wheeled and propelled vehicles was unfolding on the screen. Do you think the good wife will win? Of course I knew the answer. Obviously. Good always trumps. She said seriously. If we consider that Uliana often succeeds in her silly adventures, the meaning of the word good gets seriously twisted. Wait, but you already watched it? Yeah, I just wanted to know your opinion. Soon the film came to an end. During the final scenes, Uliana ran around the room, trying to get a better view of everything happening on the screen without missing anything. Hmm. She gasped with relief when the ending credits started. Like it? You need to ask? Of course! That's good. And I can see you didn't really. She squinted smiling. Well, it's a film for kids after all. Uh, really? Well, yeah, so what? Nothing. She yawned and sat on the floor with her back against the pile of boxes. It's probably a time to go to sleep. I'm tired and I won't go anywhere. As you wish. I'll better go then. Hey, wait! Ulyana immediately jumped up and grabbed me by the hand. You will leave me here all alone? Well, if you want, I should. Should I carry you to your cabin? I said uncertainly. At the end, I was already experienced at that. No, I want to sleep here. She rummaged in the box next to her and pulled out some sort of blankets and pillows. Again, the same story. I sighed. Just think, Olga Bidiona is already looking for us, and if we spend all night here... Well, first thing, she's looking for you. That has nothing to do with me. Laughed Uliana. You know, that's so. Then you'll be caught too. What makes you say that? And even if I do get caught, that's okay. I'm used to it. Why are you so stubborn? It's only a couple of hundred meters to you, cabin. As well as that, you couldn't say that Uliana was completely exhausted. I'm so tired. She wrapped herself in the blankets, turned away from me, and began to delightfully fake loud snores. Okay, then. See you tomorrow. Tried to leave, but Uliana grabbed my hand again. Well, now what? She didn't say anything. She looked as if I'd scared her. Why right then? What I should do was completely unclear. Our little cussed and when she was idiotic from the beginning, but now it was beyond my comprehension. I had no idea what the logic behind your actions was, what the meaning and motivation was. However, despite all this, I couldn't firmly say no. Something stopped me. Maybe a sense of duty or pity of the patience which must be shown when communicating with children. Okay, what do you want from me? Go to sleep with me. Seems like I've seen it somewhere already. Well, uh, let's assume. I turned off the light and nested beside him. Good thing it was summertime, otherwise sleeping on the wooden floor would not be the best idea. The lack of a mattress is not even a worth mentioning. So, did you agree so easily? Could hear resentment in your voice. You asked, so I did. 
In fact, I was completely convinced that Juliana will fall asleep quickly as always and I will carry her to her cabin. Basically, it's a good plan despite the fact that I will again serve as a beast of pardon. Hey, talk to me. Just sleep, you are the one who wanted to. Just talk. About what? Tell me something interesting about yourself, funny stories from your life. My life is not that action packed. Nothing to recall at all? Even if I had something, telling you was not the best idea. Nothing at all. It can't be that bad. I turned to Liana. She was lying with her eyes wide open, staring at the ceiling. It can? Trust me. But it's so boring. From time to time, she was silent for a while, and then smiled and said, But here you had fun? Oh, that's true. I laughed. Will you remember this camp? First I need to get out of here. Of course I will. And the others? I will. And me. And you. I said it always and obviously. Even though, and to be honest, without really thinking about the meaning of your questions. And I will. Miss Persiliano. Immediately I felt her head drop in my chest and her hand dropping around my neck. Comfortable? Yeah, she murmured. You haven't found a better place? She looked her head slightly. Well, let her lie like that. In the end, maybe she'll fall asleep faster. Probably no more than five minutes passed before I decided to check on her and lightly tug it on her shoulder. What? She asked without looking up. I noticed an unusual note in her voice. Why aren't you sleeping? Look who's talking. Time was passing treacherously slowly. I decided to wait at least another 10 minutes before the next time I checked. The seconds seems to be hours. My eyes began to slowly close. I struggled to stay awake. I blinked for a moment and woke up only to realize that my state was close to unconsciousness. Maybe you just close your eyes for a minute? What's so terrible about it? The sun flashed through my head. Immediately I drift off. The last day? Finally? Yeah. Oh gosh. Soon it will be 5 am. I'm still streaming this. There are probably worse things in life than falling asleep while being cuddled by a little girl. And now the door opens and our men leap towards us. What the heck? I can't make, it, make out what they're screaming, but their intentions are clearly far from good. Now, I'm not scared at all. Rather, I'm burst or even ashamed. When I opened my eyes, it took me some time to release where exactly I was. It was dark in here. Only a dim light was gleaming under the door. Why do they make storage rooms without windows? No, actually, it's same window. Maybe, maybe it's not a window. I don't know. Also, obviously, that's the way it should be, but why else would anyone bring a TV set and a visor in there then? I caught the architects of this building in my mind and shook Eliana by her shoulders. Come on, get up now. She scratched and stretched. And as we were lying together, I could see her sleepy eyes even in the dark. Oh, let me sleep. Liana tried to turn away, but I firmly grabbed her shoulder with my hand. I don't know what time is it, but regardless, it would be smart for us to get out of here. Not now, later. She whispered half asleep. I said, wake up, come on. I jumped up and easily pulled her to her feet. <sighs> More to Liana, this frustration in her voice. I started to look for the light switch, but then suddenly I had footsteps outside the door. My heart sunk. Why so early? We have a truckload of work to do, no time to waste. We know that we have to do it all before the departure. Alright, fine. Wait a second, who's talking, Hito? Oh, Shurik. And what's they trying to do? Looks like 
our two armed cybernetics, a plane visit to the clubhouse before the break of dawn today. Shush, I whispered to Liana. And what's that? She didn't manage to finish her sentence as I silence her with my hand. Well, I understand that all that, but we might at least have waited until after breakfast. Oh, do you have something else to do? Not really. I had some hesitation in Trunk's voice. Sure you don't want to head off to the library bright and early again? It is the slightest intention, he replied frightfully. Oh yeah, sure, if you say so. Soon the world kicked off behind the door, I could hear hammer strikes, machines read an electronics buzzer. Electronic and Shurik were discussing their own matters, so I wasn't paying much attention. I was more interested in knowing when they finally leave the building. Rather soon, breakfast time is coming. But if you take Shurik's patient into consideration... Let go of me. Liana finally rested her way out, but didn't raise her voice after all. Why can't we just leave? She asked under the breath. And what do you think? It's all fine? Well, that's the problem? Well, we have spent the whole night here, together, and it's obviously what they assume, considering that I've taken the precautions of closing the door. So? What do you mean, so? I tightly sighed. Just trust me, I know that it doesn't matter to you, but it does to me. Okay, fine. He'll keep hiding him, agreed to Liana recently. I was prepared to wait for a long time if necessary, but barely a couple of minutes after the front door opened and somebody came in. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Morning. It was Slavia. I just wanted to ask if you happen to have any sticky tape? We do, somewhere. Somewhere here in the storage, replied Shurik thoughtfully. Oh, take a look in the back room. These words gave me goosebumps, and I grabbed the door handle in a strange hold. Slimy approached the door from the opposite side and tried to pull it open, but I was straining against the door with all my strength. It's locked. It can't be, we never locked that room. Let me try. Should have yanked the door handle, but nothing happened. Also, it took a lot of effort on me to hold it steady. <laughs> oh, it's stuck. Give me a hand here. In a few moments, they were trying to open the door together with electronic. I grabbed the handle as if my whole life was dependent on it, but regardless, this was a short struggle. My hands quickly gave out and I let go. The door slammed open and the bright sunlight blinded me, so I could see, couldn't see the startled faces of Shurik, Electronic, and Slavia for the first few seconds. Mm-hmm, good morning. It's definitely morning here. Morning? I mean, can't yeah, really lie. Liana was standing behind me so that I couldn't see her, but I could feel the embarrassment in her voice. And what are you doing here? Asked Short almost as if he wasn't surprised. Oh well, to tell you the truth, we were watching a movie. Liana brought a tape and you have a VCR here. Shurik distractfully stared into the depths of the background. I gave Liana a nudge in the side until she got the message and displayed the tape. And what's that movie? A barely visible green cross electronic space. Just a regular film, a thriller, the latest thriller? Then I mentioned that he and us were singing right now and I was all held with rage. Do you send me nothing like that? Mmm, it's all her fault, of course. One of my finger was Liana. She looked at me, strictly, in turn. Nobody accusing you of anything, said to Slavia without looking at me. At least there's one sensible person among all presents here. Yet, she added under her breath. What? Everything was exactly as he told you. Uliana joined the conversation. We were just watching a film and then felt sleepy. It was too so late. We didn't think anything. Just stupid situation. Come on, enough. Electronic tried to put it off. We suggest. 
a single condition of your being to judge him. What? Slavi sent me in cool ways. Hey, wait. Why takes this so. Uh, this to the chan. Uh, camp leader? Gosh, I cannot read anyway. It's too. actually, too late for me. 5 a.m., I can't believe. Who else? But you see, we're telling the truth. I'm not the ones to judge. Damn it, then who? You have seen everything with your own eyes. That's what the camp leader decided. Slimy said quietly and turned to go. Just wait! I peered before the door in a single bound and blocked away. Listen, this is none of my business. Slimy was trying to avoid my gaze. Seems like she's also uncomfortable about this situation. I'm just obligated to. Who am I obligated to? Why do you need to do this? Because she was unable to find the words to finish. So, so you don't have to go anyway. You don't have to tell anyone anything. No, she said nervously, but then wise your head and gave me an intense gaze. I'm sorry, Simeon. Just leave you. Let you go. I turned my head to Liana. This fraction of a second was enough for Slavia to slip out of the clubhouse. Wait, just wait! I yelled at her as she ran, but it had no effect. Pursuing Slavia in a futile attempt to prevent her from going to the camp leader made no sense. If she intends to, I can't exactly tie her up. She can't prove anything anyway. Juliana chuckled. Who cares whether she can prove anything or not? Don't you understand your position in all of this? In any situation you've involved in your guilt is a foregone conclusion. Moreover, in a case like this, well, we are responsible to guess them. She smirked tragically. Exactly. I left the building and sent on the stairs. Well, we'll be on your side. Just in case, right, Sherik? I think so, I don't clearly understand what happened here, but presumably nothing that worrying. Okay, we are going for breakfast. Soon we lost sight of them. Let's go and eat as well, Uliana said cheerfully. What is all you think about? Why was I crying? What will I change? She was right about that at least. We just have to wait for the camp leader's decision. Let's just go. Let's again, this is the last day, right? We headed to the canteen. All the camp had gathered for breakfast except Olga Milena and Slavia. It might be for the best, I guess. What are you thinking about? Liana asked me cheerfully when we took our foot and said, The same thing? Come on, stop worrying about nothing. Maybe it's nothing for you. Oh, really? <clears throat> what's, what's precisely bad about it? One second. Every situation can be interpreted with second interpreted <laughs> come on from different angles and especially if you have a reason. Come on, what's the words that can happen? You know our camp leader, she's a bit eccentric. Ex well, maybe so, but we didn't do anything like that. Anything at all. I hope she believes it too. My relationship with Juliana had improved dramatically lately. At first I only saw his, uh, her as a nightly, ill-mannered child, but now I started to see the good sides of her character. Also, there went too many. And now, just when everything was starting to work out, a hard conversation with the camp leader loomed ahead. Maybe I just dreamed everything that happened and Slavia's reaction this morning was just caused by surprise. Enjoying your meal? Olga Dmitrievna was hanging on me. She looked at me menacingly. Yes. Would you mind explaining your behavior? Mind explaining what? Well, for example, how you happen to be in the Cybernetic Club utility room? Where do you get the key? What were you even doing there? Recall the circumstances in which I obtained this cursed key. I should speak to the Trank about that. If Slavia told you, our version. You were watching a film. Uliana claimed seriously. The whole night? The camp leader asked sarcastically. 
The NFL just fell asleep and Simeon stayed with me. And so, there was no chance for you to go to your cabins? Not even a team one. And what are you going to say? Well, it sounds really stupid, but she's right. You expect me to believe that? Well, it's the truth. Can't really accuse you for anything. The completer started slowly. But on the other hand, this entire situation is beyond normal. Pioneers must not behave this way. And there's too many inconsistencies in your story. You get it. I agree. But realistically, I will do the following. Juliana, you are on detention. You'll be confined to your cabin. And I will decide what to do with you later. I look at it, Juliana attentively. Contrary to my expectation, she didn't look upset. Clearly, I do not think this is your fault, but to be fair. Great, you know where to find me in case you need it. She stood up instantly and headed to the exit. Olga Dmitrina didn't try to stop her. There's always too much trouble with her, and she good got you into all this. I didn't really get what she got me into, and you seem to be harsh on her. Show me another player like you. The camp leader laughed. When she received detentions for misbehaviors, it's another story, but here. Actually, I don't really understand what was indeed going on, but my duty is to look after your moral character. And this situation is suspicious. Highly suspicious. And how long are you going to keep you imprisoned? I don't know. Look at me till now. Hundreds for some time. Today is the top departure. But in these circumstances. Uh, what? What departure? I jump at the word. The term is end of the day. This is the last day? Uh, what? It was the only response I could squeeze out. The last day? Meaning? I'll be finally able to leave this damn camp. Maybe it's time for me, for my suffering to end, and I'll get back to my ordinary reality. But why so suddenly? Sudden for who? I talk about it in the lineup. She has a point. As the lineups, I was usually sleeping or looking around and didn't really listen to the announcements. And at what time? At about 5 o'clock. Don't forget to get ready. Hardly have anything to work. She stood up, took a train, and was going to leave. So, what's going to happen to Eliana? I don't know yet. I told you. She will probably leave later. How's it? Not with everyone? Well, yes. Is it normal? I was truly surprised. What's wrong with it? I don't know about wrong, but it's quite strange for sure. Well, I still have work to do. I dug aimlessly at my orange, which had gone cold long ago. Departure. The possibility of getting out of here. But on the other hand, Uliana? I myself felt guilty before her. In the end, she was penalized while I, at the same time, wasn't. That's not fair. No, it's not like I wanted to share her misery, but I don't think that it's fair that she sits there locked up. Well, there's still some time before leaving. Should be quite enough to make the situation clearer. Yes, I decided to talk to Miss Slavia. I hope she has calmed down. I'd gotten used to finding Slavia at the square, so I went there without any doubts. Why exactly is there? Because in this camp, I predominantly met her there. But there wasn't a single soul near Gander's heaven. I stood there for a while, looking at monuments, and then headed to the library. It makes sense that Jenny could know where her neighbor is right now. After knocking at the door, recalling my previous experience, this was not a useless mannerism. I went in. Jenia distracted herself from her book and looked closely at me. What do you want? Uh, what's wrong? Why do you act like that? I can't even come in. What? You came here for no reason? I doubt you wanted to read something. Well, no. 
The classics of Marxist Leninists weren't my favorite literature. I wanted to know where Slavia is. Why do you want to know? She said that as if she was sure that the conversation is over, and thus she proceeded with her reading. Well, since I'm asking clearly, I need to know. Should be an on the pier. Jenny answered indifferently. Thanks. Learning what I wanted to know, I hurried out of this stronghold of malice. As Jenny has a tough spirit, at least I have issues understanding her. On the pier some pioneers were pulling boats into docks, while others were running around with oars and ropes. After looking closely, I noticed Slavia, who sat quite far away near the water. Cleaning up? I asked the most natural questions that came in my mind. Yep. She answered without turning. Listen, I... Wanna talk about Eliana? Well, yeah. Honestly speaking, I had no idea what to talk about. Slavia found us in the storage room, got it wrong, and told everything to the camp leader. Now it's not your concert anymore, if you think about it. On the other hand, it would be a waste of time to talk to Alcott Mickey and I now. I just subconsciously wanted to understand Slavia's reasoning, to be able to absorb your somehow. So, what do you want to say? Well, Uliana got punished. Maybe she won't even live with us. No wonder. I just wanted to explain to you that nothing special happens there. Because speaking, I don't know. I just had to report everything. So you did. Did it leave anyone better off? I murmured to myself. Of course, I'm not sure that this was right. She said conf confused. Well, that's what's done is done. Do you think it's possible to get Uliana freed from our house arrest? You're worrying about her so much. Slime finally looked at me and smiled. Not about you, about justice. While I was a bit confused, I found the right answer. Well, you know our camp leader. I do, that's for sure. Just wait, she'll calm down on my chin. Yes, I guess that was the best decision. Mm, yes, you're right. I stood to her in silence for some time. Slavia didn't seem eager to keep on talking. Still, there was some sense of incompleteness, but faced with the idea of this uncomfortable situation lasting for several hours, I decided not to be bothered. Okay, I'll go then. See you? She smiled. In the middle of the square, I stopped to think. There's still a lot of time till the departure, and I have nothing to do. Just yesterday, when it seems like I was stuck here forever and had lots of time, even though there was actually very little, I felt a need to sing and act faster. But now, what I've got only 5 hours left till I leave this camp forever, I have not a slightest idea on how to spend them. I decided to visit Uliana. After all, even if she isn't allowed to leave her cabin, this doesn't mean I cannot pay her a visit. I knocked gently. You're not welcome here. An angry voice sounded from behind the door. I pulled on the handle and entered. Hail, prisoner. Oh, it's you. Rihanna said disappointedly. And what? Am I the only one who isn't welcome here? I tried to smile. Why did you come? Well, I thought that you'd be bored here all along. I'm fine. I was Elisa. As you can see, not here. Come on, you... Why are you so angry? In the morning you were in a much better mood. Angry? Me? Not me, that's for sure. You have nothing else to do, so you came here, right? Yeah, my bad. I sighed theatrically and hung my head. Well, sit down then. I sat on the opposite bed. So, tell me something. Let's come up with a way to prove to Olga Dmitrievna that we did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. Liana corrected me. You seem to have nothing to do with it. Okay, I'll let it be. But why? A tricky question. It feels like we have swapped our roles. I was suggesting a stupid plan while she was a voice of reason. Well, because we did nothing wrong. 
it's a matter with you anymore, anyhow. I'll just stay grounded for a couple of hours and that's it. I have to depart soon anyway. She flopped down the bed and started at the ceiling. Well, sure, but... I tried hard to cheer her up, but it sounds like I haven't succeeded so far. Want to do something, maybe? It's lunchtime already. I took a glance at my watch. Yeah, right. Here's a job for you. Since I mustn't go out, go and bring me something to eat. Sir, yes sir. I saw with you and hurried out to the cabin. Recently I started to think that finally something has clicked on Ulyana's head. Maybe the punishment had an effort with you, or possibly it was something else. And my attitude towards you was changed, has changed. Your wrongdoing used to make me feel nothing but irritation, but now there was some I was also understanding and a shot of sympathy. After all, I used to be a child too. Because if one explained to her what is right and what is not, she might be able to avoid many mistakes. Wait a second, this notification said Dear Pi is playing something. <laughs> Very funny. In the canteen, I had an argument with the cook who refused to give me a double serving. However, Everyone in the camp already knew about Ulyana being grounded, so eventually my powers of persuas persuasion won out over theatre standards. So I was sitting at Ulyana's cabin and tucking away meatballs with potatoes. Just like a last meal. What are you talking about? Well, every death or all prisoner has a right to make a last wish. Thus, my last wish is a lunch like this. Hmm, to my surprise, the food was really delicious. What about what would you wish me? Well, to not be executed, of course. She laughed. You can't? Why? If you can wish for anything? Well, you can, but within certain limits. That means it's not anything. Well, okay, then it's not anything. Then that's not interesting. Well, I believe being a death row prisoner is hardly meant to be interesting in the first place. I went through my teeth. I wouldn't know I never went through that experience. But if you think about it, that's almost my situation. This camp is my cell. For several more hours I'll stay under arrest and then I'll face uncertainty, just like I would after this. The only difference is that I had more options. If I wanted to attend lineup, then I do so. If not, then I didn't. What are you going to do next? What do you mean? Well, after the camp. She looked at me in surprise. Back to school, of course. Yes, only for me, leaving this place is kind of like crossing a barrier, a frontier, the end of something and beginning of something new. Right? Something else. A year ago, it was terribly hard for me to realize that I've been pulled out of my usual world and brought to God knows where. But then I got used to it. And here we go again. Basically, the only difference is that now I face not a sense of fear or horror, but a blunt, sinking feeling of uncertainty. And you? I Well, I find something to do. Something? She brought some pearls of water. Yeah, what's the matter? You should have gone to circus school to be a clown. Why? One can help laughing when looking at you. But why? You're always like some kind of a martyr, a new messiah for all the Russians. Well, there was quite a bit of truth in her words. I have my reasons. I mumbled and turned my way at the window. Uh, what reasons? Various. Wait the window. Oh, why are you so curious? Have you forgotten that I am a child? She grinned darkly. Well, half an hour with you is like a terrible torture for me. Look what who's talking. You're just one really nasty tempered person. That makes you think so? You're always deep in soul searching, trying to find out something, analyzing everyone around you. Have Liliana an amazed look? Yeah. I would never have expected such a little girl to be capable of much of such major judgment. Gosh. And that's it. 
at the very least, I know how to behave myself, and I don't end up grounded. It's a matter of chance. She grinned. Yeah, sure. If last night... She stopped it short. Last night... what? Nothing. No, finish what you started. She just opened her mouth when steps were heard behind the doors, and a second later, Olga Dmitrievna entered the room. Again. Oh, there you are. That's even better. She seems confused and lost for words. Well, I consider this morning's incident. It's not like it became much clearer, but it doesn't look like a big deal. So, Liana, you're officially not grounded anymore. If only you did that right from the start, I muttered. Will you say something? No, nothing. The party is coming. Time to pack your stuff. Saying that, she left the cabin. Now you see how it all turned out. Yeah, I said. Are you going to pack? Yeah, I guess so. And you? Yeah, I'm going to pack my stuff too. She didn't reply, so I left the cabin. Well, it looks like my last mission in this camp is complete. Uliana's sentence was overturned after all. The only thing left for me is to leave this place and get ready for something new. Oh gosh, finally it's ending, right? I don't understand why this is a bad ending, but okay. I swept my eyes around the rooms as I entered the camp leader's cabin. Do you have anything to pack anyway? I stuffed my winter clothes into a bag and took a seat on the bed. I was haunted by an agonizing feeling of incompleteness. Is a deja vu, a feeling that I forgot something but still can't remember what it was exactly. <laughs> 10 hours. When all is said and done, I haven't managed to find any answers here, and now I have to continue my quest elsewhere. Does it really matter how and why I came here if it's not possible to escape? And it seems that nothing's up to me anyway. Everything seems simpler before. She had no major prospects. My perspectives were hardly mind-blowing, but at least everything was pretty much clear. Yet the week I've spent here raised more issues than my whole previous life. The clock struck 5 o'clock. I took the bag and walked quickly to the bus stop, worried they might leave without me. It appeared that the bus was already waiting there, as were all the pioneers. Everyone's here. Lena Oliver Dmitrievna, you're leaving your... So really here? For example, I cannot see Ulyana on this picture. You're leaving our camp today and like to tell you something... Pardon him. She was visibly nervous and desperately lost for words. I hope that you'll remember the time you spent here for a lifetime and that you'll retain only pleasant memories about Savionok. So hope that you became at least a little bit better and managed to learn something and found new friends. Just come back next year. The camp leader turned around. It seems that she was trying to hold back the few tears. I didn't expect her to get so emotional. Also, her speech sounded like a complete nonsense, as usual. The piano slowly started to get on the bus. I ran an hour over the ground looking for Uliana. Where's Uliana? She won't be going. What the heck? The leader answered shortly. How? Why? She's grounded. But you said... She said it again. Uh, what do you mean? Hey, get inside, or they living without you. Indeed, I was the last man standing outside. Oh, wait a second. Move it! She nudged me into the bus. I decided not to argue. At the end, I can't be held responsible for her forever. Here we go again. If she's going to be so stubborn, then it's up to her to fade the consequences. Okay, now I see why it's better. I took the last seat. There was no partner for me, which I was fine with at that moment. However, soon enough, Alisa moved to sit next to me. Where's Uliana? Stayed. Why? Grounded. I gave one world replies, showing no interest in conversation. Why? I don't know. 
And what? You haven't even tried to find out? Is it worth staying back for? You should! For what? If you want to stay? If you want, you can stay. We haven't gone the car. Yeah, yeah. She said calmly and went off to her place. Slavia and Jenya were sitting in front seats and talking with enthusiasm about something. Lena, Miku, Shurik, Electronic were sitting closer to me and playing cards. Alisa and some other girls were looking through a magazine. Probably I was the only one who had nothing much to do. By the way, picture kind of different. Well, it's not night time. I caught myself thinking that I still felt a bit guilty about what happened to Ilyana. But what could I do? <clears throat> if I'd stay together with him, I'd probably miss my only chance to live. And my position playing such games could prove portal. And apart from that, enough is enough. Yet still I couldn't stop thinking about her. That is that I'm at fault, that I've acted cowardly, done a bad thing, that anyone in my shoes would have. But why? Anyway, who is she to me? That I need to take risks for her sake? It was even harder to answer this question. During the week I spent here, I got to know her and others quite well. In the end, I felt responsible for Yana in some way. But what's the point of thinking about it now? I'm leaving the prisoner of camp. <laughs> prisoner camp. Pioneer camp, of course. I'm heading into the unknown. Starting from this moment, I have to make all my decisions based on the assimilation. As this wood world is alien to me and most probably hostile. And I have no one to rely on. Also, thinking about it, such state of affairs isn't too new for me. I was always alone in the past. Sabionic has been left far behind me. Night has fallen on this strange world. It was so dark that it seems the bus was falling across a blush black ocean, and only sometimes would gloomy forests and fields reaching to the horizon rise like waves from its surface. Anyway, surroundings were the least of my concerns now. It was needed in my reflection. It feels to me like I've felt some unfinished business back at the camp. Even so, I can't go back there now. Bad things, good things, everything will be forgotten soon. Even only the fact of my appearance here, the end of my life, old life, and the beginning of the new one. No water. Uh, practically speaking, it's nothing fancy, just an 80s pioneer camp that I was being beamed to from my own time. Seriously, 80s. In any case, I'd rather worry about what's waiting for me at that time we headed for. I didn't get that. Okay. After all, I've got nowhere to return to. I have no home, no money, no friends or well relatives. All these pioneers, it's all part ways with a few hours. I won't see any of them ever again. And them? I don't think that they will remember me in a couple of years. It's not a big deal for them. To them, I'm not the time traveler, but a common boy, their pearl. The road seems endless. Most of the pioneers were long asleep, yet I was still fighting the urge to take a nap. It's always better to enter the unknown while remaining awake. So the unknown always has an edge in this battle. The flow of time that it's able to control as it sees fit. You wait for a minute, and uh, you wait a minute, an hour, but nothing happens. You nervous or really strung out to the limits and then surrender to the stress and you just fall asleep. Oh, finally. <clears throat> uh, epilogue. So, what will he decide about his life? I don't think that's anything good. It felt like I hadn't slept at all. It happens all the time. Just close your eyes and fall asleep. The hour hand makes several turns, 
the morning comes and you wake up, but it feels like you just blink. I yawned so wide that I almost broke my jaw and jumped out because of the pain. Something was wrong. So, not something, everything was wrong. I was back in my apartment. What? But how can that be possible? I began to panic and I started to run around my room in the hope of calming myself down. Physical tiredness can often overcome an emotional one. My head was empty, feeling and terror took over my whole being and some kind of a song was floating in my mind, maybe a prayer or maybe just an incoherent jumble of sound thoughts designed, if not to calm me down, then at least to distract me from my panic. It was about half an hour before I collapsed on the floor, exhausted, and fixed my eyes on the ceiling. It seems like I had not gone anywhere. The old chandelier who looked down at me unkindly with his dusty lumps, the cracks in the plaster were in the same places, and the unstuck wallpaper hadn't slipped down even a little. Was it really a dream? But it can't be. It just can't be. I spent an entire week in that piano camp. I was definitely there. I remember everything perfectly from my awakening aboard the bus ride up to the dead party. Neither dreams nor hallucinations can be that real. Somehow I stood up, went to the kitchen, filled the glass with water, and turned to the room. The blood was still hammering in my temples, but at least the terror of the first few minutes was gone. I had, oh, oh, had just taken a break. I concentrated on the last scene I remembered, it was with the party for the camp. Sarada? This is Sarada? Well, I remember it was uh, St. Petersburg or something. I don't know. I don't really remember. The night of the bus bouncing over the bumps, the dirty murky glass beyond the beach almost nothing was visible and the pioneers had been absolutely positive that I would never return, or just didn't think about it. Anyway, I was prepared for our arrival at the district center in a few hours and was already considering options for my further actions. Or not? Damn it. I wrote and pulled all my hair with all my strength. I can't remember. The last hours in that world went into monotonous mirage, as if a drunken Lenore was completing his painting with a roller instead of a brush. Who is Lenore? Uh, but it's not that bad. Wait a minute, why would it be bad? On the contrary, everything is fine. I would even say perfect. I have broken free from that goddamn world and returned home. The most important thing now is not to end up there again. It might happen. Surely it could. But it might not happen as well. Indeed, I have nothing to worry about now. Everything will be fine. Obviously, I was just seeing things. Exactly, I was seeing things. It does matter that everything felt that real. Something like that I just can't happen. It can't. I claim with all due confidence that it just can't. Modern science claims it's impossible. Not allowed. I laughed loudly. Like everyone knows everything about science. Obviously not. People saying that it's not possible by science or something actually have no, not even a master's degree and zero scientists. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, and in a voice, try to stop the verbal diarrhea spouting from my mouth, but it didn't succeed. It feels like my speech and thoughts are separating to exist on their own independent from each other. My brain prompted me to calm down and try to analyze the situation, but my tongue simply tried to ease the stress by throwing new and new meaningless words out into the air. Finally, I was somehow able to pull myself together, I pulled the curtains open and looked out the window. The night city looked exactly the same as it did a week ago. The view brought my mind back to reality, at least to some extent. 
After all, if everything is now normal and nothing suspicious or supernatural is happening, then wasn't it just a dream? Essentially, there are only two options now. I can agree that it was just a dream and calm down, or I can trust my own feelings and accept that the comp, the boss and the pioneers were real. As a way, whatever I choose, I won't get any answers. It's funny, I was looking for these answers for a whole week, or at least pretending to, and found nothing, but I broke free from that weird world anyway. And what now? The enigma remains and additional questions have surfaced. At the end, I was exhausted and fell into the bed. In a few seconds, I was snoring blissfully. Hmm? Was it it? You just fell asleep? Much time has passed from the moment I came back from Sabionok to Saratov, and a lot has changed in my life. The first week was I was racking my brains trying to summarize in details everything that I had happened, creating graphs and diagrams, writing to forums discussing paranormal phenomena. I even planned to visit a psychic. Uh, in the end, it resulted in nothing. Just as one would expect, it's no wonder I was just a human being, but these events obviously were the affair of Supreme Mind. If a caveman found himself in the early 21st century, even he would understand more than me. Well, at first he would think that a cell phone that transmits someone's speech dozen kilometers away by the will of God is a miracle. But one can get used to it. Maybe if he completely secondary and higher technical completed secondary and higher technical education, he would even be able to understand how mobile communication works. It's a basic, exaggerated example, just as unreal as everything I experienced. I'm unlikely to ever understand how it worked or what who was behind it. And I doubt that I could get used to it if it were to happen again. But one question troubled me ever since. Why? Why me? Why did I, or did I not, do to deserve this bad or good luck? Sure, in sci-fi novels, wonders often occurs to quite ordinary people. But that was just a matter of chance. But I was absolutely positive that these events have occurred for some reason, just like a random sci-fi hero who traveled a thousand years forward in time, leaving him in the wrong time and place. But in the future, no one knew him, everyone thought that he was just a madman. But in my situation, they were expecting me at the camp, or at least the camp leader was. How should I respond to that? Maybe I was picked out a trembon to be studied later on, when so the question why not only still stands, but rather becomes even more important. After not finding any sufficient explanation, I returned to my usual existence. But now I wasn't just sitting at the computer 24 hours for 7 days per week. Why with the F5 button free of dust? New interest, interest came into my life. But what they were, I couldn't tell myself. And suddenly, I wanted to get a high education. What? Not to find a job. And not because it's necessary, just because I remembered how much fun I had during the first year of education. Chatting with classmates, days of light-hearted, useful fun, plenty of the energy that I lacked so much over the last few years. Wait a second. If you're going to spend a, like, daytime studying, uh, where did he... Okay, well... Where will he get money to do this? Anyway, he's very old, so he'll be among her, uh, I don't know, 18, 20 years old? Could be strange. <sighs> Truly great man once said, any man who reads too much and uses his own brain too little falls into lazy habits of thinking. Wait a second, any man who reads too much and uses his own brain too little falls into lazy habits of thinking? Hmm, okay, it's hard to argue with that logic. An ordinary man will not sit around because he is lazy, but because a given subject is just of no interest to him. For instance, I'm not interested in knitting, 
So does it mean that I'm slacker if I don't make a couple of woolen sweaters per month? But feeling too lazy to open a book, that's something I can understand. Also I like reading when I start thinking that I have to get through a huge novel, page by page, and by the way we are doing this right now. And even if it's interesting, even if it absorbs me so completely that I can't turn away, that part will come, will only come later. But now I'll need this, to get a book from a shelf and open it, but I feel too lazy. I don't know what exactly influenced me, but about a half of my time, instead of the 5 to 10 percent of it from before, I was occupied with something useful. I read, wrote, studied something new and engaged in sports, at least exercised in some morning. Sometimes I thought that it was the influence, influence of the camp. One can't rule out that possibility. For all seven days there, I was participating in social activities, verbal communications with others in amounts that before would have caused terror and several introversion in me. On the other hand, it's not so easy to change one's personality in a single week, especially for someone as stubborn as me. But it's easy to point them in a new direction, show them a guiding line. However, I never believe that it would be possible with me. Anyway, I enjoyed these changes so much that I tried not to think about their causes. What the hell, nobody would worry about the why if he managed to hit the jackpot by betting his last pair of trousers. In summer, I re-enrolled in university and studies started in autumn. So, so far, the worst ending was for Lena, next was for Slyre, and this two... Well, I don't understand why he actually needs studies, it's kinda... sounds like useless to me. But okay, still better than Slavia Sandin. Time passed. I eagerly attended lectures and seminars, and studied for tests and examinations with a level of enthusiasm that I wouldn't have expected from myself. I managed to become a part of the group with surprising ease. Also, I was older than most students didn't trouble me. Maybe it's because of my nature, natural immaturity or changes in my personality. I didn't know for sure. Most likely the answer is somewhere in the middle. The joyous communicating with people who lost many years ago returned. It was easy to get along with others. The problems didn't seem too distant and trivial to me. Normal life, which before I had considered just a grey the present mass started to shine with new colors. Sometimes it seems to me that I turned into a doll, became one of a billion identical teen soldiers, standing straight rows on a shelf in a toy shop. But in this shop, apart from glowing showcase that sparkled with fancy writing, scrubbing new season's offers and Christmas discounts, was a shortage where all the defective products were thrown. A teddy bear without a palm, a firefighter struck in need of mechanic, a transformer who looked more like a microwave than a mighty robot, jigsaw puzzles which assembled into trippy postmodernist pictures. My place used to be among these broken toys, and while some of them could take refuge in charity, drives or unfurnish, my only fate was being dumped and recycled again. So. I couldn't help enjoying such changes in my life. Oh wow, new picture. <clears throat> it was the last lesson of the hardest subject this term. Most students didn't like it, because of its difficulty and the hard to understand teacher, I suppose. But I found a kind of pleasure in dealing with tables, graphs and diagrams. Counting the figures by pieces, I arranged them in columns and lines in the right order, summing up, subtracting, dividing and multiplying, and using them to get a precise picture of any event. No number could avoid my attentive gaze. All of them would be captured, calculated, analyzed. Each of them would, could, uh, of them would get an index number and a place in their proper cell. After... By the way, who is him? I think he's not here. After its arrival, every digit will be assigned 
a bank, work uniform, and off study clothes and will be sent to perform its designated task. Some will be digging a trench from 9 to 5, some will march off to face the prince, and some will be trying to hit a linear regression on the shooting range. What are you thinking about? Luckily, I stopped writing and gazed at my classmate. Taking notes on the lecture, as you can see. Oh, just screw it. Just read the workbook afterwards. I'll read the workbook as well. I'm always astonished by you. What's so astonishing? You're planning to gain a first class diploma, aren't you? Never thought of it. Don't tell me you really find it interesting. I remember that just a moment ago, I imagined myself emblazoned emblazoned on a banner burned aloft by a regiment of digits and couldn't help smiling. You won't even need all the stuff. Everything will be needed. At least for general development. The classmates grinned sarcastically. I bet you never read even a single book in your whole life. So what? He asked gently. Just stating the fact. And you always somewhere up in the clouds. He was right about that. Also, I had regained part of my lost social skills, often slipped out of touch with reality, dealing of something else. You say it like it's a bad thing. And this, by the way, it was a meme. <laughs> you say it like it's a bad thing. That's it. <laughs> it's to shame somebody, but at the same time, you actually not putting your cell phone on high run. And there's nothing wrong with not reading books either. Human beings can have only material needs. I said philosophically, mocking him. Oh, you're such a donor, young. The lecture was approaching its end, and I began to plan out the rest of the day. Need to buy some groceries and later finish a project and send it to the client, and then I got to write down notes, so he's still working at the same time. And then in the evening, <clears throat> I can just read or watch something. Unless someone wants or writes to me. One second. Then no urgent matters, so I can spare some time for my mates. Oh, five whole minutes to go. I look at my phone and released that it's exactly a year after returning from the Savionic Pioneer Cup. My soul felt warmer from such thoughts and it smelled blissfully. It's not often anymore that I recall those events. Obviously, one can't just forget something like that. Those moments of something bizarre and extraordinary that are engraved in my memory forever. Invisible man? <laughs> That's actually is. Yes. Normally, even the happiest moments fade and just reminiscence of them remain. Nothing more. But the week spent in Savionok was different. I remembered everything in perfect detail, the terror of the first minutes after walking up in the bus, waking up in the bus, the first day, heart full of surprises and amazing acquaintances, cheerful and careful pranks with Suliana, just take the trick with the ghost for instance, the best Soviet comedians would envy it, the pioneers had such expressions, they were dying laughing. It sure would be nice to meet Uliana in real life. Well, she's not always perfect, she's hyperactive, and she doesn't have any idea about good manners, but one doesn't meet such a sincere, carelessly cheerful, and energetic person very often. Maybe she gave some of the energy to me. It makes the fact that she had to stay behind even sooner. Of course, it's just a dream. A female of my imagination. So you still can worry about book and film characters. One laughs and cries with them and feels their pain. Some seems for me, it seems that if I had acted differently, my story would have been uh, had an even more joyful happy ending. However, I'm sure that Uliana is happy in that world. I just can't imagine her being upset for longer than five minutes, her optimism will help her to find a way even in the most difficult situations. I wonder what she will look like when she grows up. The, the bell rang, my classmate stood up and looked at me keenly. Okay, see ya. Can I creep notes from you later? He 
who had been writing down your own during the lecture, you wouldn't need any. And by the way, if actually teacher shared it with us without writing it down, it would be much better, because, for example, I can't remember anything if I am writing it. It's impossible. Words? Who needs words nowadays? Everything is on PC. So can I? Okay, fine. And by the way, why it's so small? Cheers. He smiled and left the lecture hall. So, you want to say that that was me? Slowly I packed all my exercise books and textbooks up into my backpack and looked around the empty hall. For a moment I could almost smell the knowledge in the air, like sea salt in the air on the deck of a ship. Thousands and thousands of students came here to study, to learn something new or to forget something they used to know. Some slept through the lectures, some wrote them down attentively, just like me, but nobody was completely indifferent. Those who didn't care stayed home, pulled their curtains across the windows and fixed their eyes on the monitor. I sat reluctantly and left the lecture hall with a few intentions of not wasting this day. Wait a second, what? Mm. Okay. Sandra Langton left the lecture hall with a few intentions of not wasting this day. But you will come back to Sabionok. They always come back. That was it. All the bad endings so far. Maybe that's good. So there's like Three good endings, three two endings, and the last one is like a DLC. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Eden. Morning. Is it definitely morning? But I'm going to sleep. So, I just hope that we finish like 50% of this game. No, you must. I don't know how actually long the true endings. Maybe they're super long. Maybe one stream is not enough. So, two more weeks to play this. Well, token Tali, okay with me. I still don't know what will be at the very end. Can guess, of course. <sighs> Gosh. <laughs> Let's see. One, two, three. Four, five, six, and DLC. So seven endings. Okay, okay, something like seven, and we finished one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh gosh, it's less than fifty percent, right? Well, uh, let's see who can here. Yeah. Right. Well, Julia, you wow. Most yes, I know her from Image Birds. It's actually a mascot of Dutch, right? Together with Alisa. Oh, I don't even know who is online. Five Nights at Freddy's? Okay, let's raid him. It's a new horror game that I didn't play. But if I need to play it, I must start from the very beginning. And I know the beginning was very boring. This channel has followers subscribed on the chat. Uh, okay. That's kinda sad. But what can I do? So thank you for stopping by and see you next time. Well next week I will continue playing Red Dead Redemption. 
this undead nightmare or something. That's it. So, see you next time. Bye. See you.